Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I- Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket- I'm in the supermarket, alright, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Gave that a go. Um, about 45 minutes and uh yeah a mate a mate sort of said oh you know you're into your dancing your robotics and that you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping right body popping and that he said uh you ought to come to twiggies and um i went there um but i didn't go in it was shut it was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having like loads of toilet rolls delivered i think like <laughs> they they were like using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that so i said oh, i'll come to have a dance and like oh not tonight come back tomorrow <laughs> I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Next. Oh, oh, what, what, a waste, that? what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary. As there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, <laughs> without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they run out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do... They sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go No, on. no, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is, the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. With, <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It ends the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, oh. Goodbye. I feel ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is this great. This makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> what do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that you, word? Woo, woo, Who is woo. using that it was, word? It was just W E W E. Let's call it a woo. Mm -hmm. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like, in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this as a fish having two heads ain't gonna solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the telly only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about cause I dream. Doesn't work for everything, because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever not sleep. sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. don't know how you'd put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? <laughs> what do you call it? Because, as you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, your sleep is your rest, your time off. It, get, it, it, it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh, Jim Pouncey Dave. Fucking news! Okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> right, um, ages ago, right, about, about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like... Were they called Hairy Fingers? Do you know how, like, a lot of gangsters like to get into gambling and that yeah yeah and uh you know like all these all these peers and that all these all these mates who are like gangsters and stuff mm. they've all bought horses right like they tech you know tech racing and they make money from them and that don't they? yeah mm. so anyway he and was chuckles like, seagull was no different and and he was like yeah that's uh that's a good thing to get into i might might get into a bit of that right so he gets himself this horse right and it, there's a big race coming up, that's why he's sort of, it's he, a bit of a last minute. And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine, he's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent, okay, well that was another so, podcast. So anyway, so um, please listen oh, hang on, there's more, there's more. Oh, go on. on. So, oh. so anyway, so, uh, this big race is coming up, he's yeah. it? like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me also. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so we can get in this race. So, yeah, the jockey so club. His mate's like, yeah, alright, I'll, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys, because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. 
So anyway, so he comes Was that back true in the 50s as well? Abs it's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always, it's always just been true. There's no, there's no lack of jockeys. So it's sort of close shot. People are trying to do it and they don't make the grade, so... But in the know. 50s, from your knowledge, there was never, there was not, like, in 1951, a shortage of jockeys for just one year? Absolutely never. I'd have known about <laughs> okay, that. I'm fine, quite yeah. keen. Right. Go on. So anyway, right, so his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems oh, odd because no, Ricky's just been weird. saying... No, no, no. He's just been saying it's not a problem. What do you mean? So... Just because the main problem was... Go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are, I won't get paid you know, is a gangster, it's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse, I want it in the race, sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss, and he's like, don't give me any of that. Exactly, they do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before. The big race, yeah. <laughs> Left it to the last minute, okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and, uh he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? And they're like, yeah, but, and he's going, D don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but, and he's like, look. He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants, yeah. So, yeah, they uh, yeah. he's saying, has he ridden their horses before and that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly, and he's like, like, brilliant. He goes, yeah, but mainly in, like, a in circus. In the, in the jing. No, like, in, in the, in the circus and that. <gasps> he'd worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus. It's fine. Yeah, so yeah, he's like, that's, fine. that's enough, that's, that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy, cause circus. So people so are quite built, aren't they? They're, they're he said a bit so heavier than the jockey, because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant. Get him down there and that, right? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand? He wasn't worried no about No point. It. Not no. bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's putting all his, he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Right. Sure. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore. In the circus and that, because it's 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 comfortable with that. Yeah, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's what he's right. happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that high speed, right? This this jockey's got a really big grin on his face. He's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, "Who is this? Who's this jockey?" Yeah, it's amazing. Never seen him before, and yet look at him. But they can see his face clearly. Anyway, gangsters happy in that because he's he's one. Well, I just want to say the crowd the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can do, I mean, it's, it's Yeah, but he's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur, it's a blur, it's all a blur. He's really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. He's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold of the... Oh, sure. Good reach. Oh. And nice. it, well, they could tell he was smiling, they could tell he was smiling but they couldn't see the, the detail of his face, is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that? it's just blur and that. Sure, but they could tell teeth. he was smiling, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like, the winner sort of rides around the crowd, but yeah. really, sort of, you know, show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there, and you know, like women are all dolled up at these events. Sure, yeah. they've all got big, big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through all those hats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one, one oh of the God. women, In one the of the women, oh particularly Carmen Miranda, was very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. some kind I'm, of they're Cuban. Not real, they're not real though. The hats, though. They're, uh, no, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not real fruit, is it? Of course not. Never. So but I don't know who. I thought they wore those sort of uh, kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment even, shows. Even, I didn't realise they wore them yeah, at events. Yeah, even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit, and it's sort of joke, but but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would it would perish. Well, this this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But what? why did the, why did the jockey suddenly? Why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. So anyway, so meanwhile the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah, I don't understand. I still don't understand no, don't where understand. the jockey would go. Everyone from. noticed jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from about do you know, like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He, he sort of put, he, you know, he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time when- So this happened in this, in, in, in England? In this country, yeah, yeah in in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact that Well, that's it, we always, you know, there's no time length on this monkey news, if you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back- Or know, if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's so, bollocks, uh, send send it in. bollocks. If it's actually bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. RickyGervais.com Well, that's the end of, uh, the tenth podcast in the series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um. One more hour of the uh, the drivel that is um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington, or Dilkington, as he should now be known. Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. All right. 
Hello and welcome to number 11 in our series of 12 podcasts with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello, uh, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Carl, you have become a phenomenon, okay? Right. right. This uh, is a, a new story that's gone everywhere. It started, I think, in New York, Reuters, and then that's been taken up by every Reuters network everywhere, India, uh, all over Australia, England. Okay, here it is. The headline is, Podcast makes Britain an unlikely internet icon. Britain there, B-R-I-T-O-N. Okay? Now, this is uh, the story by Mark Egan. And it uh, came out of um, New York originally. Unemployed British radio producer Carl Pilkington has become an unlikely superstar by using the medium of podcasting for his bizarre statement about eating an animal's private parts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was more about, like, that reality show. That, right. well, it says that here. It was during a discussion on yeah. the Gervais show about a reality TV show where contestants were asked to eat an animal's penis. Uh, Pilkington... Um, made internet history while talking about this, it says, right? First, he said he could not eat an animal's penis in the morning because he had a delicate stomach. He then proclaimed, using the British slang for penis, I could eat a knob at night, okay? <laughs> His knob soundbite has become so popular that a Google search for I could eat a knob at night yields more than half a million listings, okay? <laughs> Among them are T-shirts featuring the slogan, okay, and Pilkington's bald head, Selling for seventeen dollars. Oh. Why did they have to make a point about your bald head? I, I, I don't know. What's what, why is that getting a little mention? <laughs> wow! <laughs> that doesn't matter. I see the t-shirt. Have a look at it. What, what what is bald? I'm not buying one then. It's not going to make any difference. You, you want a t-shirt with me? I don't know. You don't. It's not an issue. <laughs> all it says is but among also, them are t-shirts he... featuring the slogan and Pilkington's bald head. I also liked it when it said Pilkington plays the village idiot on the Ricky Gervais show. Okay, now. Plays the village idiot suggests that he thinks you're a character, that character being a village idiot. The problem is, the fact that you're not a character, to me, suggests that you are just a village idiot. A global village idiot. Yeah. Mm. Now... Just on, uh, the, on the websites, though, when it said there's loads of websites about eating an hour at night. Yeah. Have they looked at each website and gone, yeah, that's to do with the podcast? Yeah. Or is it just like gays and that saying, oh, I love a bit of knob at night? <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid question. It's a valid question. That's why you're an internet icon, Carl, because you say things like that. After Gervais mused on the show that the soundbite could be used in a dance remix, it took just a few days for the internet to be awash with songs using the soundbite as a hook. So what do you think of that, Carl? Oh, uh, well, I mean, is, is it big in, in India? Well, I don't know. It's all, it goes around the world. This is a story. I know, but I just can't the believe world. the problems that... If I was in India, I wouldn't be getting upset about someone in London... Talking about a knob at night with the problems they've got. Well, I don't think anyone's getting upset in India. No, he's just saying, saying that the information. I can't away. imagine people walking around India. You know, have, you, have you heard that song, Knob at Night? <laughs> I can't imagine that happening. With the, you know, they're hungry in that, and it's dusty and everything. <laughs> That's your there. image of India, is it? They're hungry and it's dusty. I, I, I assume it's you know the parts of India that aren't dusty. And in poverty, there is a lot of poverty in India, but there was also, you know, yeah, but these it's, it's sort of a major civilization, and uh, and the people uh, that that live in apartments with with uh, uh, computers, they probably might tune in. But but I don't think it's an issue all over the world, is it? Because there's some places where they eat dogs, they'd go no, at night, not a problem. <laughs> Might not be a bad thing. Why is that out on a t-shirt? I had one last Wednesday. Not, not an issue. What, what do you mean? Not, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Again, if there are cannibals listening, if there's, you know, in places that, that you wouldn't travel to, and that they get hold of a little laptop and an iPod, and they're listening to that, I can eat you know, at night. Then they're going, "What's the problem? What's the big deal? We all, we, we love a knob at night. Yeah, we so love a little knob at night. Yeah, bollocks in the morning, knob at night. That's the rule. But what about the fact that? they're saying you're a phenomenon, a global phenomenon, because when you were, you know, a tiny little um, round-headed mank mm -hmm. growing up in Manchester, you could not surely have ever anticipated that you would one day be described as a phenomenon, an international phenomenon. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I went to that school, you know, with a kid with a big head and webbed hands. Now he should be being talked about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's maybe he doesn't want to be talked about. If if you've grown up with a big head and webbed hands, the last thing you want to be is talked about. He wants to he wants to put on he a pair of into society. He yeah. wants to put put on a bit of uh, a pair of mittens and paint his head like a crash helmet, so people think, oh, it looks like a big head, but it's probably just the crash helmet. Yeah, just go about his business. Yeah, unnoticed. 
You won't get stopped on a bike or anything. Yeah, but I say if you've got something that's a bit weird, use it. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what me and Steve are doing. We have got something that's a bit weird and we're using it. And I want to uh, speak to the people all around the world. Thanks for listening. But how famous can you make Carl Pilkington? Are you a journalist? Please write about this for people who probably haven't listened to Carl. Uh, t- talk about Carl Pilkington. Put a little poster up in your window. I love Carl Pilkington. Print a badge. Give it away. Email your friends. Tell, uh, tell one person about this podcast and let them discover the, the amazing beauty that is Carl Pilkington's mind. Right. As ever, Rick, there are hundreds and thousands of emails coming in. Um, people contributing all kinds of stuff, pictures as always, and uh, little video clips that I think might be of interest. And of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade Ramira. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean, your school experience was a bit If You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, she's four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think she should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, to teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge. Inflaming their imagination, but just freaking them out a bit as well. Just going like, <laughs> yeah, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah, know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly, to be a human or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that you know, teaching them the love for learning. So yeah. you know, get them back to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn, as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas he, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, just like you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email. Like, how oh, there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? But it's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's it not a in, dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because... What do you mean, why not? Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What, you think that the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day. So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open properly. But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet. It's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been <laughs> no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, about... it's, all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to be- Who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Th- out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it, one to, like, be going, yeah, we're all right. Yeah. One, one to make the... some hors d'oeuvres. One, one to one stop at the petrol station no, to what, get more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing up... They haven't got a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about, say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago, how would you have lived with them? Get on with it, see you later. Well, they didn't, I've told you this before, you, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, alright then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better... Um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst we're here. Because what, I, I put that in my diary the other day, like, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. 
we're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Mm. The speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is... I think there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still a millions handful, of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer. And yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so you feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex just into, wandering say, about, wandering London, around. just over wandering around, just picking people off? That's what... Just, just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I, I don't know... I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that, but all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, oh, oh, Neil, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and you Nora's know, been, had her head bitten off by a... Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is, we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. You just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking. Have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a over a woman, well, <laughs> a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because like it's hassle, in it, right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who you know she was she was quite good looking. Everybody liked. And uh, my mate, he really liked her. And uh, I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, mm. and um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? You know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right. So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's over. You saying right. in the morning? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more right. in the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, "You're out of order," you know. And saying, so, "What are you on about?" So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven -year yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> He put his cigarette out in the sink, <laughs> and he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> so oh. I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> why, are <you laughs> yeah. Yeah. why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Right. Wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. Why are you talking about two seven-year-olds in a toilet? I just, uh, so I'm... you put you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were you wearing? Football boots? Just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. So, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he so arm a locks, a little and bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved, 
Yeah. Did you turn your back on violence after that, then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, could... he, he said, you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just, I don't know what they're intending, what, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. Oh. Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. The appendix is, used to be a, uh, an organ that, that was packed with um, these, uh, these enzymes that help break down things like cellulose. But because of our diet now and because the, uh, you know cooking and, uh, and other things, we, we don't need to eat a lot of cellulose. We don't eat very, very low-grade things like, like, like rabbits, for example, huge appendix and cecum, and they, they use it to break down cellulose. They actually eat their own... Uh, feces to get it through again but we get a lot of nutrients out of food now we eat very rich food so we sort of don't need the appendix and also when something goes wrong with the appendix if it bursts it can infect you and you can die from it so sort of what's the point in having it we don't need it and it can only cause us harm that was the question I think that Rob was putting to you so now what are your thoughts on the human appendix so th this is kind of what we've talked about before where he always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this before. And, and the thing that we talked about is nothing like it. Yeah. There's, there's never... Go on. No, but just like um, in the way that we've messed with our body and we've messed with the world too much. Yeah. If we've got an appendix, we, we must need it. If it's dangling about, right? Well, no, because such, such is the human evolution is uh, that... that as you said before, you know, it's no longer based on survival of the fittest because we can, we can fight nature and combat it. So our evolution, if you like, socially and, and everything else, it, it, it is, is been much faster than our biological evolution. Yeah, but what, evolution. what I, what I mean is we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And well, we, well, we have, have interfered, yeah, yeah. we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer's no. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way... Because he's right, is it because he's right? No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe 100 years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't room. have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, I'll oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used it's, to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah. It's a nightmare. So we can't go there. We go somewhere else. So you find another planet, wherever it is, right? Yeah. Wherever um, it is, yeah. easy. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on? What, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006? Or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, or whatever, yeah. new world? That is definitely the first priority. You it's know. year one. Right, we've sorted that out. Right, now... Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because it, right. a year might not be the same on this planet. To, we'd sort that out. Right, we'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no, what I'm saying is we, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes. For yeah, the... but we'd have to carry on as we know because we don't want to start doing longer days and that. Otherwise, it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No, I'm we wouldn't have a choice. Hour a day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no. the planet to... But to, a day's, to turn, a day's, and a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, but, the sun. But once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they? In Iceland and that, but they don't go. Well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Uh. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go. What time is it? You go. It's 20 past. No, 20. no, no. We use that that because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to. to, to I, I've turn. never worried about it like that. I've just always. Well, no, I'm telling you, well, that's because you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to to. Yeah. What would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm I'm just saying that's fine and everything. 
But if when I was born people said, there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made that by long an hour is. Yeah, we could have made an hour shorter and get 26 well, in. Well, they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people, everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Say if there's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like 20 past, uh... 25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying. The that. Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want. Uh, there's more interesting territory here. Let's say we've got to our new planet, wherever that is. It takes 14 hours. Okay, to, you know, to, to do its turn. So we call that a day, right? So we've now yeah. agreed that 14 hours is a day. But nothing, it's gonna take ages to get the town centre built and that. If people are, if you've only got- I'm going with you, I'm defending you here! All right. So we've got, so we've got that, we've established what the day is, we've established what a year is, right? It's year one, it's Carl year one. What next, all right? We've got all the people, we've moved to another planet. You said you had a bunch of other questions. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only, yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. Yeah, that's got the same watch as us. It's doing yeah, what it wants. Yeah, but it, it evolved differently, didn't it? It yeah, evolved but it's, the, but it's living now in 2006, so wake it up. Right, you can't <laughs> get away. You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that... The world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? What well, Carl's diary? You didn't yeah. explain what it was, Carl's diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as the diary of an idiot. Very good. So um, you know, a little riff down one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling. Uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, be, be, it's sort of like going. I'm 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 content. I'm. Uh, it it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go. Well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. Won't happen. No, <laughs> you don't right, whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. <laughs> I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating. I'm whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, they were just sat there, looking, sort of going, "Oh, what's going on?" <laughs> I don't know. I how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> the old excuse! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gotta I've... phone my mum. <laughs> there was a marathon-type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh, <laughs> Why were you walking on the same route? Because I, well, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about... Hundred yards down the road. They're going. Look at the bloke with the bald wig. He's <laughs> yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old T-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee! He's only gone and written it down. <laughs> the jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until Carl? What have you got? You're going to do. I've got to do as far as December, and then that's it. Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? Thirty-first of December, usually. Yeah. Do it the whole typical, way always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it too, and then. Uh... Why do that? Why just? Why be conformist? Why? Why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty-first? Weird that you should go 
Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean. Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's oh, why they're whizzing around. To fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel. Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in <laughs> Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? <laughs> I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she? her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it bores her. her. <laughs> no, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. Oh God, what's wrong with it you? starts off, it starts <laughs> off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh God. I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the, f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <sighs> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's one of the little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine for my mum. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just. Oh, you were. No, I, we I were. You studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I yeah. don't know where they put it. <laughs> I don't think you find evidence where the world is. men's pants. Yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he, rather, he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag, but no. no but I, it you reminds want to be right. me. You want to be specific, of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Well, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, they do. Of course they don't. They don't, they don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, I hope people buy this. They're gonna put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, 50 quid's 50 quid and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah. and I'm saying, can you get one to London, to them that is less hassle. Right, Th that don't- th uh, Carl, that's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Carl, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for 20 quid. <laughs> Christ, all that plus posters and packaging, they're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages. <laughs> <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh food and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> 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 oh, God. 
We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite got, stuff in we've here. We've got to publish the diary. I mean, this is... Never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special I CD? I, I it just, it's amazing. You've got... You can't... You can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira okay? We don't know. <laughs> always been going to every news agency in London, looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the theories! It's the it theories! It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. It, London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five <laughs> times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- I don't <laughs> know. I have no idea. I've- I, Every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker like, when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah, some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort, just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a byproduct. They don't, a machine, they don't go, what should we make this <laughs> noise, make this machine? It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing something. why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the noise. Who's picking I know. The noise? A printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, the printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's, it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it? And the way that that impacts on the, uh, the surrounding air. That's what noise, you know, how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson's yeah, rocket came and I went, <laughs> I went, can you make it go, <laughs> it's what, that's the noise it made. I know, but then, Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. Frog sounds like a Ford Escort. Well, no, but there can't be many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain. But the problem it. is, a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, <laughs> you're ripping off the turkey, you <laughs> gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee, that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle is very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. Just some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh great, it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show. Got everything. It's got the, the twelve shows and MP3. It's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it. I haven't got an iPod. I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend, who uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift. Or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? 
<laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we've had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> so we get, give, let's give those away again, the same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these, we'll send these no, to Rachel. We'll get them ones. Separate you get si so you get, do you, do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannimals of the Deep, okay? Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures, but that taken by Rich Hardcastle, of, um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes. In their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We'll put some pictures up on the website. Go to wickedgeraise.com and you'll see, you'll see what you could, uh, we'd be winning. Yeah. Yeah? So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff, but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um, okay, the, the, so, so those prizes, uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't know it? about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that, uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's... Looking back at the year, a year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen, uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. Uh, I put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because sill. I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. <laughs> yeah. No, and so some ruffians stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and, uh, I was enjoying it. I put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And, uh, I saw- Planned like, out. This is- <laughs> yeah. I bet- Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through but with legs. And, um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> we got were going, biscuits. biscuits over here! But I thought that <laughs> what, what, on, what was it, like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet- Not that far. They're, but, but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird that that happened. I never thought that would happen in 2006. <laughs> and that's what- that's, <laughs> You never thought that would happen in 2006! That's what's nice, He's isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na- you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods, we can bring out 
better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see-through thing- You do. Eating a biscuit. Uh, do that's, you that's where I've sort of gone this year, I'd say out of a anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to- to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's but happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, a creature which you can't even identify that on you name. don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that- how is that useful? Just because everything is- is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl thinks- Or where thinks, it happened but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that- that the grub has an inkly- has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl's does. That's why yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it, they, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being- uh, yeah. it, taking the it starch and anything. the flour. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is- is that- these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But, they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, oh that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's going to happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now over time, you know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are now. What evidence have you got what that they're getting more violent? But Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky, they come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's- that's what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub, having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on- on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Mm. Time makes you more intelligent. Well, no, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> It was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to some- I can't even be bothered explaining it, but- but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, everything- everything's moving on. Yeah, but- but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man, it's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so old, god, god. Day, get a life, man. Hello, PlayStation 3, is yeah, hello. hello! Hello! Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. Get a life. <laughs> High five, me. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in. You know, get a stocking? No, get, getting some condoms. What, to put over your head? <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, uh, I thought it was worth getting some condoms in, you know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season, and, uh, you never know when you're gonna run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was weird, because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage. So it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it, sort of. Because I thought that they, they would it, you had to open it. Try know, it on. You, try <laughs> it on. <laughs> exactly. Okay, they're just you know, in case it doesn't fit. Bring exactly. it back. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. And uh, do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to open this thing, and, and this guy who works there, sort of with his middle aged guy who works there, goes, you, you, know, you have to um, you have to take that to the uh, checkout. So you can't open that yourself. I was just- cause I- I don't know, I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing in any of that sort of, you know, prophylactics and things, the novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And uh, so I just left it, I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna take these to the counter. Cause you never- it's like if you get served by a- by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing. Particularly if that's all you're buying. 
<laughs> you know, because she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. you're gonna fill them up with water and throw them at the students. <laughs> and, um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've, we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a, uh, two pack? A two pack of, yeah, what was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one, get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously, that'd be, that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 one for the kids, take them down, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but, um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous, uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They, they were the early days. Um. Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with them for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so, sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was, that was a hell of a, she went, oh, I remember when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff, like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, Well, no, she didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course prizes. she didn't. That's what, that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, innit, over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if, if you're- if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little <laughs> baby Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get- I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, because well, uh, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff is the expectations. I prefer it. If I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop. She comes back from work and go, do you want to go out? But you Rather don't do than, that. No, I do now and again. But it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da. It, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know how like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote! That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with, uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. said- That's like amazing. But you can't lot. just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something. Now it isn't. No, they don't, I don't know what that means. No, no, they just well, make up they, things they say. They say. They, they say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy time. You're such a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a, it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- But what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work. Yeah. And we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas- Again, that, that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? 
No, what I mean is, say like, um, Go on. holidays, when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises you, someone with a holiday unless you, you win it on a game show? How can you really go, bloody hell, I'm on holiday? Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, and nice. I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No, she wouldn't like it as much and I won't pick the right place and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, well, up. it was a me uh, But to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> He talks about himself like a crab. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just he's like... thirty-three now, and his knees around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit, and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But hold well on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at thirty-three. Well, it's it's definitely something. It's just not very good. Subsidence. I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not- <laughs> This isn't as good as it used to be! This <laughs> washing up! On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about ages ago where, um, someone was, uh, Walking down the street. Yeah. And he sees someone who looked a bit like him. And no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, s he, he remembers, like, going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of, he's walking down the street, going out to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, that's weird. Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so Don't it's like a time. Talk shit. What do you mean it was him as a kid? This, this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh. Um, well, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's not idea, but that's impossible, so don't <laughs> worry about it. It's just some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. More from uh, that next week. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right, there was this, uh... Monkey? This fella, right, who, uh, he had a problem with his eyes, right? Yeah. So, uh, he goes to the doctors, and he goes, uh, oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they bad them, right? <laughs> he goes, uh, it was in America, you know, like, how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if, if I fix them, it's gonna be, like, ten grand. Right? Mm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, Doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them. Can't do anything for you. Mm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse. I can't do anything. God. So anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right? And he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back. And uh, there's a little advert there saying, cheap doctors, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> Oh, no. no. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's, maybe that's what I, uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls them up woman's there, she's like, wait, what can I do, because I've got bad eyes and that, she says, oh, come in tomorrow, we'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant, I'll see you then, right? So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see, my eyes have got in really bad state and what have you, right. I need to have them sorted out, I don't know what you do, whatever you do, right. I need now, doing. his eyes are so bad, can he see the doctors? He can... Um, not really, he's sort really of squinting, squinting and that, but, you know, so, uh, so he's like, uh, do I need to see the doctor to... You know, have a word and tell them what problem. She's like, no, nah, I don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about just, it. No, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be comfortable if it's a just, a just you know, just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll, we'll get on with it. Can, like, well, it's, it's, Can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well, just before you continue? Go on. You know, they don't have opposable thumbs. Now, why are what, opposable thumbs useful? Rick? Well, to, to grip something, to do anything like you know, even simple 
uh, stuff like right and so let alone surgery. So without an but opposable thumb. Can I just thumb, check now? So if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs to be a doctor. And without opposable, you couldn't do anything. You but, couldn't. Thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up. Thanks. So anyway, so he's had the injection, he's nodding off and what have you, like, his eyes are sort of closing and that, he hears the door open, he, he sort of just sees this little fella come in and he's like, hello doctor, and he's trying to like, make a chat with it, sure. but like, he, he's just it? nodding off. Uh, no, just, oh, he's he never called she, a doctor. He, he these, these people have done seven years medical Deeply training. respected people. How could you say, call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need Especially idle, little airy ones. Well, just idle chit-chat. There's no room for that, do you know That's what I mean? Like, yeah, just, it's just, it's just, just, yeah, but, you know, if I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp-chat. So anyway, time passes, right? Yeah. Uh, he sort of wakes up and, uh, he opens his eyes, right? And, uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect? He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like, nurse, right? And the nurse comes in, because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby. Yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's... that's you realise like, the nurse is a panda. That's, that's what we do, right? So, uh, he said, right, so can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? And she's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's, he's specialised in what he does. Uh, there's a lot of what work. a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please, like, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's a well, lot of there's a lot of like operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave him to it. He's just having a kit. You know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pay us a check. Off you go. Go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So uh, he says. Uh, he said, No, I just just what's, what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. Just no, like, no fine. leave it. Just leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, leave it. And he's he like, he's like, yeah, but I can't. You know, I I, I want to thank him. So he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna opens. They're going to wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did, they woke it up, right? They so, will get uh, it. So the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out. Oh. And, and he's like, what's, what's, what's going on here? It's a hospital. Why is the, why is the, uh, a monkey knocking about? Yeah. So the wom wom woman said, well, what, what do you mean? He's the doctor. Right? <laughs> so, sh so he's like, you are having a laugh, aren't you? She goes, look, don't complain. You, your eyes are sorted, yeah. you know? The doctor's done it. What, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's uh, like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. It's, what, it's and a, he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors? He saw the advert and, and it said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw what it. What journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything then about it. Then just retired to play golf. It's absolute bollocks. It's there's no to... way, there's, there's, I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chim chimp doctors. Cheap. It's easy mistake. Well, that's the end of another podcast. That's, uh, week 11. We've got one more to go next week. So, uh, go to wickedgermaze.com, see some of the things we've been talking about. Register, so we can let you know what's happening. When we're, when we're back. Who hosted this podcast? It was the great guys at Positive Internet who host the world's number one podcast, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, bye bye, and Carl Pilkington. Right. Hi, Ricky Gervais here with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. Welcome to, uh, the final episode in our series of 12 podcasts. I say final, it's final of 12, but, um, we may be carrying on. Go on. Well, next week, we're going to try and uh, uh, do another one to continue this for at least a little while. Um, we may have to charge a small fee for it because it's uh, it'll cost us money, um, and Carl is uh, unemployed. But we we mean a real tiny little fee. Um, but uh, hopefully we will be back next week. Now um, we're not sure where it'll be. It'll probably be on iTunes. But just go to RickyGervais dot com and we'll guide you there. Hurrah! Yay! Um, and thanks for listening for this long and uh, supporting us. I hope you continue to support us. Go on, continue to support us. Yeah, particularly Carl, who has no money whatsoever and is desperate. He's a desperate man. I, right, there's Carl? no one out there going, oh, look, they're charging for it now. But, you know, people forget we gave 12 for free. This is it. So quickly people forget. We're big shots. Yeah. Well, Carl's not, but, um, you know, we are, aren't we? Exactly. I mean, we, yeah, we were generous, but we're not that generous. We're not, we're not mad, and Carl needs a, a little bit of money. Look at his little round little head. He's like little tiny Tim over there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look at him sitting there. Carl, you've had a good week. Uh, it's been all right. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> well, uh, more, more of that next week. You have to, <laughs> you, but you'll have to pay for it now. <laughs>
I'm surprised you're not buzzing, cos, uh, we just had our photograph taken to enter the Guinness Book of Records for the greatest downloaded podcast of all time. We went along to The Guardian and the press were there and they took a little picture of his round head, didn't they? Yeah. But I, I don't know why, why should I be excited about it when it's just... It's Have you always wanted to be in the Guinness World of Records? Not, not really, no. I, I've got, I, I've been looking at the, uh, we, they presented us with the, the, um, this year's, and I've been looking through it, and there's some fascinating ones. I used to yeah, get but this that's, that's what I'm saying, though. There's loads of things in there that I used to go to. Like, I looked at it online the other day to mm. see if, you know, what's on there. You click on it, the home page that you get when you click on Guinness Book of Records, it's a fellow with the most ear hair, right? <laughs> Looks amazing. So that, to me, is what the Guinness Book of Records is about. So not you're impressed with the bloke who just happens to have the most ear hair? No, but it's commitment. He could have he could have shaved it off, but he didn't. He left it. Yeah, no, it's it. less commitment. But we, yeah, that just grew. We we actually bothered to do a podcast. All right, forget that then. The one with the rings on the neck where they stretch the neck so their head's tall. That's commitment. If that didn't work out, he's stuck with that head and he didn't even get in the book. <laughs> you're stuck with that head and you have got in the book, so be happy. Uh, what if it's a stitcher? What if you're under roundest head? I'd be a bit annoyed. Why? Just because I, d I don't, I mean, have you got a choice? Say like the fella with, um, you know, the small man. Say if he's, he's not happy about being small, he's trying yeah. to go about his life, he knows people are looking at him, pointing at him, going, look at him, he's tiny. But does he want to be in the book? Oh, I think, I think they've got to give their consent. Have they? Because if, if, if the smallest wasn't willing to be in there, they'd go, the second smallest man is so-and-so, he was willing to be in here. Yeah, but we the smallest one is Frank, and he didn't want to do it, so again, he's in it without wanting to be in it. <laughs> no, but I don't know. He's got you there, Rick. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they go around. I, I, I think that you'd have to um, uh, be complicit in it for them to measure your head and say, this is the roundest head on the planet Earth. Not, you know what I mean? But then what do I do with that? That's what I'm saying. Is it something you put on a CV? I don't no, no. see the point in well, it. Well, I think you are the fellow with the roundest head, and I oh, think yeah. a lot of people know that. Because also, I've noticed when people ask for a picture of you, they don't say, can I have a signed picture of Carl? They say, can I have a signed picture of Carl's head? Which is a weird thing to say about a human being, isn't it? They go, well, oh, look at his head. Look at his head, not look at his face. Or can I have a picture of him? They say, can I have a picture of... Have you got a picture of Carl's head? Why, why are they allowed to Doesn't mention matter. that? And the thing is, like, we're, we're on some sort of broadcasting medium where you don't even see me, Ed, so it's not important. Well, I can't see you, Ed, because the mic's perfectly round and it obliterates it out like an eclipse. But what I mean is, it doesn't matter, does it? For doing what I do, it doesn't, it doesn't interfere in any shape or form. But the thing is, Carl, what people are fascinated with, and I've said it before, you've got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be charging for more information like that from next week. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's crazy. It takes us ages to go through them and, and read them. And we, are, we are going through them. We are reading them. Freddie Gerstrom from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. Sure. That's that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every yeah. year. Every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing, it's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's pancake Tuesday. No, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this. You know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily. So we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose yeah. Certainly, you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill. She had a fever, but there was no. Food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, to cook. it was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I, I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. It's too much, isn't it? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, "No, come on, come with me." She was like, "Oh, but I've got this fever. I'm hot and everything." 
So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days, but... How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her. And, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's alright. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p She's never back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, she liked me and that. And, um... What did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion. Does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even... Yeah, but I'd, I'd pick something smaller. Yeah. Or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth. I'd go, definitely not. What? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's, that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? It's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's and English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we were just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right? So... <laughs> you was, how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why why are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because was was because because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right, there's there's loads of that. You only have to like like you know I was in Malaga the other week, right, and you know you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So. And they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, w you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. 
So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Con? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but what But what I mean is... I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right? What What do you think it's like being a crab? If you, if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to, it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen but you're a slug and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> No, because what what do you do? I'd I'd eat that. I'd eat, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God! Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible. You but, know. but hang on, though, is he a giant beetle or yeah. is it? He... Well, yeah. Well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant- sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around, and you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a whoa, hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you So you're, 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 all these, those beetles, they're scrubbing around, right? You're sort of like watching them and there's, and then you realise that you want a mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What did they do? How did they get on? Whoa. It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad? Because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick? Because you've got a human mind. Well, no. Because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go oh, pretend to think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you're a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? But no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm -hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs <laughs> wandering about. Whereas beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh God! Okay, all right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right. What What would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly, right? And you were knocking around with the flies, right? And you had to land on some, uh... Excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. 
What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, loving I it. Wouldn't, no, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just, I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. Yeah, wait, watch and that. Because don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in like the, um, an un, uh, hatched egg of something. Like maybe one of those, e like, uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a bait as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I do there. Uh, will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. I don't believe it. He's written it down. The well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary, and uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All right. Say it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah. Good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever, because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is... Uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all going to die stress. Because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're going to die in your sleep. I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, no, but I we never know that. we're going to, because we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know... I but know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we put in a new lung... They never, they don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, clear, clear, rushing about today, got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying, I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked 
about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of <laughs> the ramblings man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's a... just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, right, podcasting's been happening years ago, Mm. Something happens. Again, a right? lot of information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you leave out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's <laughs> yeah. all the detail you need. So, the world happened, no. we came back, we... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this, this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still f you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was, it was, in, it was in, like, a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need... You start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. <laughs> There's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready, My Name is Earl, and The It Crowd. <laughs> the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle, as it happens. Friday night comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. Now then, well now, the young man. Uh. Well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Oh, get that in that, Mikey News! You freaking young man, kill you! Ah, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final Monkey News, right? I'm not I'm not doing this anymore. Right? Because we've, we've covered it all. All the Monkey News has been covered? It has. It has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right, do you know, um, Ugh. in the first, uh, podcast that we did, we, uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where we left So haven't you got a real no a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, is it new? No, has it happened recent? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard, <laughs> a happened and b <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right. It never happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, so like I say, the first monkey news it was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little shoot on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went. It went up there. Uh, did a really good job. It was taught how to press the buttons. Hit the left button for a banana, you know. Right button to... To go right, uh, make history and go, go into right space. Right, um... Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Ah, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have the right button. We should have fed him before he went and then he had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. Hey, oh, fucker. Press the right button and do something. Oh, he hey, hit the left button again, the little fucker. So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there, he came back, he could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. so anyway, there was, there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program. And it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, so mm. a bit of an update. That's that's the same one as I talked about. His right. name was Am. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I found out about it since then, um, Am went up there, did the left right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when when he went up there, and something went wrong with the machinery, and 
do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship. Banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. <laughs> but, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no! How did so that, what? How did so that what had been though? taught? Um, what, oh, this is the problem with with electronics, isn't it? Well, no. I don't think no, this. <laughs> Apparently, this is the problem. But the good. Th I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online. By so way. what mm. happened when it all went haywire? What what occurred? Well, luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, so he was right. Well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> As much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, was thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, I can't mean, work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done on working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years, Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella, they've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training, mm. what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> And they had mm. to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp's home for retired <laughs> As for retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanots. Chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of even though they're not gonna be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, like remember that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want to like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to like savethechimps.org and it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there. You can I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that who have done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same place. That's what I mean. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Carl needs your money. I, if you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with this. He just, he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> for information on the archive of the podcasts, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcasts to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's the, it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless, in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But, Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin? Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning, so it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. But that's science for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the first in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And the fool, the round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've been away filming um, our second series of extras, uh, leaving Carl to his own devices in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been all right. It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Uh. Sort of enjoyed it a little bit, was out and about. Yeah. Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch <laughs> and starts exactly. scratching against the door. <laughs> Suzanne thinks, it's time. <laughs> it's, it's just good thinking time though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. Right. And you just think about a lot of stuff. And you know, like, like say with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming a TV show, 
you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing, because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried about? Well, Steve, you wouldn't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them, because they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack. Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened? I'd, I'd been. Did it clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd were there some that. other little bee paramedics? No, no. I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at you know uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of so aware. So when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. Just because you don't work at the radio station anymore, I want you to do some constructive stuff. And you go, yeah, I am, yeah. And so you, so in your head suddenly goes... <laughs> and he go, goes out, oh, there's a moth. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than, like, most of the time. And I come out of the park, just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you. And I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air. And it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that. And um, it just fell. It fell from the air in front of me. And it was on the pavement. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still. Gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement. Nothing. Stone sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. Yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I was... like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. My right. god, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks. Stress. Are you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you... It fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it? No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing, <laughs> and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It was just rigor mortis had set in. Set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. But well, when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Yeah, it's just, you know, so like I say, just just insect life and that, it's interesting. You say it's interesting, but do you care about really finding out about them? Do you really care about what bees do or as You look at them and you make up your own world. For example, it had a heart attack, it's stress, it's overweight. You know nothing. I could, I could probably, why don't you, why don't you look something up, you know, honeybees are fascinating, you know, uh, honeybees, they've been, they've been around making honey for a hundred million years. It's incredible. Their wings beat over 11,000 times a minute. And he's thinking, no wonder I had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're, fat. do you know, do you know, um, bees, like ants, are actually like specialised wasps. They're sort of, they're sort of developed from the same... Family. Sort of, huh? Family, like. Well, yeah, yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise you, though. No. Does it interest you in any way? Um, well, everything's linked to something, isn't it? It's like how they say we're from monkeys and that. Yeah. It's all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching ants. You mentioned ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you say it like it was a garden out. party. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, just, it's just all these things. You, you look at them. I mean, you, you go into the scientific bit saying... You know, it likes honey or whatever. Uh, it doesn't like honey. That the reason they store honey is to get them through the winter when there's not like nectar or nectar's hard to get, and they store it. And they store too much, which is why we can skim a little bit off the top. We're like agents. <laughs> yeah, well, but but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. As well, no, you to... don't. You don't. You guess. You make it up. You don't look into it at all. No, but you can. A bit of guesswork is you, you're pretty close to the truth most of the time. Why? What do you mean? Well, I don't, I, that that state, statement sums you up. 
a bit of guesswork is pretty close to truth. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one... <laughs> If you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards, and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. There's no, like I say, the moth, depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? Just, just the way it hasn't got, it hasn't got eyes, has it? You just look at it. It doesn't know what's going on. I just don't. Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> That's a rule, if we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. You haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have one. Certainly true of people thinking of becoming an air pilot. <laughs> ah. You know, whilst you've been working and that, I've been travelling about a bit, just seeing, seeing the country and that. Mm. Went to um, Dorset, right? A uh, nice beach there. Uh, and you know those huts you get? Like a hut on the beach, and you, oh, where you get changed, you can get changed in it. But they, they're better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it, uh, sofa if you want. Oh, yeah. you don't mean the Victorian changing yeah, huts? Yeah, you those mean sort like of things? It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And um, we we're walking down there, and there was a really sort of big fat family in one of them. There was about four of them, and you could tell that they've never had a game of anything. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. just sit down there eating ice cream, looking at the sea, and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat, to the point of, you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat, he sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there, and he had a frisbee, and I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's, that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. Frisbee. As we got closer, he was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, even, again, you know, the one active thing he's got is using it to eat out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like you know, when it comes to keeping <sighs> fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. Were you um, sporty, Rick? Uh, I was, yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Were you good at it? Um, I was good at some things. Uh, was never good at rugby. Never good at cricket. Uh, was alright at football. But those things were the more competitive things that were scary. So at my school, when you're surrounded by, like, people, <laughs> the fun is hurting someone. Well, it's weird you say it, because I remember the first day I went to play cricket, my mum said, as I was leaving, I was really excited about playing cricket, she went, be careful, I was walking across a playing field once, a cricket ball hit me on the head, I was unconscious for two hours. Freaked me out, on yeah, the well, way to play cricket, I thought, okay, always t scared of the ball, because it's obviously, as you say, rock solid. I remember a couple of seasons later, I had to play rugby for the first time. As I was leaving the house, she went, be careful with rugby. I knew a kid once broke his back playing it. I was terrified of rugby. I mean, I was yeah, terrified scared. of rugby. Such a scary game. The ball came to me, I got rid of it immediately. It's uh, mental. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't understand. What, I've, what I remember is, I remember a teacher saying, you've got to play it very carefully because you can get seriously injured, you can hurt yourself, you can be crippled for life. I remember thinking, why are we allowed to still play this game at school? I was worried about cracking heads. Yeah. And a finger in the eye. How is it not bad? That worried me all the time, a finger in the eye. That, uh, but they removed the asbestos from schools in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. But rugby, I it's allowed to play. It's mental. Yeah. You see, I, I had a mate called Mark who liked playing cricket, right? And whenever, when I used to say to my mum, oh, can I, I'm just, I want to go out with Mark and his dad to play cricket. And she never used to let me go. She'd go, oh, I prefer, you know, you didn't. And I used to always think that, you know, it's, it's because it's a dangerous sport. You can get it on the head by the ball and it's hard put an eye out or whatever, but it was because his dad, his dad used to drive us to the place to play cricket, and he had, um, his eyelids were too big, so uh, he, he, he used to have to sort of have his head right back. <laughs> Look, it's like see. one of those old-fashioned dolls, right. where you could yeah, lean yeah, about yeah, yeah. and they <laughs> clunk back yeah. and clunk forward again. And she didn't, uh, she didn't like me getting in a car with him. <laughs> so it was this, his eyelids are too big. You, so, growing up, you had a woman who had her head like a bag of spuds. You yeah, had, I didn't know her. No, you had two kids at school with webbed hands and feet and big heads. Yeah. You had a pigeon chest boy. Nowadays you're walking around with insects and moths like something from James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, and you had a, a bloke whose eyelids were too big. One thing I've, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, 
And you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I notice in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance a floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change your head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a program, uh, and it was done in the 50s or 60s, where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up, and it still worked, right? Right, okay. And that was in, like, the 60s or Right, whatever. okay. Well, so, to, well to, to say the change your head makes no sense at all, because if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if... I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, well it wouldn't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body? What, than your own? What I mean is, say if, um, you're wandering about, uh, for some, for some reason, there's an incident. You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not... I came up with the see through skin idea, but it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's see not the, it's like not the outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Well, what stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, but sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot. And it's, like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> Yeah, go on. So, they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So, so what I mean is, yeah. rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've, I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh, just some fella who's died and, I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if... They're it's, laughing at you. Uh, they're, they're laughing, laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So, so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, ah, it's not my body. Oh, no. But, and but, it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean, what am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body? Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. You're a genius! You're a fucking genius! So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, I don't believe it. He's only got to write it down. The... We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would do. <laughs> Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> oh, his only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then, and was rubbing its head with its right arm. 
It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, <laughs> so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed with I mean, insects? You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you, you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we've, we're a bit insect heavy. But at the end of the day, if we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer... I just think they, they do You haven't right. studied them, though. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off and again, don't you think people that insects are doing stuff, they're not. Yeah, it goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, <laughs> you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words! Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> just the spine yeah. just for a few seconds each yeah didn't open them I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page but it was in the book as well it's a good point though isn't it no it's not a good point because you didn't tell us anything dictionary is in the dictionary well, of course it is well, why if, if you go, how do you spell dictionary, you look at the spine and you go, oh, there it is, D-I-C, C, and all that. <laughs> so what, is, what does dictionary mean? It's a book full of words, isn't it? That's what it means. All books are full of words, you idiot. How to spell them. And if you don't know no, what it is... No, it's not how to spell them. All right, then, well... How do you look up something? No, 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 no. It's not a book full of words. To it. No. It's the meaning. Give us the, the definition the of dictionary. Meaning. It's a book full of words if you want to know what the meanings are. But if you didn't know... Well, that, I'm sorry, what was that sentence? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you didn't know that, then you wouldn't be looking in it, because you wouldn't know the book is about that. So, if you don't know the word dictionary and what it means, you wouldn't be looking at the dictionary, you'd be looking at an A to Z. <laughs> because you Why go, oh, leave it out, though? Just because there's so many words in the world, I, I would have thought they wanted to cram as much as they can on a page, and if dictionary is already on the front... Is that why you suddenly used the word hierarchy for the first time ever? Did you find that in there? Did you look at, did you see hierarchy in the dictionary? I feel that I that, that, that big was. word has pushed out about 26 other more useful ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Suzanne's been going on about me learning another language. But I sort of think your brain has only got so much room on it. And the rest of it's filled with lard. So, <laughs> if I've got to learn everything I know, again, but in a different language, it's taking up space, isn't it? You don't learn everything. Oh, God. It's all, it's all storage, mean? isn't it? But you don't have to learn it again. You don't have to learn the concepts again. You're merely learning vocabulary. Do you know how vocabulary. many moves there are in the human brain? You really, you don't worry. You won't use them all up. I feel that he has reached his capacity, though. Yeah. Well, you need a, another sort of... You, you need an update. You need some more memory. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> Fucking hell, more insects! What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK <laughs> and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? There's two new flies. <laughs> What do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species, and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got, like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Say, call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know, uh, was say that's orange. <laughs> B. Lively, yeah. No, this is painful. No, but this I'm is just painful. making it easy. But five B wears a little hat. He's yeah, a little hat. Right. Yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. This is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species. Log it, whatever. Mm. And then the other one went, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. keep your pen handy. Look at this one. It's got a hat on. So then they they found them both within the same distance, 
I don't know about that sentence. Keep things. going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, let him try both, finish. they I, found them both within the same both, distance. But without <laughs> interrupting him, let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkin just said, they found them both within the same distance. <laughs> Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> Yeah, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd yeah. concept? Because <laughs> you think you think of it as like two little um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find they're both new and they they've got something. Yeah, they're both, they're both goths. So yeah. they start hanging out together. Yeah. Uh, and this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio. Yeah. I know if I look into that story. It would be 90% wrong. Bit tired today, because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! <laughs> I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's I think any hominid, anything that could even be linked to anything that may become man is only about a million years old, and I think Homo sapien is probably only about 150,000 years old. Dinosaurs are about 150 million to, to 250 million. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not the age bit, that's amazing. It's the fact of, there's a fella... Won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, well that's definitely not true either. This is unbelievable. Well, there was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? Oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T. S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Right. <laughs> it may be the greatest poem no, ever written. Just, just, you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system in the last three. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, you, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right, okay. This is going out all over the world, this this podcast. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be up here? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. <laughs> <laughs> he said it as though the last bit was going to rhyme. He said it like it was going to rhyme. Oh, God. No, I, think, amazing, I think I, I think Carl. he feels I think he feels as though the final line I'd rather be a blind moth is going to be one of those great you know those, it, a summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor I'd the caveman be a blind moth. no but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that he really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be a blind, blind moth. moth yeah well I'm just because I've looked at the day's news can we always do that Carl can we always find a day right and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts a poem. A poem. Just like that. I love that structure. I, I love that structure. If there's any um, English students or professors um, or novelists or poets listening, um, please email us what they thought of that poem, why it's good, why it's bad. So, you know, give us your thoughts. 
uh, on that. I mean, we would love expert opinion, um, poets, um, English professors. Uh, just email us at uh, podcast at rickygervais.com. Mm. Now, Carl, apart from being a poet, you are an author now. You have, you've written a book, mm. you know, which surprised me and Steve, because as Steve said, we, we thought you'd read a book before you actually wrote one, mm. but you've proved us, proved us wrong. And all your teachers wrong, and everyone in the world who thinks you're an idiot. It is actually a very good book. I mean, it, a, a lot of it is transcripts from, you know, the podcasts. Uh, but you've answered some of uh, your critics, haven't you? And you've you've tried to prove some of your theories. Uh, it's everything about Carl. It is, it is like... All the drawings. It, all the drawings. There's new stories, isn't there? I mean, there's so much effort. I can't believe it. He's been working on it for months. And it's out on the 18th of September. But you can order it now, can't you, on Amazon.com. And Amazon.co.uk. What's that, what's that book called? It's called The World of Carl Pilkington. Well, thanks very much. Goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And goodbye from the little hollow egg headed moron that is Carl Pilkington. Right. Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, I'm with us. Carl Pilkington. Can't. <laughs> This is the worst chair I've ever sat on. And I've sat on some fucking chairs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Right, are we started? One, one. Are we ready? Are we recording? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Right. Hello and welcome to a brand new series. Oh. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, know, I was getting it. I was getting it all He's fired up. excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. Just seems a bit loud, that. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. Look at that. Look at this, Carl. This is a shambles, this mate. This is a... People have paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? Yeah. Well, come back here, then. We're doing a podcast, you dopey bald twat. What, what are you it? doing? Right, go on. We'll just have to go with it. What Look, are you up to? Like, fucking Davros. Hello? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right, okay, ready? So it was your problem. Oh, Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right, ready? Yeah. Hello, welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St well, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was so excited to say hello. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Hello, and welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is Carl Pilkington. All right. The boys are back in town. What concerns me, is this the tail end of the last series of podcasts, or is this a brand new comeback? What I mean is, is this take that when Robbie Williams had left, they sort of limped on with a couple more songs and then called it an end? Or is this the triumphant return of take that? This is, I mean, no, I, I think we're a sort of, we're like a, a, a great rock group who's just been away for a couple of years doing their... Their fifth album. Right. Is it the fifth? The well, mediocre it? fifth album. The media yeah. We've done, hold on, one, two, three series. We did the specials, which is like a fourth series. Yeah, this is like the, this is like the fifth series. Here it is, the fifth series of podcasts. Although we can't call it podcasts, because, um, they're audiobooks, because we're charging for them. We're not even going to give them away free first, then charge for them, because, um, in the past, we've given them away free. Oh, and then we put them on iTunes, the back catalogue. You can, you can buy them. If you missed out on the last year, when they were free for a year, now you can pay a pound. People are c complaining. Last time we gave it away for free, like a year later, we sort of put it up there. People can buy it. They're going, oh, this was once free. Well, yeah, it was once free. So we did our bit. We gave it to you for free, and now we're charging for people to get, you should have bought it for free. I can, we can't do any more. If everyone did that, I mean, it would just be a better world, wouldn't it? Give it away for free, maybe, and then charge for it if you're too late. So we're not even going to give this one away for free, because they, they annoyed us, didn't they, Carl? Yeah, a little bit. Um, well, uh, we actually did a bit of planning for this as well. We thought, we're going straight to a paid audio book. Let's plan it. Let's not just come in here and shambles. We've booked a studio. We're in a nice little studio in West London. Our own little... It's all to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, we just look at right the right. chairs. Look at the chairs. Yeah, Steve didn't get a good chair, but yeah, well, yeah, I got a rubbish chair. Look how big I am. I have a giant sat on a like a kiddie's chair, <laughs> and you've got. Look at you. You're almost half asleep, as usual, Carl. You, I don't know why you need a good chair. What do you mean? I don't, why do you need a good, comfy chair? Look how you're sat. This is. This is you can be perched way. on a stool. You can be perched on a box. Is, why don't we swap chairs? Well, why do you want to, what's wrong with you? Because it's, look at it! Is this how you normally behave? You always get your own way at home. Is this how it is? Yes, oh. in my house I do normally sit in a chair that I find comfy. Will you be happy if I swap chairs? Yes, I, I had to get him a special chair. 
I bought some chairs for the office. I bought them. He went, oh, don't like this one. So I went and got him another one. It was actually cheaper than the one he had. He said, yeah, I like that more. Well, there you are. That's a lovely happy ending. You ended up saving I didn't money. give him a happy ending. I did not give him a happy ending. He just sat there and we worked. There was no happy did ending Did you get this involved. where you'd be happy? I think I would be happy. What yeah, do you mean certainly. think? It's like Goldilocks. Are you going to be happy with this or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you let me try it on for size and see how we, how we get on? I feel guilty charging for this. <laughs> well, let's, let's just try it. How's that, sir? Is that okay? That's a nice chair, actually. Well, you're going to move the chair, so you're going to sit. Oh, no, it's the whole dynamic. No, I'm going to move the chair. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you got to. I can't. You can't. It's got to be me and Steve one side, and the little round twonk the other. Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to start any minute now. We had a little cup of coffee. There's some Kit Kat in the fridge, isn't there? Right. We thought we'd feed Carl a little Kit Kat later. Because he's like, he's there, he's sort of pressing the buttons, he's keeping an eye on the computer and everything. And he's like a doctor. He, a doctor doesn't swab his own forehead. So what I do is I'll get a little Kit Kat later, I'll dunk it in Carl's um, tea, and then I'll feed him a little Kit Kat. Look forward to that. Yeah. Mm. How fussy was Carl as well with the tea? He talks about oh. you with the chairs. He was looking at what tea bags they were. I went, oh, PG tips. Oh, okay. It's a bit right. strong, PG. I can't believe you've got favourite tea bag. What's your favourite tea bag? Twinings English breakfast. Can you really tell the difference? Yeah, I can. I've done like a little test on it because my mate was saying, "Oh, it's rubbish. It's all in your head." Mm. And he had a selection of tea bags. <laughs> uh, we had nothing else going on. He said, "Right, what I'm going to do? I'm going to make three teas." And he used Tetley PG Twinings. Oh. Straight away, I got the Twinings. Straight away. Party oh, time! Yeah. Party time in the Pilgrimage household. Ooh, man alive. Oh, when was this? How old were you? Oh, it was just going back a, a few months. I was like, uh, I was like a Jilly Goulden, just sort of. Uh, Having a little, you can tell by the smell of a PG, because it's strong tea that, mm. very strong. Uh, Twinings is quite uh, fresh and light. <laughs> uh, Tetley was just the one in the middle. Can they get their money back if they have paid for this? Can they get their money back? And I just love the money back. Illegally download it with the this people. This isn't that it for, for the thing, is it? We're just having a chat. Oh, we can tell, like like the tea bags, we can tell the quality podcasting from the rubbish, can we? We'll set this out. If this is still in, then it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Right then. So uh, let's start now. Let's let's start. Right, right. Concentrate. Um, so, episode one. I thought what we'd do um, is maybe go over some of the things that have happened since we met, as it's the final series. We met in about two thousand and two. I thought we could think of how the world's changed in those uh, seven years, six yeah. seven years. Well, certainly uh, the big news is. The endless threat of terror. Terror, the war on terror. That had, that had kicked in when we met Carl all those years ago. Well, I walked into that room, we were given this little, what, what, what I, at first I thought was a little slack-jawed chimp, gimp, sort of techno kid. It turned out that he wasn't very technical either. Didn't even have that. No, didn't even have that, just a gimp. And he opened his mouth and we thought, we've struck gold here. This is like a, a vein of uh, pure idiocy. Um, so that was going on. Uh, podcasting hadn't been invented. That's new, isn't it? You were very much a pioneer, if you don't mind me saying, Rick. Thanks, mate. The iPod. We've talked about the iPod. Um, Carl, not impressed. I think it's a, just an amazing piece of design. No, it is. It's good. Yeah. I've always said it's, it's, it's good. Now, I've got one. I was listening to it on the way here. Yeah. But all I'm saying is... How many songs have you got on it? Because you said there's only about three songs you'd want to hear. Well, what I've, uh, I've probably got about, we got about... 400 on it now. That's right. Um, but there's no, there's no sort of filler. I don't just go putting full albums on it. No. I handpick. Yeah. Um, but what's odd is I find that I'm sort of buying stuff that I wouldn't normally buy if it was only on record, which is good but bad, because I've, mm. I've got a lot of clutter now. You know what I mean? We well, said you haven't. You said you haven't got a filler. So I thought you were cherry picking. No, yeah. but what I'm saying is, like yesterday I bought some Dr. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time anyone thought, I'll tell you what, I haven't heard for a while, Dr. Rook? <laughs> well, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, I used to like that one. My mum used to have that one when she was doing the Sunday dinner. I thought, I like What that. one? What did she used to have on? Dr. Rook. What, every every Sunday? Well, it's just, uh, that's the memory I've got of it. I'm cooking the turkey, put the Dr. Rook on. It just, it just always on. Uh, and some other country western singer. My mum was Jim Reeves. She always put Jim yeah, Reeves on. Yeah, she liked on. Jim Reeves. Yeah, I like Jim Reeves. Um, My parents didn't like music. Silence. Oh no! <laughs> my it was constantly. Never put record on. Oh, wow. record Su on. At our house, Suzanne it does her head in when she comes round to mum and dad's house because there's music on in every room, all different. <laughs> and my mum's got into this fella called uh, Roger Fender or something. 
some country western singer, and it's on all the time on loop, the same song. You said the sheep across the road has started to sort of hum to it. It's on that much. Brilliant. Think of looking over and seeing some sheep humming. No, he's Roger just, Fender, whoever he is. I, I don't. I, I think that's his name. But uh, but yeah. So I've bought some Doctor Hook. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying. What is, did you buy? What Doctor Hook did you buy? It's called. Uh, if not you, it's called. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't have bought that if if I had to go to a record shop and. Well, no, it wouldn't be available. <laughs> They'd go. What are you talking about, mate? Have you got that one by mate? Can you leave the store? Well, yeah, but that's a good thing, isn't it? Now that you're being opened up to a whole different yeah, uh, but it's that thing of of just buying that's what excites me most exactly. the back catalog yeah. that you can yeah, without yeah. trying it's, to go into it. But but I'm just saying that that's what happens, isn't it? If you've got a space for something, you fill it, and that's the problem. If my if my iPod wasn't an iPod and it was a cassette, Doctor Uck wouldn't be on it. He wouldn't feature. He wouldn't be on the cassette. Elvis what? would be. Yeah. Uh, just the big boys. What's wrong with having a space and filling it? I mean, there's a space between your ears. We'd love to fill that, but um, just because it's stuff is normally stuff you don't need if you've got too much space and you're filling it. It's like Ricky's house. You've got stuff in there now that you wouldn't have had in a smaller flat. You've got dead owls and stuff like that. Right, dead owls. Why are you buying dead owls? No, it's an antique thing. It's an antique stuffed owl, and I was assured it died. Of natural causes of old age, yeah, and then sure. just yeah, it looked in good nick. It didn't look yeah. upset. But dead owls suggest that they just fly into the room. and I just leave them there. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like they cr they crack their head. But on, what, on you're on just sat in your uh, dressing gown constantly drinking yeah. gin. Uh, Jay, there's another dead owl. <laughs> Clean up. Feed into the cup. Feed into the puma. But that's what I'm saying. I haven't got room for it. I haven't got room for a live owl. Never mind a dead one. <laughs> so that's the difference, and that's the same with an iPod, isn't it? With an iPod, because you've got so many gig. You go, what will I have? Well, yeah, but Ricky's not, Ricky's not sat at home looking at an empty space in his flat thinking, I need to fill that with something. I think he would be. What would be there? If that dead owl wasn't there, what would you put there? But you've picked on one thing. You've picked on one Well, that's all you small... can do. I'm just picking on an example. What else do you want me to pick? I'm just saying, I have not got room for a dead owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd never look at one in a shop. I'd go, I can't, I'm not going to buy that because I haven't got the space for it. But why are you obsessed with, like, someone trying to press you into getting this dead owl? I, wonder, I, I mean, it, it seems a weird thing to shout, I have not got space for a dead owl. No, but if I, say if I had an urge to see a dead owl. Right. Natural History Museum, loads of them. Right. I've never seen one and gone, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to the museum, I want one in my house. That to me is like, right, Suzanne, have we got everything? Have we got a dishwasher? Yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Ironing board? Yeah. Right. There's a bit of space there. Is there anything you want? Then, if it's like, dead owl? All right, we've got the room for it. But the way we're, the way we're living now, we've definitely not got room for, for a dead owl. That's all, that's all I was saying. And to me, a dead owl... I, I'd like this to be part of um, a state agent's patter, <laughs> and there's a lovely space there for uh, you fitting about seven dead owls. They don't they do it by square footage anymore. It's uh, six thousand dead owls. Um, you idiot. Well, um, yeah, I'm still not convinced by this idea of uh, the space has got to be filled. You know, people aren't. It's not. People just choose to buy things and fill up their house with those things because they they give them pleasure. This Most what, things uh, we've got are junk. If if you didn't have junk, all you'd have is a, a, a cooker, um, a, a bath, um, maybe a sink, a bed, and that would be it. That anything else, a, a television, isn't necessary, is it? You seem to think that people should live like, you know, kind of 19th century mining community. Well, no, but they, <laughs> like, a few years ago people worked this out, didn't they? They all went minimalistic because they Say said- it what? Say it what? Minimalistic. So one more time. Minimalistic. No. No. What, the, what's, what letter are you starting with in that word? M. Okay. Where are you going on from there? Mi minimum. Well, it must be mi it must be minimum. Yeah. So, so it's what, that minimalistic. 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 No, 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 no. You're well, you know what I mean. No, no, wait. You're popping in an M where there should be an N. Minimalistic. You put in two alums when there should be one arm, right? Minimalistic. M minimalistic. Yeah. Wow. Woo. On, right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> That's so, the end of the uh, the first episode. <laughs> it's gone well. Um, so anyway, a couple of years back, everyone went. Yeah, that was that was the that was the trend, wasn't it? But we've gone back to being clutter clutteristic. The way I live, like I've said to you before, it's the old three month rule. If something's not used over three months, chuck it out because it's not needed. So suitcases. What was the that? Yeah, suitcase. No, he uses a suitcase every two weeks. He's off all the time. Yeah, he's off all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most stuff, most stuff at clothes. 
Oh, well, if you don't wear a piece of clothing in three months, it's gone. Well, why haven't I wore it in three months? Well, because maybe it's a, uh, it's a suit or a tuxedo and you've not no, been to any fancy have, balls. I don't have any clothes like that. I wear the same things anyway. I throw clothes away every three months because I get too fat for them. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. But it does seem to me the way you talk, it's like you want to live, as I say, like some kind of 19th century pauper with a big tin bath in the lounge in the one room in your house and all the family bathe in it. And yet you wouldn't be happy with well, that. Well, maybe, would maybe. You? Well, I've told you before about that's, that's something I said when I was younger. What? what did you say? When I was younger, um, I think uh, I was having a bath or something. And I said to my mum, Oh, remember when I was in like that tin bath in front of the fire? She went, What? And mm. now that's strange, isn't it, that you're saying I'd be happier with that back then. So it's like that was my past life. Well, hang on, hang on. Whoa, we haven't finished whoa, yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. What your, do you mean? Your mum, your mum said what you're talking about. You said how old were you? I uh, must have been a kid if I'm having a bath and my mum sat there. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how you operate. I assume you were, but how old? Must have had time to have a bath. As you get older, you don't have as much time, do you? So I'd say five. I love the fact that after five you didn't have time for the bar. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's so busy. Carl, we've read your diary. One day it was simply went to the cobblers and back. No, but so you had time to have about nineteen bars. No, but as you get older, you sort of go. I haven't got time to sit in a bath. Whereas a kid, it's something to do. You're already staring at ants. When have you ever been too busy to have a bath? One, you're never busy. Two, how can you be too busy to wash? It's like saying too busy to eat. Breathe. Got to breathe last night. Why? I had a bit of work to do. What point are you making? So I'm just saying. This you is not an anecdote. You said that that I'd be happier back in 1800s or whatever. But what are you yeah. what are you saying that you didn't really have a bath in front of the fire? You yeah, mean I this might... was a glimpse of a past life? Is yes. What you think? Yes. This is this is just such a non-point. <laughs> this is just nothing. This is this, if you'd said, well, then I went off to see one of those people who regresses you, and although it was a load of old bollocks, he regressed me, and it turns out I was the king of Sheba. I love those things, people. Everyone thinks they've lived before, right? Mm. Did I tell you that um, there was a, a documentary um, about these people in um, uh, Los Angeles that, that they'd lived before and they'd come back and and uh, they did they did a, a come as you were party. So they went as the people in their previous life. All of them famous. Of course they were. Kings, queens, uh, leaders of men. Not as I was a stable hand, I forget my name. Right, ever, two Napoleons, one of them's lying. <laughs> I mean, it, absolute twaddle. <laughs> we're talking about things that have uh, happened since we met. We've uh, we've done podcasting, we've done the iPod, we've dismissed that. Um, see, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, c cat mops, I don't know, it wasn't yours, nor was the tie, was it? The stupid tie. What's that? What's the one about the tie? Um, The tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that, that's something I, I saw somewhere, but it never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good. It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie <laughs> packed with stuff. You want right, to imagine? All right, this Frank. Stuff. Nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um, don't know. Well, I tell you. What? Uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet, and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well, all right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie on your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, huh, that's weird. What you so I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, innit? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing on. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice it, give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> a tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something, hands free, and everything's always there. A bag, you put stuff in a bag, you put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags, that's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off, oh, where's the bag? A tie, when you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. <laughs> Go! The country would look smarter. Right, you have a pocket, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got spare change, I've got, uh, like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. 
A uh, pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> That's <laughs> safe, isn't it? Oh, that's a, a good place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and then near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when, you, when you're on the beach and you just got your Speedos on, <laughs> pop a tie on, go to the shop and pop a tie on. <laughs> well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times, but I'm just saying if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, you've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If, I mean, come on. Don't, don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else has happened since we met? 2002. Um, gay marriages. That's, uh, that's kicked in. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, it happened. Are yeah. they popular, though? I mean... Well, amongst gay people who want to get married, they're very popular, I imagine. What's the point of it? You know, I suppose they want to feel that there's an equality. Well, is it just one of them things where they wanted it because they can't have it? Do you uh, know what I mean? I think any excuse for a fancy dress. They like they like to dress up. They love a press tent. See, I just don't understand. That, what's the, I mean, who gets whose name do they use? Whose surname do they go with? I don't know. There's a problem. Just creating problems, I always say that. Any problem solved is a new problem made. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, any that. problem solved is a new problem made. Yeah. Like I said that time when I was in hospital, and, uh, you know, I remember in the 80s everyone was going, oh, there's not enough hospital beds and all that. When I was in hospital with, uh, what's it, kidney stones. Yeah. Um, loads of beds, not enough pillars. So that's the way it works. It sorted out the bed problem. <coughs> they give me a bed at night. I was going, I haven't got a pillar. You had to go off and get one. He brought it back. It was still warm. Oh. <laughs> that had been between a... Under a bed head. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like you, you get all the beds. New problem. Where's the pillars? <laughs> Don't solve problems. Don't, Don't solve, solve problems. problems. Brilliant. What do you make of the, um, this big problem in the church? Not wanting, uh... Gay people to be priests. Does that concern you? No. No? <laughs> it's a problem if you're gay, and it's a problem if you go to church and you don't like gays, but I, I don't go to church, and I'm not gay. There's certain problems that just go over your head. If you were gay, Carl, what would you do? Well, I'd do what all gays do, I suppose. What the, what, what's that? Whatever it is they do. I'm just saying... Well, that, well you're going to just say... What if well, you I'm didn't... not gay, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, getting uh, gay marriage... Um, would you, uh, ever go through with that? What, if I was gay? Well... It's hard to answer, isn't it? How can I answer it if I'm not gay? I don't know what I'd do. Well, no, I might no, not okay. look like this, I'd look totally different if I was gay. Why? Even though it's me mum's, what's it, me dad's jeers or whatever, he's still, I'd still, I'd look different, <laughs> because gays do, you make more of an effort. Look at me, I won't survive as a gay man, maybe that's why I'm not one. <laughs> right, Carl, I'm gonna give you a scenario though, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna test. Um, would you rather, so you're not gay, okay, this is the real you, right, um, uh, someone put a gun to your head and go, right, okay, Carl, you've either got to marry a little gay fella, there's a little fella here, he, he loves you, he's liked you for a long time, he goes, hello, Carl, you go, all right, mate, he's a lovely bloke, um, I think he's, he lives in Brighton, I think he's in advertising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's There's got a sports car, he's, he's smart, he looks lovely, um, pink shirt, white suit, he's great, he's very popular, he's got tints, it always looks good, mm. right, lo lovely tan. Um, he's about 38. What's his name? Uh, his name is Graham. Oh. Yeah. What's he expecting that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he goes, hello, Carl. And you go, all right, Graham. And, uh, and someone suddenly bursts in and goes, right, you've either got to marry Graham, he puts a gun to your head, he goes, right, you've either got to marry Graham, okay, you've got to tell all your family. Well, you I'm not, I'm not going to marry him, am I? What, whoa, 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 get all the choices. Well, I know, I know one of the choices, and I'm not happy with that choice, so you go with whatever else. Well, no. So what's the other option, Rick? Well, okay. So you marry, you marry Graham, and you yeah, do- I marrying Graham. You do all the things in the bedroom. Why is that happening? Well, you're married now. You're married now, and he you wants to consummate the marriage. He loves Even you. under marriage, you can't do that, can you? You can say, hang on a minute. Well, no. Well, just, I don't know why you've married Graham. No, you, but you want him to be happy. You want him to be happy. He's giving you a lovely house. Yeah, but I'd say, Graham, hang on a minute, you know the score. I'm not into this. No, I went he doesn't along with know. it because you didn't want a bullet in your head. No. <laughs> now, if you love me, will you stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? What are you doing in the bedroom? Well, no, just, uh, the, you know, you have a lovely life. You do your own thing. You do this, right? Podcasts, do your little books and that. 
little, um, you know, uh, and uh, Graham goes off, he does his, and he, he comes back, he goes, oh, I've had a day. Go, what's the matter, Graham? And you go, you just sort of massage him, he's just like, you go, uh, oh. I'll go with the other option. Well, wait, Carl! So you're going, oh, God, oh, he said, I've made you some pork chop. He goes, oh, you're a darling, right? It wouldn't work, though, because you're what, putting what? two people together who don't want to be together. Well, Graham wants to be with you. Yeah, Graham yeah, loves you. Relationship's two way, isn't it? And I, yeah. I, and I don't, I mean, this is a made up man, and I know I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just homophobic. No, it's not. He's annoying me. Why? He's annoying yeah, you. Why is he annoying you? Just the way he looks after his body. Yeah. Not saying he's tanning it, he's having yeah. a massage. I wouldn't be doing all that, so it wouldn't last. The relationship yeah, it's wouldn't work. Yang, it's but it's well. No, it doesn't work. Opposites attract, okay? Not to and that point, it doesn't. He's good to you. Uh, he's really though. He, he, he's oh god, he's he's faithful. Um, he's got a good job. He's got a really good job. Um, you get invited to really nice parties. It's just him. I don't like him. Well, no, he's he's no, that's a shame. He, he absolutely loves you. That happens, doesn't it? It happens that I remember right. being at school with a girl who really liked me, and I was yeah. like, "It's not going to happen, Sharon." No, no, no it the, happen. The first, the first, the first, and that's day. Sharon, not Graham. <laughs> <laughs> so the chances of me letting this Graham move in. <laughs> well, you've moved in with him, right? He's got a lovely, bigger, got a uh, six-bedroom house. Of course he is. And, um, you, you move in with him, right? It's the first day you go, oh, I'm not happy with this, because you're thinking, oh my god, it's a, oh god. First day in marriage, what's it gonna go? He goes off, he gives you a peck on the What's head. the option? Well, what's wait! What's the other choice? Well, you don't know! Yeah, okay. So, he comes home, he goes, oh, he's bought you a lovely little ankle bracelet. Oh, that's with, sweet of With Carl. Right. Carl, Carl, love- Graham, I need a word. <laughs> <laughs> I go, what is it? What's, it? what's up, love? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? God, I'll be, look, I'll be Graham. Right, okay. I'll be Graham. What's the matter? You look tense. This is all, uh, it's, we're living a lie, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just the alternative is so much worse. What's the alternative? Uh, well, what is the alternative, Rick? I think we're all waiting for that. Well, marry a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> marry a chimp? Yeah. Unless you either live with a chimp in a tree or marry Graham, your family are going to get killed. They're going to, someone's going to shoot them, right? So you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to go and live in a tree with a chimp and eat nothing but bananas and just live the chimp world? Okay. Yeah. Or woo Graham. You go down there, you're chatting to him, you're, in a, you're just in a, a club, right? You're there. But right. who's watching that I'm staying with Whoever this evil person, person, person is. Whoever this evil person is, right, yeah, yeah. Well, where's he watching from? The, the evil, the evil person's going, right, he goes to that club, Saturday nights, don't, don't bother going before midnight, he won't be there. All right, so you get there, you walk in there, it's 1am, and he goes, that's him over there, in the pink shirt dancing, okay? In right, a he, would, he wouldn't like me. <laughs> he would. You go, no, you go, well, this uh, is it, you've got to win him over. Look at you, look at your lovely shaved head, hairy arms. Oh my god. I mean, you are more suited to the chimp, but now you'll go down a storm, right? You go down there, you've, you've got you've got a little vest on, leather trousers. What would you say to Graham? You've got back. to go over. You've no. cut out, you've got a bought another pair of trousers and you've cut out the back, okay? There you go in. Your ass is showing, you've got, you've got a freshly shaved head, you've got a little white vest, okay? Mm. Has he got all this on? Uh, no, he's got, uh, he's got like a little pink Ben Sherman, uh, white trousers and, uh, espadrilles. Right, I'd dance over. Yeah? I'd yeah. say, uh, you grey, and we go, yeah. Oh, hello. Who are you? i say, never mind, you haven't seen a chimp about, have you? <laughs> <laughs> the fella across the way from me had had the same thing as me, but he'd had it a couple of days ago when he was in agony, so that doesn't help when he's saying, oh, I've been to Ellen back. Like, don't <laughs> tell me that. Sure. I don't want to know. Just say it was, it was all right and stuff. So, uh, it just, the, the whole thing of a hospital is stressful. You know what I mean? They wake you up, like, every half an hour in the night, saying, how do you feel? It's like, well, what, you know, it's half past three. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I've got to have it done again in a couple of weeks. Because, um, what they've done now, they've popped pop that straw up, but the stone's still in there because they didn't have the laser team in with them. Blast the stone, and then... That time they're probably going to leave a little bit of string out the end. Then they have to go about three days later and they pull it out. Tell you what though, when you are sort of, because when you're in hospital, you've got a lot of time just to sit there and think about stuff. And uh, what I was thinking about is, 
what is the closest thing t sort of living that's nothing. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's like the closest, like, do you know at some point something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't, no, I don't understand what you mean. Something, at, at some point people were nothing and then something happened and there was something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But they were never you, nothing, you, were they? Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's say, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say, like, when you look at a, a stick insect, right? you go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's, no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, <laughs> it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> he's not a cross between a human and a shrub. No, is but, he? That's, but that's, that's my From a distance, stuff. you can't see him. That's the same as the stick insect. No, but that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like, they, they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, they're insects that, 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 that have evolved to look like a leaf. So a bird thinks, oh, there's no, there's no tea there. No, That's not I, a juicy I, insect. It's a leaf. I don't eat leaves. Yeah, but Forget at some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no! <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. There's nothing on a genetic level or molecular level, uh, any, anything to do with it having anything to do with a stick or a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it, it... That's like saying comedians must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but It what, looks like a leaf. What I don't understand is... It has evolved to blend in perfectly with its surroundings and fool predators. But then how does it meet, how does it have relationships? It will be going around sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> no it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like, it doesn't matter. They do it with pheromones and attraction and, uh, it, it's not like they, uh, it, 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 you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> this club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her, she was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave. That's, that's not a stick insect, that's a stick. What, what are you talking about? That's a stick, you've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it, I just thought she had a great f slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. But I've been, I've been reading a lot about, you know, I like spiders and stuff, just reading about them. Mm. Uh, and there's one, right? Mm -hmm. It's got big legs. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't use them. Um, it goes around floating in the air on a bit of webbage. Um, <laughs> Like he just took a gamble then, didn't he? He took a gamble, he thought, do you know what, I'm gonna go with webbage. Don't know if it's a word, not sure, but I could just <laughs> say web, and I'm gonna go with webbage, I'm gonna risk it. <laughs> and it didn't oh. pay off, did it? <laughs> webbage! <laughs> webbage! But that's how it gets about, it's in the air like a kite. Yeah. It's just floating about. I've seen one, yeah. So, that's what I'm saying about weirdness. Mm. The way all that goes on, and this is what I can't get my head around. You, you have got your head round. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do they get ill, then? <laughs> He's just... For those listening at home, he has just bumped his head against the microphone. <laughs> Trying to mate with it, because it's perfectly <laughs> round, this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when, when I was... Like, this is what I'm saying, when I was in hospital and stuff, mm. you do think about how others live, because insects don't have operations. Uh, are they built better than us? to survive in this world. The trap you seem to fall into again and again and again is you cannot conceive of the fact that insects and animals do not have consciousness and personality and communication. They do not function in the way that humans do. You've seen so many Disney cartoons, you believe them now to have a life and wear bowler hats and go to work. But just in the same way that the cavemen didn't have Flintstone type cars and have a little house, but you then, can't seem to understand that animals don't work in that way. But what I mean is, you're saying that no animals or insects know anything, yet when you see them things on nature programmes where a load of ants are having a walk, there's always one at the front who's leading it all. 
So one of well, them's got to know be first. This. Or there are leaders in in. Yeah, but the other ants are going follow him. No, they're not. They're not. They're not vocalising that in any sense no, that you not understand it. No, they're follow him, but they sort of look as if to sort of say, I'm but going without, this way. Without, without, no, without, without cognitive speaking. reasoning. It's not made a conscious decision to act no. in that way. Yeah, but this is when you If a bird, if a, if a, if a raindrop falls on a bird's beak and it moves, it's, it moves away because instinctively it's hardwired to be wary of things which drop on its beak in case it's dangerous. It's not thinking, oh, crumbs, that's, I better get out of the way. It just does it because it's somehow hardwired into it to act that way. But it doesn't stop for a moment and think. Which we don't really, except we then are able to rationalise our, our fears and our actions. Well, I, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in okay, the, in the, last, on from in the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis where he got like a, a half a million pounds grant from a university and I said well Pilgrim seems to he's done ants and he's done bees um he's, he's followed ants apparently they're not doing anything some of them are lazy um he we are granting him another uh, half a million pounds. Um he's been working on it for a year. Um please welcome Carl Pilkington. Carl what have you found? Well even though pigeons have wings they walk a lot. No, but even in times of danger, one was crossing the road and a car was coming, and you'd think that his head would say, best start flying. Yeah, he just walked faster. Well? Well, what's he doing? It was doing stuff, wasn't it? It saved a bit of energy. It takes a lot to take off, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's either that or, you, or you're going to get crushed. You it didn't energy. get crushed, did it? Uh, no, I don't think it did, no. There you go, they knew what he was doing, didn't it? Yeah, it just annoyed me, that's all. It's got a... It's got a <laughs> It's got a power, and it's not <laughs> power. They're, they're all super they're powerful. All, uh, these animals. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why he thinks of the stick insect <laughs> as, as like that. He, you mentioned earlier that's its power, that's its skill. Like Spider-Man was bitten yeah. by a radioactive spider, and now he can solve crimes and, and uh, swing with webs <laughs> with webbage, <laughs> using his webbage. Whereas, yeah, stick insects is not. It's not a superpower. But say if if everything was at the same size as us. <laughs> what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula. Yeah. And a tiger. What would happen there? T a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine the 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird that, innit? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone. Well, it wouldn't happen anyway, because insects have a, uh, insects and arachnids and uh, it just, uh, invertebrate, arthrop arthropods in general, they have a, um, a critical mass, because they haven't got lungs, they breathe through things in their side called spiracles, and if it gets too big, the surface to volume ratio, um, isn't big enough to allow it enough oxygen. So, the biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or somewhat weird it's like big that. though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. He's going I wouldn't worry him. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again, based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. And also, it's not a case that one that will be born too big and can't breathe, it won't happen. That's why they're only that big, because... But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and mm. stuck it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about goldfish. No, it's goldfish. not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish will only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You it's have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what a was well it eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> she, she went to Mars and back. Yeah. It's just that fish are weird, aren't they? Well, no, there's, <laughs> there, no that's a bollocks story, once again. No, I don't know where you've heard it or read it. It's a well-known story. A seven-foot goldfish in your bath. But, uh, no, fish are weird. Ted, like you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? That's the weird thing. What do you mean? Just ping-ponging around these ideas in your mind. You just never see fish sort of just floating about in the water and you go, oh, died of old age. It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> 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 and 
you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? When you think Sometimes. of the amount of fish, not when you think of the amount of fish that are in the sea, there's loads of them, and yet you never because they're eaten walk straight away. The, that's what I'm saying, though. Are they eaten when they're dead, or are they just being eaten? Well, most things like that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird, though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a, you know, it's a jungle out there. Yeah, no, that's why I said oh, I wouldn't want to live in the sea. Because you've got. Are be you on... sure you're not on morphine as we speak? <laughs> No, but you have, you, in the sea, you've got to be constantly sort of alert, haven't you? Yeah, but that's stuff. true of all animals. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of... Uh, you've got an enemy around every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love yeah. it! I love it! It's like a wall into crabs. <laughs> exactly. And young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What <laughs> advice would you give... Okay, then. What advice would you give... Some um, plankton. <laughs> now, what advice would you give um, uh, a, 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 a two-week-old octopus? Um, and what am I? Am I an octopus? <laughs> no, you you're, you're you. We've so, set it up that it can understand you with some sort of... Uh, one of your inventions to talk to the animals. One of your brilliant inventions is just to watch you strap on its tentacle and it can understand human talk. Um, you know, but, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll come up with that one day. Um, what, what do you say to it? What would you say to an octopus, a young octopus, who wants to set out by himself in the sea? Stay, stay close to the rocks. Um, and just let it know about the thing about it can get into a small space. You know, if you look at an owl, don't go, oh, I can't get in there. And sort of squash it. And show itself. <laughs> ah! I can roll it into a ball and sort of say, look at that. Is that hurting? Uh, and, oh, uh, I love the fact that the drugs make no difference. <laughs> if it's like there's no difference. Oh, God. Because that's the only thing that that's got in there. It's boneless. So <laughs> that's, its, that's its special power. That's, that's what it. it can do. You can roll it up. And uh, <laughs> as long as it knows that. But that's the problem with a lot of powers, isn't it? That's that's the same thing about how people say don't have a go at bees because they're not like wasps. They don't sting you because once they sting you, they die. That doesn't know that, does it? It's also not true, but yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't know. So it's not like the bees going around going, I'm not going to sting you because I'll die if I do. What's your point there? I don't understand. I'm just saying... We shouldn't, we how, shouldn't how did, dislike how, bees. Well, how, did, how do these creatures know what to do? Instinct. I suppose it's like that story you told me about the scorpion, isn't it? It's that, isn't it? What, the scorpion and the frog? Yeah. What, the fable? Yeah. What was it? It was a frog it was a, going... It was a, a, a scorpion needed to get across a, a river, and it said to a frog, can you give me a lift? And the frog said, well, no, of course not, because you'll sting me. You're a scorpion. And he goes, well, no, why would I do that? If I sting you and I'm in the water and you drown, I drown. And the frog went, good point. So... The frog gives him a piggyback, going across the river, halfway across, the scorpion stings the frog, and the frog's dying, and the frog's going, now I'm going to die, and you're going to die, so why did you do that? And the scorpion said, because I'm a scorpion. What do you think that, that was meant to point out? Just sort of be careful who you help. No, it's meant to point out that you are what you are. You are your nature. No, but it's also that thing of like. Uh, I'm telling you, it's nothing to do with. If what you're the driving frog was... no, and, and no. someone's hitchhiking, no. don't pick them up because. No, no, it's nothing to do mm. with the mentality or the reasoning or the, 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 the anything to do with the frog at all. The point I, of it. Well, I don't know. I think Aesop was thinking a lot about the hitchhiking problem. It wouldn't happen. That's the problem with a lot of them fables. They're putting animals together that wouldn't meet. Oh, whereas insects go around shagging leaves. Well, insects are with the leaves, whereas I don't know where a scorpion is knocking around with a frog. <laughs> I mean, there's that weird one I remember uh, He's watching. Annoyed. I remember hearing something about this lizard that sort of gets pally with the scorpions, even though they're not mates, they don't get on. But they've kind of got this agreement that the, the scorpion can live in their house if they guard it, and there's, there's, the local people used to stick their hands down these holes and get the lizards to make slippers out of them. And the lizards were getting sick of this, and I think somehow something happened where 
the lizards thought, look, enough's enough. Uh, we'll let you sleep in our den if you stand by the door. So the scorpion used to, like, stand by the door and stay awake at night whilst the lizard's having a kip. Fella comes along wanting to make some new slippers, puts his hand down the hole, scorpion gets him. Now yeah. that's, that's what's weird with that, that two it's, enemies have worked together. It's called a symbiotic relationship, but at no point did they sit down and go, right, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, I'll give you shelter, you give me that sting in case uh, there's a fellow who wants to make slippers. Because all this happened way before people were making slippers. But isn't it weird though, because people, there's nothing that happens like that in people, is there? Of course there is. What, like that, where you don't get on but you work with them? Of course there is. What? Loads of business relationships. What, what do you mean? No, but Too normally you stay, what I mean is you stay years. away if someone's being a bit weird. Yeah, loads of examples where you might go, well, I hate to do it, but my only option is to go with X, Y and Z. But what, what I'm saying is, though, let me just finish. Go on. I, I live in an area where, you know, I sort of know a lot of the locals, and there's a local woman who's a bit mad. Yeah. Now, I know her, but I choose to sort of stay away because it scares you a bit, doesn't it, when something's like that and it's unpredictable. So, uh, you know, when I was in the little corner shop, she came in, right, uh, she screams a lot, just screams for the sake of it, and you don't know if, if she's upset or if she's just doing it for attention, then the scream will go from screaming to laughing. <laughs> so you're like, oh, what's going on? And it was like, like rush hour. It, it was like rush hour time in the shop, <laughs> and she chose to go in then, and she doesn't work, so it was like, why is she coming in now? She's had all day to go in. Mm. Just pick the busy time. <laughs> and she was like about three places in front of me, and she was only buying a Yorkie and some earbuds. Right? And I thought, <laughs> a, what, a Yorkie and some earbuds? Yeah, and I thought, what's the rush? You've come at the wrong time, and you bought stuff that could have waited. You should never have to rush out for a, a Yorkie or an earbud, is what I'm saying. Right? Uh, and I ended up sort of going, oh, I can't stand this, and I left. Now, that was me being like I would expect the scorpion to be, or the lizard. I don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> I have I no don't know idea. Where they are. Okay, so what do you mean? No, I'm just saying how, like, I chose that that woman could be dangerous, so I'll leave, I'll leave her to it. And that's, that's where nature kicks in. And you go, I don't want to be here. I don't know what she's going to do. She's unpredictable. <laughs> I'll pop back later. <laughs> and then, I, you know, I look out, I can see the shop, I saw her go and she was like oh. laughing to herself again and trying to climb up some ladders. And I thought, once she's gone, I'll, I'll nip back. <laughs> I don't know what my point was. I don't know. We have bacon and egg on toast. I'm eager to get through the brown sauce, as the bottle is too big to go in any cupboard, so it has to be left on the sideboard. <laughs> so I had about four dollops of the stuff. I love the cons- you know, that made it into the diary. He's concerned about the fact that brown sauce know, is the, too the big, so he's rushing through it. I know, but I'm just saying the kitchen isn't that big, and it looks messy when you leave stuff out, doesn't it? And we've got this giant brown sauce bottle, <laughs> and I don't want to chuck it away, because that'd be a waste. So you're having brown sauce and everything, oh, your cornflakes, yeah. in your tea. Yeah. A wasp got in the flat. You know trouble's brewing. <laughs> it was massive. The biggest wasp ever. Suzanne asked me to get it out, but I wanted to take a picture of it first. <laughs> I was getting my phone ready when it flew at me. I reckon the sting on it could have killed a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. It ended up flying out the window on its own. <laughs> Drama over it. Oh, God. We went out for tea. You're always in a cafe. That's all. You, this diary, you're all, you spend so much time in a cafe. There were loads of flying ants. I kept kicking the table because I could feel them on my legs. I wouldn't be that jumpy normally, but I still had flashbacks of the giant wasp from the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne told me to stop being stupid because I was ruining a night out. A night out in a cafe. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, what, what, was her, what was it, her birthday? And flashbacks from an incident. Yeah. Like he's some sort of, like, war veteran. <laughs> what is it? It's the wasp. It could have killed a kitten. Bought some wallpaper. We got back and got on with it. The wall that we've papered before has got a big mirror under it. We papered on top of it again. I ended up reading my phrase book while Suzanne did the rest of the tidying up. Now, what's your phrase book? I don't... This is, this is just you trying to master English, is it? It's just a book that tells you little sayings and how they came about. 
an interesting phrase is pot luck. It came about when all people ate is stews. They used to chuck all sorts of stuff into the stew. You stuck your spoon in and sometimes you got something nice like beef or you could end up with a bit of frog. It's pot luck. <laughs> Good night, isn't it? That's what it said in the book, did it? <laughs> a bit of yeah. frog. Got up and checked the wallpaper out. There are loads of air bumps and it's buckled <laughs> on the joins. I wish we'd never done it. <laughs> Suzanne said the washer was broke and it's out of its warranty. She called up the people who made it and they said it will cost £150 to fix. I don't know how they know that when they haven't even seen it. I want to smash it to bits and see what they can do for <laughs> <other> specific goods. <laughs> so much anger. <laughs> I want to smash it to bits. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 150, you sure? Yeah, Come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like a cube that's been yeah. through one of those uh, car crushers. Yeah. 150 quid, there's 150 quid, fix it. Yeah. I watched the news and calmed down a bit because there was a story about some Siamese twins who are having an operation. They've got two heads, four arms, two legs, one liver. The doctor said they will have one leg each. I felt bad worrying about the washer when people have bigger problems like the Siamese twins. Ricky and Steve asked me to do a poem about one day a week, so I thought I'd w do one today. I can't obviously do it justice, so I should let the master read it. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just, just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions. Well, I, I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would, so if you can do that every week, that would be a joy well, you for can't, me. You can't force a poem, though. No, I so know. So a diary's easy to do, because you just write down yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. you, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems I had that day. Go on, then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <clears throat> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> I don't know what rhyming scheme that is again! <laughs> oh god! Oh <laughs> god! Oh! <laughs> oh! Fuck me! Well, there you go. That's the end of episode two of series three of the Ricky Gervais show. Um, more next week. More drivel, more diary. Another poem, I hope. Maybe. Um, just more news and stuff from me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Hi. Hello. Welcome to number three in the third series of The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Had a good week, Carl? Uh, all right. Just, just boring. It's a boring week. It was that, that sort of kidney operation I've had. Um, it's just affecting my life in a big way. How are you now, Carl? Are you feeling better? Uh, better, better than what I was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault, you know, you've got kidney stones, you don't drink enough water. Have yeah, you no, well, that's, that's what I've been doing this week, just drinking, that's, I mean, you, you said what, what sort of week have you had, what have you been up to, that's what I've done, I've drunk water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. <laughs> if there's a water shortage in London, <laughs> it's because of that. <laughs> Honestly, just that's what you have to do. You can't you sort of. It's just boring. Just like a a basking shark, just sort of <laughs> with its mouth open, just going through the water. Oh, Sick of it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton for uh, one have week. You, have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because you know your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And then you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr. Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have like a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where <laughs> I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but that, that thing goes... If you are, we're all screwed. That, you mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a second chance. Thing where, your life flashes before you, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get a... Uh, you suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? You, yeah, you sort of go, right, you know, that was a bit of a warning. 
be like good, Scrooge. good for people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? You're giving more generously to charity and the like? Uh, well, I haven't been out, oh, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. You yeah. go online. But sorry. maybe, uh, you know, once... Donate some money, all this cash you're in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But, um... No, it's changed. So he hasn't changed at all then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of... You can drown yourself uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, it's that balance, time. right, of uh, not uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be becoming like a, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp, and drowning yourself. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to do. I don't do. know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but... What I, I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with me. Uh, th whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> It's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. I only think of drinking when I'm eating. And I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if they have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week. Because when you, when you don't do much... It's just, you know, time doesn't whiz by. And normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with yeah. visits to the cobbler. And yeah. So. Well, it's just, like they say, isn't it? They say, uh... Following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You've only got a hectic schedule. I know, but, I don't know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because I was close to death and everything... <laughs> you weren't close to death! I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who have been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way... Do you know, like they say, before you die, things to do? Yeah. I've, I've never heard that sentence before. I don't know if they say. Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die. Swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah. But in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week. So if I was dying, don't go swim with dolphins because you'll love it and the time will whiz by and you go, oh, there's another day gone. Whereas I've been sat at home watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff. And it's just like, oh, it's only four o'clock. <laughs> oh, this is dragging. So if I was dying, I'd go... Yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah, what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> been a boring week. But what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, of watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, tell me something you watched on the internet then. Uh, the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle yep. and uh, chucked in 80 ants and the spider right, just went mental and uh, I don't know if the spiders eat ants I don't know, I don't know if they do uh, but uh, he wasn't happy with them that they were there and he was just whizzing around um, sort of biting them not eating them, just giving them a bite and the ants would sort of just lie there dead and uh, Spider had this system of sort of going, right, I'm going to put the dead ones over there. And he was biting them, dragging them across, putting them in a pile, killing another one, popping it in the pile. And by the end of it, he made like a little pile of dead ants. And he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that, that, that was amazing, because I'd never witnessed that before. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see that happening, do you, normally? So you think that... If people are unfortunately passing away, sort of visiting Disneyland or whatever, they should they should just learn stuff. Just sure, make get on the internet and watch spiders. This world is amazing. Attacking ants. Um, and just that thing of you know, you, last week you were saying how good ants were and how they're brainy and they work hard and everything. Yet none of them sort of they didn't know what they were doing. There's panic going on. <laughs> <laughs> You watch them again, they were running backwards and forwards, and I, I remember, like, seeing a programme about ants where um, they meant to sort of work together as a team, yeah. and if they climb up a person's leg, um, that person stood on their house, say, yeah. and they're all like, oh. There's um, a signal and they all bite at the same time. They all bite time. once. Now, yeah. if that had done that on that spider, yeah. they sort of all go on it, and when they're all in position, one of them sort of goes, no, and it bites... Yeah. And then it would it would do some damage, but there was none of that. Mm. And but you've seen things like the Towering Inferno, where even humans panic crazily and jump out of windows and things until Steve McQueen comes along and saves the day. So yeah, but you, 
at the end of the day, when you're in a tower in Inferno, you were there relaxing on holiday. So, of course you're going to be relaxed, and it's the shock of it's going to make you go, oh, I wasn't ready for that, I was sat in my trunks. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> sure. whereas that ant, ants should always be alert. Well, yeah. Any insect life should always be... Well, so for a human scooping up uh, 80 of them, putting them in a bottle with a giant spider. Yeah, but I'm just saying, that's what insects do. Um, their life, they never relax. That's what's weird with an insect. There's no f- downtime, is there? <laughs> it's you wake up, you go and get the food, you build your house. That's what you do, so you're always alert. They shouldn't be sort of running around going, oh, what do we do now? That should be, that should be in them. I they love that you're that. annoyed at these poor yeah. ants that were bitten to death. But also, they say they're clever. I was looking at it. If I was an ant, I would have just crawled under the pile of dead ones. <laughs> just sit under there, wait for the spider to go. None of them were doing that. They were all staying on one side and the dead ones on the other. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know you're always sticking up for insects, saying they know what they're doing. They don't. Uh, uh, what, 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 yeah. Where's this come from? When have I ever stuck up for insects? It's you that's follow them, saying t- saying they're brilliant and that, and ladybirds are right-handed and Christ knows what. No, but you know, so I'd learnt that. So anyway, as I say, my mother saves various clippings and things which may be of interest. This was recently in the uh, Daily Mail in one of those kind of uh, gossip columns. Uh, Ricky Gervais's cringeworthy dance routine as managerial buffoon David Bren was undoubtedly the highlight of BBC comedy The Office. Perhaps credit for the scene should not go to Gervais, however, but his lanky co-writer Stephen Merchant. <laughs> for I hear that six foot seven inch Merchant has been attracting a great deal of female attention at the so-and-so pub in North London uh, until he took to the dance floor with Brent-esque results. Says my mole, most of the feminine throng looked away in embarrassment. Putting it kindly, he was rather ungainly, like a giant albatross hopping on stilts. <laughs> right, now then. I'll take issue with this, because firstly... You wouldn't be attracting female attention in the first place. Rick, if I had been, I'd have phoned the male myself. <laughs> Point A, right, I seem to remember distinctly I was talking to one of my mates the whole night, and we were discussing about the fact we were too shy to talk to girls. <laughs> so wrong there. Yeah. Point two, as you well know... If I take to the dance floor, which on this occasion I didn't, I remember distinctly not because I love to dance, I would not have been described as a giant albatross hopping on stilts because Carl has seen me dance, you've seen me dance, you know I'm a good mover. Yeah. I, just in the same way that people can't quite understand how Peter Crouch, the same height as me, yeah. is able to be so brilliant on the football field. Yeah. The same people look at me when I'm dancing, they go, I don't know how that big guy is able to bust some of those kind of moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. won two dance contests in my life. Those, yeah. those facts, those stats speak for themselves, Rick. I know, I know. I mean, you've seen me dancing, how would you describe me? It, uh, I, I, I think that you look like a, isn't an albatross, isn't it? You look like, um, an upright lizard, right, give, having, being given electroshock treatment. And I think that's a lot fairer, isn't it, than the albatross nonsense? Well, I, mm, so I'm just trying to picture that, because again, I, I, was that a compliment? You were on my side, right? You were defending yeah, it, 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 a cross between a giant lizard and a, 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 a stick insect. Again, because they don't sound, in, 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 straight away they don't sound like compliments, but I'm assuming oh, you're on okay. my side here. Uh, stick insect with funny glasses? Is that? From what, again, I, yeah. I just, I thought, hmm, I was thinking you would perhaps be a bit touch more supportive, but these, you've not really, Carl, you've seen me dance, what, what, what are your views? Uh, it's just like a bit of weird art. <laughs> He's brilliant! That's so much better than Albatross! I wouldn't have said an Albatross. I was looking at one of them the other day. And I don't understand what they mean by that. Because they're dying out. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> they dive in the sea. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Something happened in the brain. It went from the point we were making, via an Albatross, then it just shot off. It just ping! Like a pinball. Well, let's hear because it, it's going to be another good point. No, it's just saying how, um, because I've, I've never seen one, and they were saying, how would you feel if, if you never saw one again? And I was like, you know, I've got by this long without it. It's not bothered me. <laughs> but, um, but it was, point. it was just sort of saying, uh, <laughs> what they do is they dive in the sea, sort of put their head under the water, see if there's any fish knocking about, grab one, get out again, right? Yeah. Go to land. I don't know if they're designed to do that. Well, obviously they are. No, because seagulls are, because you see them floating about. Now, what's happening is, they're doing that, but getting caught in nets. Well, that's it. The nets shouldn't be there. That's the point. They're totally adapted to their environment, but we came along millions and millions of years afterwards and stitched them up. It's not like people are going, well, the nets are always there. How did they evolve without getting caught in the net? We invented the net. 
We've only been knocking around for a few hundred thousand yeah. years. But what I'm saying is, it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that how does that get to peeling potatoes? But all, because in your head they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is, I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare. I that love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What were you? What point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find. If you're hungry, you find food or you change your diet. If you don't <laughs> eat something else, you die out. Simple. Said before. <laughs> if you want a pie, but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet. Mm. And an albatross. Drastically. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's radical. radical. <laughs> yeah, you said. Completely change of a diet. No more pies. <laughs> what are you eating? Pasty. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to eat quiche anymore. I'm going to have a tartlet. But you, you're getting more and more sort of single-minded in your... No, single-celled. Yeah. It's not, though. In, in your belief that everything you say has got some kind of profound implication and that, and that no one else is listening, that we're all ignorant, all right. we're all not it's, listening to what you're saying. Here's another one. Go here's on. something else that Oh, come on. This would be good. In series one. This would be as good as E equals MC squared. The, uh, the people aging backwards idea. Well, it's not an idea. They've done something on it, saying how... No, they haven't. A baby has been messing about with emails. <laughs> right? right? Oh, yeah, God! A 65-year-old doesn't know how to use email. So, again, my system works. Uh, so, say if you're an old person, you're, you're not using the internet, but you shouldn't be anyway, because you should be sort of just getting used to life as an old person. When you're a baby and you're about to die, they're using the internet. I don't know what you mean, when you're a baby and you're about to die. This is if, this it, is if this was your world, idea, if it yeah. was your world. Well, let me just ask a couple Sorry, of questions. Sorry, that makes no sense at all. What you just uh, it makes no I'm sense at all. I'm just saying that my theory... You may as well have hit a walk. What to saying. express that point, because they're... Yeah. I, the pong, yeah. that would have made more sense. <laughs> See, this is why, more profound. This is why, more resonant. This is why Wendy's having a go, though. Because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who, who'd have thought the frisbee would have caught on? <laughs> I don't think that can count as an invention, though. Of course it is. People are paying for it. Someone said, I'm going to invent something But you can people chuck are paying out. for carrots. But they're not an invention. Because you pay for something, it doesn't mean it's an invention. No, but a man-made thing. A frisbee, is, it didn't grow off a tree, did it? It's, someone's made that and gone, I can sell this. And people are buying it. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is, things, things change, don't they? You know, the albatross is dying out. The way, uh like when I walked into the flat, right, we've had hot weather, haven't we? We've had a lot of flies knocking about. Now, when I was younger, I never saw flies sort of hanging about in, in gangs. <laughs> Whereas... <laughs> I don't know what world this is! Would they have little motorbikes? No, you know, just, uh, you'd sort of see one, one would get in the house, you know, my dad would kill it or whatever, but you'd never see three. You wouldn't be going, oh, which one am I going to get first and everything. They'd, they'd come in, they'd exit out of a window or whatever. Whereas I walked in on, on a bit of activity. <laughs> There's home. nothing to eat here. Right? <laughs> Three flies in the flat, right? All sort of whizzing around. Right. All together, right? So I just sort of think, oh, you know, let them be. Uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, you know, they, they're playing around with each other, right? Sat down, reading the paper, look up, right? It was like there was, one was trying to, like, have it away with, with one of the flies, and the other one was was having a go as well. It, it turned out it was a little fly that didn't want any of the action, but two were attacking it. How could you possibly gauge that? <laughs> Just by watching. That's how you learn, isn't it? You watch, you, you watch. But no, this is conjecture again. You had no idea what was going on there. 
No, I did. It, it's, it's, it's the way they were sort of jumping on it and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this going on, and, you know, under my roof sort of thing. <laughs> My um, house, my rules. But it's, but it's a nightmare because it's small, you can't control it, you don't know which one's which. You might end up sort of pushing out one, that's the bad What are you and you're talking pushing out... about? I'm just saying Why no. are you getting involved? Just because creatures are changing all the time. What are you talking about? What point are you making? I'm just saying, the way that flies used to be happy-go-lucky, <laughs> on their own, the sun's out, have a fly about. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> nowadays, oh, now, there was like little attacks going on. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! I'm but how could you tell which were the two aggressors and which was the victim? How well, could this, you distinguish? This, this was this was the problem. I mean, all I was looking at was which one they kept attacking, and I was thinking if I can get that one in the bedroom and then get the other Sorry? two out the window. What are you? Just breaking it up? Because <laughs> uh, what sort of a person would it be to let that go on? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. He has no feelings for anything. He doesn't care if whole species die out. That's, Why are you getting involved? Wrong. That's where you're wrong. Because I think I think more than most people. I think there's a lot of people who just go through the motions. Yeah. They do it's the same thing every day. They can do a job, but that's all they stick to. They don't think about what them flies do. Carl, What's that I've known doing? you for I don't know four years. And all you ever say is things like, why do we have jellyfish? No, I haven't mentioned the jellyfish today. But it's the same old shit. You look at someone, you make up your own story, and then your conclusion annoys you, even though it's totally fatuous. Like I say, the man with the frisbee, what happens if, if he had a mate who said, rubbish that, he wouldn't have done it? I love the fact that you think the frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where you, you know, you said, I've invented this, did go get out, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about, what, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? No, I don't like it. How okay, and that was an argument with himself. <laughs> No, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the frisbee, and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a does clippable that Clippable mat that like you stick on a cup, so you you can put your cup down on a table, without having to go. Oh, where's that mat? It's it's clipped to the cup all the time, and you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have to be clipped? No, why can't have. it just be built into the cup? Because, uh So it clips onto, you've got our special cups, it doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce, it doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that cup. I mean, I don't use sauces. <laughs> just don't buy that sort of But isn't a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. But why is the clip of, why is the clippability so important to you? So you don't have to keep finding the, the, the mat when you put the cup down, it's constantly clipped to the to But the why cup. does it have to be clippable? Because that suggests it's removable. Why not just have something where it's constantly attached? What's to stop you from losing that in much the same way as you lose the coasters? Do we need this, this? Do we need a well, clippable coaster? Let's just, let's ask him like it's the Dragon's Den. Let's okay, ask him yeah. now. What? We've got money to invest yeah. on your clippable right. cup. What's now pitch problem? this idea to us. Tell How would you sell this well, idea you, to you us? You just said, uh, what was your p question then? Brilliant. So you're not listening. Let's start no, again. I am. Okay. I, I no, just... imagine you walked in. You what just is it for? In. What is it for? Is it is it is it a coaster to stop uh, the heat from the cup burning the varnish? Rick, let him explain. Or let's... is it a saucer to stop um, well, look spills? Let's let's, let's let's have you pitch this idea to us. Just you've you've never met us before. You were investors. Tell us. Explain this to us. Sell it to us. Right. Um, we're living in a world uh, where furniture is important to people. They spend a lot of money on it, don't they, furniture? Yeah, There's absolutely. so many furniture shops out there. Yeah. All different types of wood from all over the world. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Good if something's point. come from the Amazon, mm. you don't want a coffee stain on it. No, you don't, know. Right. But we're living in a world as well mm. where people don't use saucers. What when, do you mean when they do When you go out and buy, because people... What don't... do you mean we're living in a world where they don't use saucers? Yeah, there's loads of saucers, yeah. Because I know people who buy cups singly. Right. Because there's only two people living in the flat, so you don't buy a big box. Because in a big box of, of like plates and that, you get things like, uh, you know, s uh, what's what's the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate? 
<laughs> the plate that's above a saucer, but below a plate. So it's a plate, but it's below a plate. But it's a size that you sort of go, what am I doing with this? <laughs> so, uh, what would it be? A, a side plate? Uh, maybe. But a plate that you'd have alongside your regular dinner plate, right? Maybe. But a bread roll on or something in a restaurant. Maybe. Yeah, okay. But, but you What's your point? What do you no, mean, let, a... I'm just, this is fascinating to me. Because this is his best attempt now okay. to try and attract investment. Do you know where the, your mats are at home? I've you... got mats, don't use them. Why not? Because uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I haven't got any highly polished um, uh, furniture from the Amazon. Right, Steve, have you got any sort of... I've got some coasters and I use the coasters. And do you know where they are when you need one? Well, yes, because they're always at the place where I would normally put down a mug of hot tea, i.e. Yeah. on a table or a coffee table. Right, now, do I you keep, find... If, if I had a, a highly polished table from the Amazon, I'd keep my coasters on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying now is, what happens if you get up with your cup of tea, you're a busy man, right? This yeah. is what I'm saying, we're living in a world where people are busier than Yeah, ever. go on, go on. Not everybody can sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sat in the same place. Right. You get up and you might move into another room. Um, we haven't got a, you haven't got a polished table in there from the Amazon Centre, No, but you might be working on another expensive table. Oh, fine, we'll have a coaster there, That has a they? computer on. My question is this. One, does it fit all mugs? Uh, or do I have to buy a special mug to have this special well, bit we of Well, we can work it whatever way you want. We can either look at the standard size mug and say, let's appeal to everyone, or we can get in, in touch with some mug company. How is it clipped? Just like little plastic clips that clip onto it. Yeah. And then you clip it off and you and you clean it. They're dishwasher proof, by the way. I, yeah, I, think I don't, I, no, but, they don't need that but at But why, why can't you just make a mug that has something mm, built, built in, in the base of the mug to prevent it from making the mark? No, I don't It's need only that. the heat that makes the mark, isn't it, really? I, I, I just want to say now, it's a pointless idea, um, and I'm out. Right, but... What about the idea that you've just suggested then, with the mug, with the saucer built in? Yeah. What about, will we, will we do that together? But that's not, that's not your idea, that's my idea. Yeah, but without my idea, you wouldn't have had that. Well, but that's absurd, we're having a conversation, I've come up with an idea, now I've got the money, you, I've want, got the money, and paint? I'm gonna go off with that idea. Yeah, you haven't painted it anyway, and it's a rubbish idea, and you could It's not paint. rubbish, because I've just thought as well, that'll be good for putting biscuits on the side as well. <laughs> Okay, no, and that spot. means we can get rid of that plate that R I don't know By the it way, is. now this is broadcast, you can never paint this idea because it's out in public domain. Rick, 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 why don't we see if there's anyone out there who's willing to invest in this idea? Are you a mug manufacturer? Are you a mug designer? Are you someone who's got any interest whatsoever in this idea? Do you think it's a saleable idea? And, more importantly, would it be not great to have a picture of Carl's face on the map? Because it's perfectly round. Perfectly round. As well, and it, you'd scold him every time yeah. you, uh, yeah. So there'd be a certain satisfaction in that. Yeah, well if Peter Jones is listening, or that Ballantine fella, or, uh, what's his name? Any uh, of the, uh, big uh, investors on that show, or indeed yeah. any investors anywhere, podcast at rickygervais.com. Get in touch, tell us how, how we can move forward with this brilliant new idea. Hmm? Pathetic. Oh, Chip after that, he's gonna bring it down the little- the jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he, when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old, because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. That's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel, pointless, it's just... A pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not, because that could be a, a, a like, an important bit in, like, world history. What? The fact that, that people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person... But this thing going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about, if you're 90, he wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But you know, it's, when people, again, it's not a revelation. If I, if, if I like chatting to old people because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about... They get up and move after about 10 minutes. Well, no, you know, the fact that many of them are infirm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. 
Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. And she's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had on your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life, and things are changing. Oh, keep saying that. No, but the, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that, <laughs> from 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 that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them, to it's just it's it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on. And all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go, right, they might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with, why you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you if say you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. You did that whole thing and you bollocks it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Right. So you say, even if, so you're saying it'd be all right to make 78 year olds look 32 as long as there were some 32 year olds that look 78, as long as you've got old looking people. No, but say Can like- Can I tear this page out? <laughs> what? Because it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was, I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? Couple all the rest of days. Of it, right? Now, he As it turned out, it is life threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now he was quite old. He looked about <sighs> fifty-five, and that reassured me in a way. In a way, it didn't because he's, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you. I open don't know what you're wider. talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked that he's, he, he does that, you know, and he's like he's tired, so he's going right. What we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut. He's well, this is like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. But people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut, well, tell them you got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh, had he been reading this? <laughs> no. Bored, stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a. Well, oh. do, do you know what I mean? I, or I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Intelligent people. Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it. You see <laughs> like... <laughs> what is that? Is, uh, who's that bloke up there? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> He doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no, he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you, and they're really posh and they talk, and whenever they talk, their eyes are shut. And they I open don't it. know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old, educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother opening his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you? know what you're talking about. Well, Steve, have you seen? Do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're talking to you? And it can be quite annoying because it's like they're saying, "I'm not interested about you sat there. I'm not bothered if you're listening. Or not. I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say." And but it can be quite if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose I'm not, you. I'm not having a go at him. I'm like just saying he was fifty odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. Well, that's the end of uh, show number four in this third series of the Ricky Gervais show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And of course, Carl Pilkington. Bye. Well, here we are, number five in a series of six of the Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, Carl, you are officially a published author. Your book came out, The World of Carl Pilkington, and and a copy will go in the British Library. Will it? Well, yeah. they have to take every rubbish. I think it will go in the British Library lavatory. 
<laughs> yeah, from what I understand, yeah. it'll be in there yeah. uh, with like a collection of like novelty postcards and yeah, maybe exactly. a Viz compendium. But, you know. Yeah, so they have to. They take everything. Just think of that. But yeah. is that a rule they set up when when books were more important to people? And now it's kind of like, oh, I wish we never said we'd do that. Well, they have to add two miles of shelves every year, apparently. That's what I mean. Now, surely, you know, they change a lot of other rules, don't they? They used to allow people having their head cut off, and now they've gone, we shouldn't do that anymore, so we'll sort that. Why don't they just say, only so many books a year make it in there, ones that are important to the future? But who knows what's important to the future? Well, you know, normally, when I say something that I think's a good point... Uh, yeah, but I, you're always wrong. No, 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 but what I mean is when I say something that I think I have got a point there... Yeah, but you're always wrong. But why do they do this? Why do they think they've got to keep everything? Because it's... We're living in a world now where everything is sort of binnable, and, you know, we, we use stuff... Uh, for, binnable. ...for what it is. Well, that, that, I no, think I think you could say that. Oh, that's binnable, fine, yeah. that's fine. Um... There was a sort of poetry to it, but I think he stumbled across that. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, I'm st I still haven't got over last week him saying foodage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? That the, the world's changed, so why is that rule still hanging around when... Well, it's not a rule... I mean, it's not a rule that, you know, the, the country's gonna, you know, live and die by. It's just that it is seen as a... a, a a repository for knowledge, for information, and I don't believe any old joke can wander in there and get one of these books. I think you have to either be a scholar, I think yeah. maybe it's open for a brief window for students, but you know, you can't, you can just wander in there and see your own book, Carl. You know, there are some books that uh, they have to turn the page for you in gloves so you're, the amino acids. I hate that. that. With yours, it won't matter. They just go, it's over there, or they throw it to you. No, it's just... Or they slide, they slide it along the floor. They say, oh, I, I can't give it to you, Carl, because it's propping up this desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kick it to you and say, put it in the bog when you're finished with <laughs> yeah. it. It's just that thing of being timed, though. I hate it when people go, oh, have you read this? And then yeah, I can't read it properly, because they're, they're thinking I'm taking ages here. Do you know what I mean? So I have to scan read it. And they go, oh, it's good, that. And they go, what do you think? And I go, oh, about what? <laughs> So I hate the fact that someone stood there with gloves on, because that isn't normal, relaxing sort of reading, is it? <laughs> but it's not, it's not, you don't go in to read the Doomsday book, let's say, in order to just have a relaxing read. You're going in there to study there it, you know, to say they're professors and scholars and scientists and historians. They don't wander in because it's raining and they go, what's a good read? There's not a man wearing white gloves turning the pages of the latest Jackie Collins. <laughs> Do you have heat? What, watching I... your lips move as you read to see if you can turn the next page. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really feel guilty, because at the end of the day, right, I mean, people always rave about Shakespeare saying, oh, you know, mm. his work was good. Mm. But Brilliant. But at the same time... He'll probably put that on the book when he brings another one out. He'll put your review on it. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Carl Pilkington. But... At the same time, you know, like, some people will have a go. I'm ready for, for people having a go. Like that Wendy did about me little films are made. There's always people... Wendy knowing. Robinson? Yeah, you know... It's her opinion. For those yeah, of you who didn't hear last week, she slammed Carl. No, well, you know, each to their own and that. And, uh, you know, if everyone liked the same thing, I don't know what we'd do, right? Sure. Um, you don't know anything. So, so, all I'm saying is, everybody raves about Shakespeare. Mm. When, if you properly looked at what he did, he, he invented a lot of swearing words. Right? Effing and Jeffing and that. Now, if- That if, was one of his. Well, it's Effing and Jeffing and Effing and Jeffing part two. <laughs> did um, he make up a great deal of swear words? I don't know that I'm aware yeah, of this. A lot of them are Shakespeare invented. But all I'm saying is, for some reason, when things are, are brought out years ago, um, people say they're good even though they're not, is what I mean. But let's, let's not mistake the fact that Shakespeare is not, he's not, uh, people seem to confuse him as though they think he's, he wrote these things in order to be read. He wrote them to be performed, they're plays. They're not books in the traditional sense, he didn't bring out the latest book. No, but just, just when something's old it gets a bit more respect, is what I mean. When I was watching that documentary about the, the real Indiana Jones, um, Brilliant. they dug out um, some rocks with drawings on, and they were like, oh, don't damage them, don't, don't mark the paint, and, and it's like, it's rubbish. It was like a stick fella with a yak. <laughs> and now, if that was found now, or if a kid brought, showed me that, I'd go, hey, it's not that good. So what I mean is, because stuff's old, old stuff gets respect. But you're not judging it on its aesthetic merits, you're judging it on its historical importance. I don't because... think that's fair, though, because when that, when that fella drew that, it wasn't old. He did it when he was knocking about. No, yes, but, but, you, but you, you must see the difference between you doing a, a stick man on a wall with a bit of chalk near your local, and 
a, a cave painting that, 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 that they date to 10,000 years ago. Yeah, so in 10,000 years' time, when they find my story about the monkey fireman, will it gain more respect then than it is now? No, less. But why is it? Cause I, I, because people will more and more realise what a buffoon you are. The more research we do, the more these podcasts we do, no. the more you expose yourself as an empty, egg-headed uh, moron. That's a friend speaking right there, Richard Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves I, you like a brother. <laughs> I'm just, I just think, you've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now, now I've done a book and a diary... That means you're better than Peeps, well, is I'm what just, you're thinking, Well, I'm not going to say that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer no. predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? What did he say in it? Well, it's again more because it's both it well written and it's also an amazing insight into... A social into document a social as well. Document, yeah. yeah. It's a social document I of mean, that yours period. is a social document, but it, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips and a calf and seeing a ladybird. Which, you know... But that's, that's today's living. That's well, his, dis yes, but his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most... Yeah, it's but best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. The ladybird <laughs> happened, right? I wrote it down. He, he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. So you're a little angered that you've not witnessed one of the great disasters? Um, because the thing is, if they read your diary, they think, well, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention, I mean, okay, yes, it, does, it fails to mention any disasters in London because we haven't had any, but it doesn't mention any, it doesn't man mention any world events, it doesn't men mention wars in Iraq, it, terrorism, it doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books for that. Who's looking at the fellow whose skulls fell off? What? We see. It's interesting, isn't it? What do you mean the fellow whose skulls fell off? Well, that's what happened the other week, so I wrote about what? it. What? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? It's something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? it's in the diary. We but how can a skull fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull, how can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding no, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is, that's, <sighs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Good point, Steve. I don't All right. Well, let me just. I'll just. Off. I'll just consult the diary quickly and find the uh, the moment with the man whose skull fell off. Oh, here we are. Yeah, looks like the world's fattest man is having an operation to get rid of some of the fat. Yeah. He has to have an iron bed because that's the only thing that can hold his weight. Yeah. There's also a man whose skull has fell out. He's in hospital somewhere. I hate that. It would make me panic. The hospital is busy with people coming in to look at their head. What are you talking about there? That tells us nothing. Right, it's impossible for a skull to fall out. It How are scholars in 10,000 years going to be... What are they going to decipher from that? They can sort of... There's not up. enough incident but, 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 detail. But, but, but how did his skull fall out? Circulation problems. But they, answer the question. How did his skull fall out? Fall out of what? He was at home, um, and I don't know if he was combing his hair or something, but it, it come off. What <laughs> did? His skull. What do you mean, his skull? Do you know what the skull is? It's a part of the head. Well, no, it's the it's the structure of the head. It's the bone. Do you mean the top of the skull? This is only useful if you have all the salient facts. Then it would be of interest to us. We could we could. Well, that I, that I couldn't take that on. I'm busy. I'm not going to start looking into stuff in depth. Just get the details. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> You're such an idiot. You are the best. Oh, idiot in the world! Well, I don't want to be premature, but that entry is followed by I injured my toe the other day by dropping the toaster. Instead of letting it hit the floor, I tried to catch it with my foot. <laughs> I didn't think I'd done any harm, but my nail looks like it could fall off. I might show it to the doctor when I get my kidney stones out. We could easily get by without nails on the feet. They are more trouble than they're worth. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. I think on the days when cavemen without shoes and animals need nails, I don't think we need them now. I honestly, because you hear about uh, ingrowing toenails, right, so that's a problem. Um, you've got to cut them. Um, stuff gets under there and gets infected. Get rid of them, you won't have any of that. 
As long as you wear shoes. No, you'd have unprotected toes and fingers, wouldn't you? I didn't say on the on the fingers, just on the toes. So why why do you need them on the fingers and not the toes? Because you still you use your you use your hands to do stuff. I've said about toenail out. It'd be good to have it growing on the head. What? Just having like a sheet of it, just just like <laughs> a, a nail on the forehead. <laughs> you wouldn't look weird because we'd all have it. I'm not saying. What are you talking about now? I'm just saying we've. I, I don't want to go on about evolution and stuff because we've done it all. What but, do you think the skull is for? No, but I mean on the outside, so that when you bang your head, it's a little bit more protection. Like, like people, I mean, you're looking at me like that, why do you wear a helmet on a bike then? <laughs> because, <laughs> because the bike wasn't meant to be invented. We weren't meant to whiz along at 70 miles an hour with evolution. I know, but, you, but because life's changing, like you've said, let's But you can't, the... you can't go, let's evolve, let's re-evolve. Okay, let's assume we've got this nail on our head uh, that's growing out of our forehead. So we look like one big thumb. Yeah. Uh... Which weirdly, Carl, kind of, I mean, you can almost imagine it looking at Carl now. You can imagine a big nail there. Does the nail great. continue to grow? Do we have to trim the head nail? Uh, yeah, in the same way you get a haircut. Why is that preferable in your mind to just wearing a crash helmet in instances where you might have something hit your head? Just because, um, for a start, helmets, you have to carry them around with you. That's one thing that's put me off having a motorbike. Whenever you see someone on a motorbike, mm -hmm. it's all like the clothes you've got to wear. And it's like a big upheaval, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, if you have a car, you can get in with your shorts on, your flip-flops on. A motorbike, it's like, it's yeah. like you're an astronaut or something, you're only nipping down the road for some milk. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> get rid, what I'm saying is get but rid But does it annoy you having to put shoes on every day and underpants and a, a vest and a, I don't know, No, but once they're jacket. on, I'm not carrying them. They're on me. If I had to then take the shorts off for whatever reason and walk around holding them, I'd go, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't like holding a bag. I don't mm. like bags. We carry too much around with us now. I don't like carrying stuff. It's just a, a hassle, isn't it? <laughs> it's just endless <laughs> things he doesn't want to do, doesn't like doing, isn't like carrying bags. I mean, Who the hell has a gripe about carrying bags? Why just, is that a concern? Because it's it's stuff that's on, on I you. I love the way that he wouldn't mind having a nail going out of his <laughs> fucking head, but he doesn't want to carry a bag. What's good with it is, everybody's got one of these. And but it's, it's not going to happen, Carl. And the most important thing in your body, apart from the heart, is your brain. So protect that, not the toes. The toes <laughs> we can get back Please, without the people. toes. But your head's important, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in your head. Um, and I know all this, just after seeing the, the body works thing. I went to see the uh, it's a show on where there's a load of like, dead bodies and that. And uh, you can see how much stuff's in the body. And it's, there's loads of stuff. There's nothing in there that you don't need. It's all doing stuff. Everything in your well, body. We've been but telling you, you that for years. It. But you reckon you don't need the toenails? Yeah, that's on the outside. I'm saying everything that's on the inside of your body, right? You don't need the appendix. No, but it, that, doesn't that depend on what, what lifestyle you have? Well, it's a, it's a hangover of when we uh, probably ate a lot more cellulose and it's... it's. Yeah, well, it's, they might come back. Things are always coming back, aren't they? So if people start eating them again... What about male nipples? Uh. Sort of looks all right though, doesn't it? Because the chest is quite plain, so with, with nothing on it, you'd go, oh, "What's this?" <laughs> it just balances it out. I think it looks all right. I think it works. So <laughs> leave it. Um, but what were we talking about? But w wouldn't you rather have um, maybe a little, uh, like a rib cage around the testicles? Because you get a whack in them, and it oh. Um. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it's not an invention, Carl. It's not an invention, and we can't do it, but. But will you be able to sit down still? Because that's the good thing with them at the moment, is movement. <laughs> so it sort of works. But don't they say, um, they said something about testicles, like the body works thing. Well, they're on the outside. <laughs> Put yours away, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> You're not one of the exhibits. <laughs> uh, they're on the outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature for the, I think, the Satoli cells to... to so to that's, that's an odd design. That they had to go there because it is a daft. It's a bit of an odd place to have them. Where would you suggest? Probably, Dangling from the throat. Um, sort of. I want to redesign you, right? You, 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 you can possibly do this now. This is something you can actually do. Probably, you could probably have your testicles anywhere. So where would you want them? You've got a giant forehead nail. Yeah, you could have that. It probably wouldn't grow, but we could certainly have that. Like I, I just mean like, because uh, if if all it's about is temperature, you don't yeah. want to get them too hot. Yeah. 
Well, they're getting hot down there because you're wearing pants, might have you? Mm. So have them nearer to the outside of the of the body. Well, they are near the outside of the body. No, but we wear pants over them. So you what? wear pants over them because their their testicles and polite society suggest that you don't show your. Yeah, but testicles. that's the odd thing, isn't it? That's what's happened somehow that we've that we've said testicles shouldn't be seen. Well, then just cut a hole, cut a hole in your trousers. If it's only about you know keeping them cool. And because they're too hot, why don't you just hang them out your shorts? Because there's too many sort of seats that are shared these days, isn't they? But what I'm saying is. But well, what are you saying? Where, where would, you, would you put them? Somewhere like, um. sort of under the ears. So it sort of just looks like lobes. So oh. you would redesign your body to have a pair of testicles For hanging lobes. from your ears. And when people are sometimes talking, they do sort of mess with their ears and they're always saying check for lumps. More handy. <laughs> Does the penis remain where it is at Leave the moment? Leave that where it is. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about you, Rick, but I would love to see, perhaps on the web, you know, it's very easy to put stuff on web pages now, some kind of illustration, it could be computer generated, could it be drawn by hand, yeah. of the new model Carl. Bear in mind, people, that he's got some testicles underneath his ears. And a th big thumbnail on his forehead. Big thumbnail on his forehead. I'm um, talking to Carl, I want to see Carl's head everywhere. It's the roundness that I like, okay? So, do a viral campaign. Anyone out there with a picture of Carl, just get it everywhere. Because I want, eventually, everyone to, as they walk past him in the street, to shout, you shaved monkey, or look at that bald head, or look at fucking coconut face coming this way. you got a head like a fucking orange. Went out the other night with the lads. Um, you know, there's a few of us, you know, young, free and single. You Must look like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty, it looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, NSYNC. And hit oh, the streets. Right, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. We'd all we'd dressed up, talked up, out for a few drinks. A friend of mine said, "Let's go to a club." Right, I haven't been to a nightclub for a long time. Actually, I haven't been. Is that because your glasses steam up when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely, it's not. It's very difficult to make a good impression <laughs> when you, as you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away, and you know you you got to take them off and clean them and stuff <laughs> and then you know you get a bit dirty. on your wife fronts you pull yeah. your wife fronts out yeah. through the jeans yeah. clean them on that or the back of a girl's dress <laughs> <laughs> but um we cruised down to the club it's one of those big sort of super clubs london super clubs never been in one of those the ministry or any of those things so it was all new and uh it's a bit of a queue i think it's a bit of a chore but we're queuing up, we're in good spirits, we're looking at it, it sounds pretty funky, we can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while, 20, 25 minutes. Forget it, 25 minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello lads. He said, yeah, we're coming please. He went, no you're not. I went, really? What? He said, we're not, you're not coming in. And he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed, we were, we were dumbfounded, we didn't know what to do, we, we, it was like, this, it, this couldn't be happening, it didn't make sense. We just que queued up what was going on. And so, um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over. I thought you wanted to do. You wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show a bouncer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You'll be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's what they appreciate. <laughs> they love her. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we went over and, uh... <laughs> they, they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so one of our mates goes over and he says, uh... Why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you don't have any girls with you. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you this, that's kicking you when you're down. Because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you haven't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So, um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. And it was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list, uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran and you've got your Golden Globe in your Emmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I always, uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of my cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so, and I felt a bit self-conscious about it. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's a bit uh, awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll say, I'll point him out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there, the, the office or whatever. Oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know, uh, we may as well try everything. So, um, so I stand there, 
if my friend goes over and he has a word, and he comes back and he says, uh, it's fine. She's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed, but what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue, right? And walk in front of the queue and explain. So I think, okay, fine. Oh, God. So oh, the guy, uh, God. the guy takes me and my mates, right, this girl, she takes us, she, we walk past everyone else, right, to the front of the queue, right? She goes up to the guy, she says, uh, this is Steam Merchant Office. The guy goes, I know he is, we're not letting him in. <laughs> Oh, God! By now, of course, some people have recognised me, so they're having, trying to have my photo taken. So there's people inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh, all right, this is Dido, they're having the photos taken, right, camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. <laughs> I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. I mean, it was <laughs> mental. So, um... That's unbelievable! I was furious, and then one guy, I remember he was, he was, and he, he goes, oh, yeah, brilliant, I love the podcast and all that stuff, I love, Car is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not here. And his girlfriend, who, his girlfriend was with me, she went, who's that? And he went, oh, he says, see, motion, he does the office, he does the sort of thing, and she went, who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you, but it's not my fault. <laughs> it's your boyfriend who brought it up. It was like I'd gone over to her and tried to show off, and she was annoyed. I was, so by now I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street, and there's a, a group of uh, um, builders, um, sitting down having a cup of tea. One of them goes, all right, Rick? I went, all right, mate. The other one went, not as fat as on telly. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't say, oh, God, you don't look fat at all, or, oh, you look, you, you, you look, you look big on telly, but you don't look fat. Just went with, not as fat as on telly. And but there's nothing I could say, but cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, because you, did you say that because you were, because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I'd be worried about like, like sarcasm, and you know, I laughed or I laughed or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you can get away with sarcasm I'm, with working class blokes. I'm I a little bit more secure with a working class man no, than you, aren't I? I'm terrified of them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident, sort of backing in a lorry driver. Terrified. All oh, right. Because okay. if I did, he'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, "Go and get your dad, mate." Yeah, not you. Fuck off. I'm not interested. Not you. Yeah. So, um, so the final stab is this guy says, uh, "There's a party I know of going on, right?" Oh, blinking So we go down to this party. Right, as we're getting there, as we're about to go in, he goes, now you know it's a singles party. I thought, oh, what? He says, you know it's a singles party. Oh, God. So I go in this party, it's right, it's all single people, right? Now, theoretically, that should be brilliant, right, if you're a singleton yourself. It's the worst kind of party to go to. Because when you normally go to a party, right, and you're chatting to a girl, and she says, um, oh, I've got to go and get a drink or whatever. You think, oh, she's probably got a boyfriend or whatever, or she, you know, she's with mates. That's fair enough. But when you're at a singles party <laughs> and a woman says, I'm just going to go and get a drink, and then you just see her leaving, <laughs> <laughs> you, you realise it's not because she's got a boyfriend or whatever, it's just because she doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> you and can't even kid yourself. You can't even pretend. Oh, and you, you suddenly sense everyone judging everyone else. So you see a girl and she'll, like, look at you, look at you up and down, and then, Ignore you and walk on. And it's just, it's like a massive slap in the face. It's like girls coming up to you and going, not interested. Just by being there, they don't have to say anything and they're rejecting you. And so, um, so trying to, anyway, my friend, one of my friends has been reading this book, The Game, right, by this guy called Neil Strauss, which is sweeping a certain part of the population because it is one of those books written on how to meet women and seduce women, right? And there's this guy called Neil Strauss who infiltrated a sort of secret organization in America of blokes who've got all these various seducing techniques, right? And one of the techniques which we've been discussing is something called negging, where if you see a very attractive woman, the theory is that she's getting asked out all the time by blokes, right? They're always coming up and saying, oh, you're really beautiful, can I buy you a drink? And that what you have to do to set yourself away from the pack is to sort of not be so obviously complimentary. So you come up and you almost sort of pay her a backhanded compliment, or you almost neg, as they say, say something slightly negative. So what you might say is you might go up to her and say, oh, I like your shoes. I've seen another girl wearing them in the club, right? And the theory is that she's sort of all and it, she's a bit taken aback she's a bit sort of thrown off and then of course you start complimenting her and you start building her back up again it's very elaborate mind games i'm not saying it's a good idea but we've been talking about the neg and i was chatting to a girl and i was a little bit drunk and i wasn't thinking it through and i thought about the neg because it wasn't going very well but but i don't think you should say to a girl 
I think your ears are a bit too big for your head. Because, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like you can't come back from that. And it's, there's nowhere else to go, because that really is just an insult. Oh. He's only gone and listened it down the little fucking car! That jingle, of course, signifying yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. As always, packed with rich insight into the man's mind. I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a program about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that's some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth. This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and, um, a lot of tourists go through the area no, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it. Oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give, yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts of learn stuff. that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park. The squirrels waiting at the gate. You, you have to give them a toll to go in. They don't. They're only going to give them nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. It is. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> Him talking about what is it like to be a slug? No, just because like the monkey, even though it's been quite aggressive, everyone was like, "Oh, give it some water." And it was it was well like kitted out. It had like you know chocolate bars, bottled water, some like you know fizzy stuff, and all that. An iPod. It was listening to monkey news. It could have had one if it wanted one. It was getting away with murder on that bridge, and that's just because it was furry. Yeah, if that was like a blob, like a slug, there's no way people would be that friendly towards it. And it just annoys me how you get this pecking order. For like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a mollusk that's like down on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife left it, the kids when it started hitting the ball. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... That's <laughs> real! People But it wouldn't don't prefer care. steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't a leaf. have... It must like a leaf or a, a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it's a leaf. not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's... It's in not boring area. stuff to them. They're not. I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. You know, like Sorry, that. you, you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop? He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, shop. can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. And when, he got to, when I got to about six, 
You, you serve me. What's wrong with that? Again, you are giving one yourself, of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. the it's about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. There was a human head attached to a seagull's body in a jar. Is that all it says? This is the sort of weird stuff that goes on behind surgery doors. I doubt it ever flew because the head would have been too heavy. Well, of course it wasn't, it didn't happen. It wasn't live. No, but they try this stuff, don't they? That's like that program I watched with a, a well, monkey. Well, who has ever tried to put a human head on a seagull's body? They've done loads of stuff like that. It's part of us moving on, isn't it? It's what are you talking about? I'm not going to get into arguing about well, science you're wrong. because it's all Don't behind talk closed shit. doors. How do you think we can change a, a a heart now from another body? You have to try things out. It's trial and error. All sorts of weird stuff goes on in hospitals, but we let it happen because it's to help us out in the long run, isn't it? But what what are they aiming towards when they're going to find out if you can put a head on a seagull's body? What is that? What 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 are they want to learn and what do they? How do they want to apply that knowledge? A new heart it is obviously for a reason. It saves a life. Yeah, what is this to, to save money on transport? Instead of getting a bus pass, you go. Can you can I put my head on a seagull's body? I go. Well, it won't work. We'll try it. <laughs> yeah, but it is, there is odd things like that, like, uh, I saw a fish the other day, right, right. and uh, honestly, it's the weirdest thing, it was just like a blob with a face. <laughs> now, I would never have said, yeah, let that swim about, I'd have killed it from day dot, I would have been <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> oh, God! Under what circumstances would you have killed that from day dot? Oh, I'm just saying, looking at it, I'd say, that does not work. And it looked sad, it looked like it didn't want to be out. Have you got her number? <laughs> Well, that's it for another week. Um, the end of uh, episode five. One more to go in this series of six with the Ricky Gervais show. Um, we'd love you to uh, buy Carl's book because uh, it is genuinely, it is genuinely interesting and funny as a, as a, you know, just as a social experiment to see that uh, you know it proved Carl's theory wrong that a monkey can write a book. Um, so uh, it's bye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And goodbye from the little shaven monkey that is Carl Pilkington. Hello and welcome to the last in this series of six of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, as you're aware, you've obviously got many celebrity fans. David Bowie is a fan, um, people involved with creating The Simpsons. And you've also got a new fan, Warwick Davis, who is the short actor that many people will see in films like uh, Return of the Jedi, he also is in Harry Potter, he's three foot six and Ricky and I worked with him recently on extras and uh, far from asking us about the uh, many celebrity names that we've worked with, the only person he was interested in talking about of course, Mr K Pilkington. He wanted to meet you Carl. Yeah. Well is he, is he alright to get on with? Was, why wouldn't he be? Um, just because sometimes when people aren't normal it's well, just, just Sorry? No, I just mean when, when someone, like, I've met a few little people in my time. The one that I, I, I met, I met a little fellow once and he was alright. He got drunk really quick. Uh, mm. but he was alright but it took me by surprise. Only because, like, like I've said about when I met Steve for the first time, it's only that same thing. And then if I lived with the little fellow, I'm sure we'd get on a storm. What do you mean when you met There's Steve? There's a TV show waiting to happen. <laughs> What do you mean when you met Steve for the first time? No, we've done it, you know, when he walked in, it just a bit of a, oh, he's different. But then, I, I see Steve every week, and, you know, the it same is. way I say I like watching Elephant Man, mm. from the first time I watched it, to the last, totally different. When he walks in the first time, it's like, oh god, look at that. It's a mess, isn't it? When I watch it again, it's kind of like, oh, here he is, here's John. So, it doesn't, it, it, things wear off, that's, that's like the world, isn't it? Things don't amaze you as much as you see things and you use things often. And it's the same with the little fella you're talking about. First time I see him, it, I'd, I'd be a little bit like, oh, what do you say? You know, what shouldn't I say? 
Whereas once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd, he'd be a lovely little fella. <laughs> I don't know where to start, Steve. Well, Warwick, I think, suspected as much. Um, he's offered you a, a, an interesting fact, actually. You're wearing headphones now. Apparently you wear those headphones for just one hour and it will multiply the amount of bacteria in your ear by over 700 times. But why is he worrying about that? <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not worrying about it. He thinks it's of interest to you it because you're it? wearing headphones. It's part of your profession. You wear headphones, yeah. But Warwick asks, really, um, what are your thoughts on short people, particularly in entertainment? Because, of course, they've, uh, throughout the ages, made an appearance, particularly in fiction. Tom Thumb, of course. Mm. Uh, the Oompa Loompas. What do I think of them? He's just wondering, you know, I suppose, what your take is. Um, they're all right. I mean, when I was on jury duty, when you, when you go in in the morning, you have to go into a big, um, sort of waiting room. And, uh, every day I'd sort of see one pop in, and he'd be sort of struggling getting on the chair. And it sort of, it was, it was kind of something to watch. It was different. <laughs> That's that's what's good with 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 things in life. If if you look at stuff and you go, oh, look at that, and seeing him struggle on the chair, he was happy. He wasn't he wasn't str you know he wasn't struggling in a way that he felt uncomfortable. He'd obviously climbed a lot of chairs in his time, and this was just another one. And I'd, what watching him, it just makes you makes you think. You go, you know, I should appreciate that I don't have that problem every time I have to sit down and what have you. But I don't I, you know I don't think it's that bad. If I had to pick being really tall. Or really small, I'd go for the really small one because, you know, it's it, the world's a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Do you know what I mean? We go to New York and go, wow, look at this, and they go and they go, oh dear. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Everything's a lot bigger. Everything's more amazing. Food portions. Everything's a bonus. So out of the two, I'd be small, and maybe that's what I chat to Warwick about for a bit, just to get to know, get to know him. Brilliant. It's a shame in a way that he's not been able to pop in. I'd like to hear that conversation. Um, you there's nothing to learn from there's that. There's nothing isn't? you learn from uh, that. Something about um, jellyfish uh, and uh, what else was there? There was this fella, there was a program on the telly about survival. Um, and a fella who uh, he, he looks after elephants and he's in this little hang glider looking for an elephant that he's looking after. He has to keep a track on where it's going and all that. And one day he's saying, oh, I haven't seen the elephant today. And the fellow's like, look, look for it tomorrow. He's like, no, it's best if I go and look for it now because it might go further away or something. He said, oh, I wish you'd leave it, you know, till tomorrow. So straight away you're going, oh, this is trouble. So he's going out in his glider sort of at night. Uh, he's looking I for doubt it's a glider. I well, like it's, a, it's a glider with an engine. It's one of a light more. aircraft then. Yeah. So he, he gets in that on his own. He's wandering about in the air, looking down. Um, like I say, it's loads of land. He's looking for one elephant. He's not having much luck. Anyway, I think he gets to a point when he goes, oh, I'm having no luck, I might as well go home. Goes to turn round. Something happens. The glider falls to the floor, crashes. Like, like aircraft. Like aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. That crashes. He gets out. He's broke his legs. Um, done his back in. Um, his hands. I mean, he's in a bad way, and uh, he looks at the plane, and that's uh, that's a wreck. Petrol's coming out of it. He's thinking that's not going to fly again, and uh, he has to lie there, doesn't he, for like 48 hours or something. And in that time, everything's being chucked at him. He has a, a lion wandering around him. A scorpion walked over his leg. <laughs> Some sort of dangerous snake went in his shoe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else is there out there? Some sort of bad ants. Um, just everything that's there that could cause a problem. Mm. He had it all in his life. I, 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 I haven't seen this, but I suspect there's a lot of conjecture. <laughs> yeah. And it's telling him <laughs> it's bad, bad ants. Bad ants. And... No, just anything that you could think of mm. that's out there to cause you a bit of a problem. Camels. He got hot. He got so hot his lips fell off. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you have to have a lot of juice to keep your lips sort of how they are. Right. Uh, so that's the sort of state he was in. Yeah. 48 hours. And yet he survived in the end. Someone came and found him. And, and you that, thought that you were bored in. doing nothing? Yeah, no, well, He didn't even have the internet. Yeah, but he had a lot of insects. What would you do then if you, land, if you landed, right? Supposing uh, we all land 
right? We're shipwrecked, okay? There's no food around. Um, but there's a chance we might be saved, like, in a few days. we just got to stay alive just for a few days, okay? Mm. Um, Steve offers up his penis. For what purpose? Well, it's, it's already, you've torn it in the car, in the, uh, plane crash anyway, so it's hanging off. You go, okay, listen, look, lads, let's eat this. Let's go, this will go three ways. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. Uh, I'll look for someone else. <laughs> Because we're surrounded by water. Why are we eating knob? There's loads of fish and everything. There's more fish in the sea than there is stuff on land. <gasps> that, that was something else that I've read about, about how there's more sea life happening. There's loads more. What do you mean? Than what? Um, than stuff happening on land. Well, yeah, it's a bigger place, isn't it? Yeah, and there's more... It's, they're all coming further in because it's getting so crowded. Everything's uh, being pushed outwards. So we, we're going to get to a point where people won't go walking in the sea because there'll be something deadly just floating about on the on near the shore. Again, that's no information at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's yet. no information in that statement at all. Yeah, I said I said how the sea is so overcrowded that everything's being pushed to the edge. It's not overcrowded. It is. What's been? You mean things that are in the sea are being pushed to the edge of the yeah, sea? Yeah, because there's new stuff happening all the time. There's new creatures being made, they're changing quickly. They were saying how, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, jellyfish didn't even have a have a sting. That's rubbish. Try 50 million and you'll get closer to the truth. But, but what I mean is, in terms of, like, land, we all look the same, don't we? We've had two legs and two arms for ages. Whereas in the sea, things are changing at a, a really fast rate. So, like, jellyfish we're knocking about. The sea is a much more stable environment than the land anyway. What are you on about? Well, I'd have thought... I wouldn't have thought evolution is any any faster in the sea than land. Yeah, it is. Well, no, what, what's, what's the evidence for this? The I'm internet. telling you now. I'm telling you how jellyfish have changed. And look at them. They and how have they, they changed then? So they didn't, 50 years ago they didn't have a sting. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Trilbys. They wore trilbys 50 years ago as <laughs> yeah. well. And they just spoke with a much more, you know, <laughs> refined <laughs> accent. Yeah. Just that, that is quite a lot though, isn't it? Because jellyfish are nothing. But like no, you've made that up. Plant. That's not a fact. There's, there, there's no facts come out of this. That's not, not, oh, that's interesting. That you haven't said anything. Jellyfish oh. are, haven't changed in 50 years. No, they have. They've changed a, a lot in terms of... Well, they haven't changed in like, hundreds of millions of years, so I don't know what the 60s had to do with anything. I don't. I, I just don't know what what influenced the Beatles and Mary Quant at, suddenly had on jellyfish when they because hadn't changed for hundreds of millions this, of years. With all this sort of loose free sex, you know, free love, <laughs> yeah. they were just going berserk. I know. Yeah, there were no inhibitions yeah. amongst the jellyfish anymore. Things are, are changing a lot. To think that jellyfish, when they were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. <laughs> so when they first came out, when they were first released, and, new and, by Rondell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. Which I is don't the know sea. what you're talking about. It's it, all guesswork uh, and conjecture. It's not guesswork. I've been it's all nonsense. All I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously. Learned enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. Oh, uh, to a nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas, and no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. <laughs> yeah, it certainly would. So. <laughs> That's great! That's really good! Because it's 
jelly. He's 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 done us this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. a really good poem. It would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. A little okay. half rhyme. Yeah. Um, do you want the one about my kidneys? Yeah. Uh, for God's sake, my belly ache. The doctor said it's my kidney. He said he's got a stick of tube up my knob. I said you got to be kidding me. <laughs> for God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> I'm sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great. Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it, is, it would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. I mean, I'm, I'm both impressed and fascinated and worried by Carl's new literary outlook. Yeah. You know, we, we've said to him, we've, we've tried to make him appreciate the arts and poetry and... And uh, you know, uh, you know, explaining like what metaphor does and and symbolism and all that. But I'm worried it will backfire because what if he becomes clever and erudite and then we lose our little endless well of stupidity? What mm. if we lose our little shaved monkey? I mean, these podcasts without you know, it's almost like you were evolving into a human. I mean, you've actually. You've authored the book. Well, I have to say, I mean, without, at the risk of sounding like we're shamelessly promoting it, I've only just looked at the book today, because that's the first time I've seen it, The World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, I was very impressed by how legitimate it feels. I mean, it does feel like an actual well, book. Well, he's put so much work into it. I mean, he... He's I done mean, drawings, he's done extra thoughts and ideas, and it's very odd to think that that has probably gone now into the British Library, which I think is obligated to take a copy of every book published. Incredible. I but, mean, let's be honest, it's not going to really... It's not going to be on anyone's bookshelf. It'll be on their lavatory cistern, possibly next to their bed. But nevertheless, you know, it's hardback and it's got pages. It's a real book. Yeah. Will you uh, now read some some great works? Will you read poetry at all? Or? Um, probably not. A bit, I don't like reading made-up stories because Fiction. life's life's interesting enough, isn't it? Right. If I'm going to read someone else's lies, I might as well make some of my own up and save me money, is what right. I mean. But you do read um, lies and made-up things, you just take them as the truth. Um, Most of the spurious facts and apocryphal tales and ridiculous stories that you read on the internet are, I mean, fiction. Yeah, but as long as it gets you thinking, then it really doesn't matter. Say, like, you know, I was telling you about the sea being full up, yeah. right? how there's too many fish in it and they're all being pushed out. Then, um, you know, it was saying about how the jellyfish is changing yeah. from a bit back just being a blob to now being a blob with stingy bits. You go, oh. And then... No, I don't. I think I wonder what he read. And I then, wonder what he was reading. Then I'll think of what other things are in the sea. How are they changing? And then that's when I might do a poem about an octopus with two heads. <laughs> Because it's, it's got me thinking. So no longer am I just reading someone else's story, spending a full week reading some other story. I've read a little paragraph, and that's got me thinking about it. It's inspired octopus you to make great art. With uh, an octopus with two heads. And you just think, yeah, that would work. You know, that's a good, good way for them to evolve. They've got all the arms. Give them two heads. <laughs> <laughs> They've got all the arms. And, you know... It would work, because like I've said to you before, it is one big head to make it two smaller heads. So it's just looking at science, looking at how things can move. It's on. not looking at but science. But it's not looking at science. You then speculating on an, on an octopus having two heads is of no value, is it, to anyone or anything? But there's people out there who are bringing out books who are writing stuff like that for sci-fi stuff. And I think, why am I reading but that's entertainment. Everyone knows it's not true. They're doing it to... But they do more than just say, "What would it? Wouldn't it be great if there was a, if there was an octopus with two heads?" They then paint a world in which this octopus exists I and presumably causes some kind of narrative interest. I can do that on my own, though. Without. So, know, what's the story of the octopus with two heads? It's happier in the end. Everyone likes happy ending. He's got company. But if that's not a story, Carl. What? What? <laughs> tell us the story. What you made up a story about an octopus with two heads? No, I'm just saying. I've I've pitched I've thought about how the sea's changing. Mm. Right, what else is in the sea? Octopus. Right. What's an octopus like? Well it's just a big head with a load of arms. Right. How would I change that? 
<laughs> I love this thought process. But it's not a story. This is not a story. It's not anything. It's just some thoughts you've had. It's not a your story. A story is there to make you think and, and have thoughts. But what is it that you thought? You've not. I don't see what what you've thought here. I've just thought. Yeah, that'd be all right. <laughs> I know, but well, like, like King Kong then. That's only someone who's gone, oh, monkeys are getting better at stuff. Yes, but it has a story, doesn't it? They go in search. No, it isn't. It isn't saying monkeys are getting better at stuff. <laughs> that's not what it's saying. There's lots of themes, but that's not one of them. Monkeys anyway. are getting better at stuff. <laughs> no, they're getting <laughs> yeah. better at stuff. The way they try to sort of, he tried to go out with a woman. That's them moving on, isn't it? It's the monkey going, do you know what? I quite fancy her. And you know from the beginning, I mean, that is a story that you go, well, that relationship ain't going to work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't. I, I mean, I've not gone out with women who have quite fancied, but then they smoke, and you go, oh, "That's enough to put me off." Yeah. So, when a monkey's that big, I wouldn't even the thought wouldn't even pass my mind <laughs> to go on a that date. we could this could work out. <laughs> Sometimes it's just you know relationships aren't made for each other. <laughs> now that for a story, you you, you wouldn't think it go past page one, <laughs> yet you're having a go at me because an octopus has got two heads. Which isn't that weird. When you look at them anyway, I mean, they must be the weirdest <laughs> thing knocking about on the planet. I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything so weird. And yet... <laughs> he's angry, because he's not seen anything so weird as not to so happy. But it's not yet a story. What's weird about it? What's strange about an octopus with all the things that could... Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes <laughs> <laughs> if, if a jelly honestly if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours I probably wouldn't worry about him that much mm. but like I said to you it's that way that they haven't got eyes they're floating about I can handle some fish they look they look like because they've got eyes you can make eye to eye contact with them <laughs> what do you a jellyfish like in... what are you looking at it's a snidey thing like I've said to you <laughs> You can see see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? You say, I don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. <laughs> Whereas if it had them, maybe they'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. OK, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you'd change it. OK? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. But they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. But, so why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. And so they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man. Here's woman. Here's a dog. Here's a cat. Here's an octopus. Here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's only got a really dog! That jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. Jesus it's called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually, and then if we try to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? If something's living somewhere... But he's not going to send them back to the back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy... There's hardly any room, and we go, right, what can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? Well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes. Bung them back. All right, then, let's put them back. 
And they go, oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving. They're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Oh, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the... Sorry, this is not this is yourself. Not also, no, this, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened and you're sick of it. None of this has happened no, yet. No, I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. <laughs> but you're, like, you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have I read here about your anger about, about terrorism or international, you know, political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me, that's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country. And yet, it's like, well, they were, they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it, and I think, where's that come from? What bag are you opening with bat flies? Uh, what bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in, a fly flew out of it, and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. And that's the same with this Polacco, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Great news. Get $25 cash back on the purchase oh, you just God. made. Sign up it's now. It's amazing. Wow. It really is. The ramblings are a mad man, isn't it? Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> That's the headlines on the news. It wasn't found by sea experts. It was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I, mean? What do you mean? It was... It was Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's 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 the story. It's just Great weird how now you can stuff's get up to $25 found on eBay. Cash no, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Purchase. Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that... I mean, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten, you go stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell, and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, and it? it's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh, with you. <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Well, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour of drivel. I mean... Some of the most stupid things ever said. I mean, it's like he's got a contempt now for the world. Like yeah. He doesn't care what comes out of his head. Learn can be frustrating, <laughs> can't it? You know, you, you, maybe I'm getting you thinking, maybe on your way home today you'll be going, yeah, octopus with two heads. And, and if you do that for five seconds, I've done my job. Good to have a job, innit? So, uh, from me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. All right. Hello, and welcome to, uh, number four in the series of six, season three of The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm sorry to do this, but me and Steve have got to bring something up that's been bugging us for a couple of weeks now, but it's, it's reached... Uh, you are so... Fucking lazy, Carl, at the moment. You have time off, right? You go away every weekend, so me and Steve are so precious at the with the, you know, so many things to do, with extras and books coming out and stuff. You, we, I, I've never seen anyone whinge about going in with kidney stones. Don't I know whinge. loads of people that have kidney stones. Not like They've mine. had the, yeah, yeah, no, no, you say not like that because uh, they have. They've had the operation. I know people that had their appendix out, right? An actual under the knife operation. Yeah. And he was back at work the next day and he had a bit of a, a sore side. But you have whinged now for weeks and weeks. Everything you say, oh, I've had this, uh, oh, I've got to go in again. But you're still well enough to go away every weekend to see your folks or your in-laws yeah, well, or, this or is holiday. The and, 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 and it's just like, we are so... You know, you know, sometimes you've got to pull together, mate. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you say keep a diary, mm. and you said make sure you do a diary for a year. Yeah. If I didn't go and visit people and travel the world... 
What would I do in it? Carl, I read your diary every week. All you seem to do is spend time in a cafe, having a cup of tea and a bit of breakfast. This That's the who weekend. Are you, who are you constantly visiting? Anyway, let's not argue. You don't even People like your family, I thought. It's not my family, is it? Well, you don't, family. you don't but like anyone. Why are you visiting? But you say I'm working that weekend. I'm working that weekend. We have to put. Say, I work. Let's put this in first. No, you know, no, it's no. a busy Fam time. Family's important, isn't it? Yeah. You can't keep messing people. But this around. is all you have to do. No, what no, else are you doing? doing? What is other it, job have you got? Loads of you know, stuff. I don't want to go into what I'm doing, but I've got loads. But all of stuff. I hear is you're well, always having meetings. I know. You're always yeah. Going from meetings. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 I don't know what that means. Meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, seriously though. So you've been on your travels. You've got. You know, you've got lots to talk about, so... Yeah, I've got to go in hospital again as well, haven't I, so... What's your current state with your old... Oh, you I know. don't want to go on about it. Well, no, I mean, you you know, you brought it up. It's... You're fine, you won't have to go away, you won't have to go on holiday, you won't have to visit people, you went on a train, you went to Manchester, you must be well enough, so you won't have to do this. I went back to, uh, Bristol at the weekend, I had a bit of time off, as you oh. know, because Carl can do the work. So I know. That's, that's what, what I mean, yeah. so we all had a nice No, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I went to Bristol when I was working. Oh, that's all right. But well, exactly. he's still visiting a place, is what I'm saying. Well, well, that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying a pilot doesn't work, because he's visiting a place. No, because he doesn't visit it. No, you sit down plane. on your ass. Sometimes you hire a car, so you can't be reading or, or studying. You're driving for six hours. Uh -huh. I, I went there working. We went to America, we were working. I went to Bristol, I was working. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit uppity. The truth hurts, Stephen. <laughs> the truth does hurt, and it's interesting yeah. that he suddenly snapped at you there. I know. Because I wondered to myself, if it weren't for you, Mr Ricky Gervais, what would this man, this little round-headed man, be doing right now? Fuck all, Stephen. Fuck all. Yeah, I went back to Bristol at the weekend, and I'd, as we know, we all had a bit of time off. And, um, uh, actually I was quite annoyed because I, uh, I passed the pub near where my parents live, and they had a band on. You know, pubs sometimes have a band on. And the name of the band, I'm disappointed that I missed them. The name of the band, Rick, was <laughs> Loose Change. <laughs> but what I like about Loose Changes, it's the least evocative name for a band, isn't it? It's, it's not amazing. sexy, it's nothing. It's got no kind of mood or feel to it at all. Loose, Loose Change. change. It's, it's just, it's... Uh, welcome. Rough outline. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just nothing. The checkbook stops. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket fluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but while I was at my parents' house, they, they often, uh, you know, they keep clippings of things, you know, if, if we've been mentioned in the papers, they like to keep a record of them and stuff, because, uh, I like to show it to my grandparents, you know, and keep, a, you know, keep, keep fully abreast of things. And, uh, they, I... Th you know, I managed to find a couple of them. This is what, I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. It's, for people who don't realise, Carl was making a couple of little three-minute TV projects recently that were on Channel 4. And in the Sunday Times, they, uh, someone's written a letter about Carl to the Sunday Times. Wow. And uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent. And this is what they, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times. Mm. Who is Carl Pilkington? <laughs> And why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? <laughs> he asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy Robinson in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> I've <literally laughs> wasted five minutes and they were three minute wonders, so it must have felt <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two thirds as long again. But think how an angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, though. you it's really must something. have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. But what, what views did you put out in these short films which you feel people perhaps should be talking about, discussing, digesting, thinking about? Uh, just stuff that was in my head that day when I was filming them. Yeah. Is it in your head now? Uh, some of it is. <laughs> or, now you've remembered me what I said. Now you what? Now you've sort of told me what I said in that one. Yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. And I, and I stick by it. Remembering some other stuff? Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah, if, I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listened to this. But, Almost certainly not. But listen, right? <laughs> I was saying about the the uh, museums, right, and how they're big and everything, and they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. mm. that in the, in that museum, they've got something like uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, <laughs> right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits. 
because there was a fella who, a fella who opened it. Right, I did a bit of research on the museum. A fella who opened the museum up. Uh, well, what was his name? It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter, does it? What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah, okay. So he's in there and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about that oh, time. Right, okay. he just, it seemed like you he, never, searched it. he <laughs> never chucked anything away. He's like, oh. oh, I won't put it in the bin, pop it on the shelf. Oh, right? okay, so yeah. So put everything on a shelf oh, in right, the museum. Yeah. Then as time well, I think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, it keeps everything. And if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing, the good stuff. But people who set these museums up are just as crafty. <laughs> what? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But she's hang on, wait, that, I, what's that got to do with someone pocketing? I don't understand your because, point. Because she's sort of moaning at me going, don't have a go at the museum and the dinosaurs. But no, she, but she's having a go at your idiot. fatuous you're, point. Yeah, you're absolutely uneducated, but, stupid I mean, I, point I, that I, you got. You got TV time to talk absolute shit. If I could uh, that's not paraphrase fault, Wendy, that's not my fault. If someone says, "Do you want me to do a little program and you can do what I want," I went and did what I did. But, Free speech. But it? we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself, and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me. I didn't nick. But anything. she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's all nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, all right, then well, we'll watch Wendy's little program when that goes out. Let's <laughs> see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. But I've got, um, you know, speaking of like weird stuff and that, I've got a new... Well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, I've got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book? Top 50 Freaks. Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And do you know, like, everything, um, normally has a name. So, like, if it's, uh, the two-headed fella, you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? They've got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, yeah. on the cover of this one, it's got, like, a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three-breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> uh, and there's a, uh, what else was in there? There's a, um, there's a fella, uh, the one face- Why is she posing nude though? That's what I want to know. Showing off. It's not the worst disability, is it? Well, just you got three, it doesn't mean you have to get them out for the- oh. For the lads, does it? Tart. I know. Well, she looks happy. <laughs> And there was a, a fellow with like one one face but two bodies. In one face but two <laughs> bodies. <laughs> one face, two bodies. What do you mean it's, one it's face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely you want a head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face. That was weird because he looked fed up. <laughs> sort of, <laughs> what are you talking about? How what can you are you have talking a face about? A head? How can you have? What do you mean? How did it join to the neck? No, it did. It did have a, a head, but the fact is, it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you've got one head, you'll yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just, it was the fact that he had one face and two bodies that I didn't think But why do you keep saying one <laughs> face and two bodies as why opposed to one, one head? head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, yeah. well surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. It, I mean, roll I've up, got... roll up, see the man with one face. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. He's just got like a face and then one neck. And then it splits off into two bodies. It's really <laughs> weird. It Honestly, doesn't... it's weird. It's, it... it was ages ago. Well, it, no. Uh, no, it doesn't happen. So it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is, that fella, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman. He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what <laughs> I'm saying. Well, they've all- That, they that all... isn't the peculiar thing about him. No, well, they all had names like that. Right. But there was one thing in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> What do you mean? It was ju it just said un unidentified. What what did it look like? Um sort of sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 it just reminded me when you What talk do you about mean strange. testicles for eyes? And what is it? Did they have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh for f no, So that's what I'm saying though, you're attracted to to the odd oddness of the thing. And that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. Warwick. You know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute, and then I'm sure we'll get used to you. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like I've said, I'm surprised it, it, things like that don't happen more because, especially after being in hospital and seeing how the body works and that. You have no idea it, how the body works. No, honestly, I've got me. Right, you have no idea. You've learnt nothing. I, I've got me. You've learnt nothing since the age of seven. I've got my head round it a bit more, and and the way that there's loads of people in the world, mm. and yet you don't see people with like dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street, going, oh, "Everyone's got one head." That's yeah. weird. Suzanne, I don't see any dangly eyes today? No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> mm. Warwick's not been the only correspondent. We've had a number of people. Remember years ago we used to, uh, encourage people to send in questions, and those questions have been drifting in ever since, really. Just things that people want to throw at you, see how your mind works, Carl. Do you mind answering a few? Uh, no. I suppose you might loosely term these philosophical questions, or at least questions that might help you think, ponder on some of the bigger ideas. Yeah. This is your forte, Carl. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. Question one. Carl, are all men born equal? Wow. Well, we've talked about Warren. Warwick. Say if, like, the pillow man, right, the fellow with no arms and legs, if everyone was like that, he wouldn't be, it, that wouldn't be a disability. He'd be equal to everyone else, wouldn't he? When someone fights for equality, it doesn't mean they want to be treated literally the same. For example, uh, 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 it's usually about a prejudice, isn't it? Or a lack of opportunity. Yeah. If, um, you were, uh, just to think of uh, uh, equal opportunities in terms of, uh, a job, yeah. um, if, um, you needed someone, uh, for a, a lookout on a lighthouse and a blind person went along, they couldn't do the job. Whereas if it was, uh, listening for stuff and you didn't give it to the blind person because you were worried about, hmm, don't know, blind people, that would be, uh, imposing a prejudice because he could hear as well as you. So, if he was the best for that job, he should get it, despite his other disability. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, your ears are important in a light. I'm house. pretty sure he's coming down on the wrong side of the argument, Steve. I'm keep going, keep going. Go on. No, I just want to hear it, you know. I mean, if they want to go, go for any job, go for it, but then don't moan if you don't get it. <laughs> That's, that's all I think. Is yeah, that your equal opportunity <laughs> statement? Um, <laughs> that's your statement. Well, I don't take anyone on, so I don't have all these worries, but I'm just saying, if I was in charge of that lighthouse and the deaf fella turned up, uh, was he deaf or blind? Well, it depends. I gave you there two There was scenarios. one of me. There was a deaf guy and a blind guy. And no one else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put another advert in. <laughs> Okay, well, we've, we've got another question here, which I suppose in some respects, uh, is along the same lines. <laughs> Do you believe in the notion that history is written by the victors? And consequently... Well, don't tell me what that, what the upshot no, of that is. No, I was just saying, consequently, what does that mean? Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. And consequently, what does that mean for history, as we understand it? Just that, uh, stuff's written by the people who won it, type thing. Won what? won whatever they did. But what, what yeah. But well, if it's, if it's a war, the ones well, who won it wrote it. But yeah. of course you're gonna do that. That's what you do, isn't it? You shout about it if you win something. If you lose, you go, oh, don't talk about that, it's depressing. No, no, no. Doesn't or, mean that or because you're not around. Well, it means it, it, very often if, uh, if someone has conquered a nation or set up, uh, um, a dominance somewhere, that they keep an eye on, on what goes out, what, what's, you know, propaganda or whatever, or what's taught in schools, you know. But it's even more significant than that, because it comes down to the very, very minute pieces of information that we see in every walk of life, you know. Prior to black people having their freedom when they were slaves, history, or the history of black people, was not being written by black people. Therefore, it was always seen through white eyes, which often explained, justified, or excused, or dismissed, or didn't even mention many of the abhorrent things that happened. So it's hugely significant. Um, I suppose you can have, bring out two books, you know, uh, I mean there's loads of books, isn't there? I brought one out. If, if I can get one out, bring, let, let, let the losers bring one out, is what I mean. Just let everyone have a book, and then you decide, 
you know, let people decide which one they want to read. Um, I think they did it with some story where it was like you decide the end. Okay. <laughs> that, that was largely a point this exercise, wasn't it? He's got no idea. Carl, do you believe that the future is fixed? Do you believe that your life unfolds as a matter of destiny? I've heard something about this where there's some system that it is laid out for you. And even well. if, if you want, say if I wanted chicken for my tea, mm. um, I really fancy having chicken. But when I get to the supermarket, the fella goes, we haven't got any chicken, you're having beef. They say that that was already laid out for you, and that day you were having beef, no matter what happened. Fatalism. There's a, there's a, there's a, a slightly more attractive um, theory uh, uh, called determinism. Where um, they say it's well, not so much. Well, that's if you want chicken, you'd, you'd go to the next supermarket and you'd go. Well, I'm going to find it. Doesn't mean no, no. Yeah, doesn't mean you're determined in that sense. Like you've got a, you're definitely going to have chicken tonight. <laughs> it means that it was determined, as in predetermined. Um, uh, but all, all determinism basically says is that you know it's not whether you can you know choose, it's whether you can choose your choice, because it's you know it's to do with brain states and. We think we, you know, we have the illusion of free will, because you go, oh, I have a drink, oh, a fancy coke, but something in you happened that meant you wanted coke. Well, this is weird, right? Because do you know how I've been in hospital, having me kidney stones done and what have you? Uh, well, as they do in hospitals. And this is why I don't like going in them. Did I just try and explain determinism to Carl Pilkington? Yeah, what I the didn't fuck want to am stop I thinking? you, but... I mean, what, no, what what am I thinking? It just made you look, you look more of an idiot than I him. know, exactly. Yeah, I feel stupid. Yeah. But I'm, I'm in hospital, right? And, like I've said to you, the annoying thing is when you're in hospital, they didn't just have a play about with the kidney. Whilst they're there, they're fiddling about with other bits, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, let's have a that's feel. That's libelous. Uh, no, no, but it, that's what they do. Whilst you're in, let's have a, you know, prod about. They took some blood, right, and they said to us, uh, they said, now the weird thing is, these kidney stones you had, it was probably caused by too much calcium, right? That's what they are, they're a calcium build-up where you're not flushing it out and so it's... Yeah. Now, the weird thing is there, I don't like having cornflakes. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, what you were just saying there is your mind or whatever, I've asked you before, I don't know what's in charge, but... So <laughs> like, you don't, do you? Say like when I get up in the morning, normally Suzanne will have some Rice Krispies. And she's mm. like, do you want some? Right? Just yeah. have some. And I'm like, no. Now that isn't me saying no. That's the calcium, that's my body going, I don't need any milk, don't give me milk, I'll have a crumpet. i <laughs> 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 Now bear in mind, Rick, that w in the space of three minutes we've gone from your definition of determinism to him having a lovely crumpet for breakfast. <laughs> There's no one else in the world you can have a conversation with where you can make that distance no, that, but, but that I, quickly. But it is interesting <gasps> how, how my body- have you ever had it, right? Sometimes I can go but ages- no, your body lied to you, because your body said you don't need water, you don't need water, you don't need water. No. Oh, yeah. It, like today before I left, Suzanne said, what do you want? Straight away I said, I need some leaks. Now, <laughs> what, what, whatever I've- that operation I've had has obviously taken out whatever leaks give me. I'm lacking on that. <laughs> See, I think I think he probably has it more than the rest of us because he. I think he uses his subconscious more than us. We think about stuff. He is like the leech yeah. that is going on chemical memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's only got it written down. <laughs> <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints. Um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital this week, because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out, honestly, I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital, just with, uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you, and, uh, yeah. You had kidney of, stones, all right? No, no, sorted. but seriously. Monday. I had a bit of a lion today, because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for f I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that.
people who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. No, just because I, I needed to have water before six o'clock, they said, don't have anything after six. We'll get up at 5.50 then, like you were planned to. Don't you have five minutes, minutes sleeping. Don't ten minutes to have water though, does it? Well, why did you say 5.50 in the first place? Because time? then it tricks me head, doesn't it, going, oh, I had an extra five minutes. Tricks me head. Because then it tricks me head. <laughs> it. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... It's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? It's, it's always hot. It's always like 90 degrees. There's no air. Is that to make you drink water? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital. Leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors, uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like, he's my granddad or something, it's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like, that's... <laughs> Do it with a cough! How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Right, well, yeah, after that, uh, went back in. Um, Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, so that was on the other night. Uh, Arthur and, was uh, with your lodger. So, um... And she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I, and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for <laughs> liver damage. <laughs> she said, right, come on. Let's, uh, I just can't put up with this. It was like two o'clock in the morning. So we, we left the flat and what have you. Uh, got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That he is did. cheeky. That was, uh, really, I mean, he could On the way to pain. the hospital. So, uh, Cause you're not an ambulance driver. Did you explain that to where you no, were going I, I to? I was in that sort of thing where you just can't be bothered. Do you know what I mean? I was oh, in a sweat and stuff. He came back with a scratch card and some barbecue <laughs> briquettes. <Yeah. laughs> so anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. Um, so I go in, and there's like, I don't know if you've been in like A and E at like you know, half two in the morning. Oh. It's just depressing. Fluorescent light doesn't help because it makes everyone look iller than they actually are. So uh, in there, there was uh, a woman who was just sat there crying. She wasn't holding onto any part of her body. She was just sat there whinging. And when you're feeling bad, you've got that going on. So you just want to tell her to shut up. <laughs> there was a fella who was like moped over in a wheelchair that someone had just chucked in. Moped over? <laughs> it looked like somebody had just sort of found him and wheeled him Nurse? in. Nurse? Who's the guy moped over? <laughs> so this this gay fella came through. And, How did uh, you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A He's, doctor you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. And he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it 
that- Of course you'd let him do it, he's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that, I'd go hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I mean is that night I would I would have just let him put three up honestly. <laughs> it's just weird, isn't it? How your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need and a, they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. They uh, in, gave me some morphine and we sort of head caved in again like last time, and then the pain went. But anyway, um, just turns out that I, I'd had a load of like blood clots in the bit from my kidney to my bladder. And that was acting as a sort of a stone again. No, it's just, so that's it's just what a scab, isn't it, where it's curing it? So. No, but all the work, when they blew up the kidney, they blew up the kidney four times its normal size. So there was no hiding place for the stone. Yeah. So when they did that, it caused a lot of blood. It must have ripped the sides of it and stuff. And then that blood was in the kidney, and it went down the pipe and blocked it up a little bit. And that's the pain that I had. It was sort of, had problems getting through all this thick blood that they caused. So, uh the weirdest thing that happened when I was in there, right? Uh, the, the morning, like, after I'd had the morphine and what have you, right? I slept pretty well. But I woke up and the, you have, like, a telly for your own bed that, you, that you're allowed to use if you pay for it, right? So, so the glow from that woke me up because they come on at about ten past seven and the telly's in front of your head, right? <laughs> so you're getting this glow and you're going, oh, what's that now? And uh, I looked at it and all it had on, written on it is... Uh, Carl, uh, received bad news about your father, right? And yeah. I was like, is this what they do now? Because it's such a big hospital that they just text your <laughs> sort of news to your bed. And I, I was kind of like, what's, like I say, it was early, it was ten past seven or whatever. Thinking, what's, what's going on? I, I didn't have my mobile, Suzanne took that. And I was looking at it, I read it again, I thought, Does, it might come up with more, like, what's up with him? <laughs> Turns out it was just a review for Neighbours. It just tells you. <laughs> it tells you what's on the telly that day, and there's some fella in Neighbours who's called Carl, whose dad went bad. So that sort of woke me up a bit. I had a bit of a shock then. It was kind of like, so I was wide awake at like quarter past seven in the morning because my heart went a bit fast because I thought something had happened to me dad. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled "My Ward." All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, a, I don't know what the word is. A, bad experience. Trauma? A trauma, yeah. I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. In my ward. I know it's called my ward. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Bang. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese, he was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make it. I like same it because you know why? It's like he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left. He left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest. Yeah. So you know you've done quite quite a few bits there from the diary, right? The other week you were saying a diary to sort of be famous and what have you. It's got to have a big event in it. That's a big event in my life, right? Mm. Peeps did a diary that had big events in it. You said about the fire on Pudding Lane. I had a kidney stone here. You write about puddings you've had. So is that now, is that as big as, is, is that a proper diary thing? It's but a proper diary anyway. I think personally, the five or six pages you've written about your ill health are genuinely interesting. And I'm sure, in years to come, people, it will be an interesting evocation of the NHS at this modern age and how it is, what it's uh, like to be in hospital. What other diaries are out there? Well, a lot of them are fictional, of course, Bridget Jones and the like. There are lots of memoirs, but, but to publish but a whole diary, why. I mean, you can well, get- Well, the two, the two most famous d diaries, I'd have thought, was Peeps and Anne Frank. 
But yeah. Kenneth Williams' diaries were published after his death. Many uh, celebrity diaries have been published. Alec Guinness, people like that. And is that just there last year, or did they do it when they were doing a lot? Because oh, if yeah. they're old and sort of not working well, a diary doesn't isn't that good. Well, often the the moments you know prior to their passing are some of the most interesting. You see their their final thoughts and final days. Yeah, but are they just you say different things when you're ill. When I was on that table about to go under, and you're thinking this might be it, different thoughts on the world. Do you know what I mean? Different priorities. Such the most profound thing that you thought that you know it was because of your illness? Um, just as I went under, the last thing I said to this woman was, oh, you look different with that on. And, <laughs> and <laughs> oh, you look different with a hat on? Yeah, it was a woman who gave me the injection and she'd been round to the bed beforehand sort of saying, right, you're allergic to this, can you eat strawberries? And I was a bit like, why are you asking me that? And she went, well, no, a lot of people are allergic to strawberries. And I was saying, but is there any trace of strawberries in the stuff? And she's like, no, it's just that a lot of people are... And I said, well, no, I, I eat them. And then she's like, what about fish? And I said, I like some, I, but I haven't had them all. And, uh, <laughs> and then she turned to Suzanne at that point and said, what, do you know of anything you can't eat? She sort like of said... A, like, like turning to the mother? Yeah. When the child can't answer. And, but she, she was, this was this woman, and she didn't have a hat on or anything. And then when I went down there, I didn't realise it was the same woman until I was lying there and she started to inject me and I just said, oh, you look different with that on. And then I went out and, uh, and I, when I woke up, um, the woman sort of came round and just sort of said, oh, it's weird, that, that was the last thing, like you said. And, uh, that made me think that could have been my last, you know, like fight them on the beaches or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that could have been my little thing. You look different with a hat on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh God! In its own way, it's quite wise. People do look different with hats on. I, I think his last words would be something like, "Can this kill you?" Yeah. Suzanne, can you drink bleach? <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's the end of this series, the third series of the Ricky Gervais show. Um, we'll have to give it a rest for a while, won't we? Oh, I'm exhausted. Um, thank you, everyone who uh, um bought the series, uh, uh, all 24 episodes we've ever done are available on iTunes, so, um, uh, yeah, if you haven't heard them, but maybe we should do a free one now and again over the coming years. Should we retire from podcasting and audiobooks? Yeah. We've made our point, haven't we? I think we've made the point, yeah, I mean, you always leave them wanting more, and let's be honest, <laughs> we passed that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so... We may as well stop now, as good a time as any. So for, so let, let's say, let's never say never, but let, for quite a while, um, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news! You little brown teddy! Right, years ago, uh, people only drank water, didn't they? How long ago are we talking? Uh, going back a bit. Okay. Um, and it was just the norm, everybody was happy with that. It was kind of like, you know, what, you're thirsty, you have some water. It was just what you did. And, well, and it was no, more of... Well, no, not only water. No, it was, it was kind of like... Oh, well, they drank uh, milk at birth, didn't they? Yeah, as a baby. Mm. But then you don't, you don't have that when you're older. What I mean is, there's more now, as we've discussed, there's more of everything. So... No, I thought there was fruit juices in... Yeah, but what, I mean, when people were thirsty, mm. it was, it was like, well, have water. They, they didn't go, oh, what do you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? I'm, I'm just saying they yeah. had it for a purpose as opposed to uh, something on the, on, for the taste buds. Right? Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so this, this town, right, uh, it was in the middle of nowhere somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's the, um, it's the detail that makes the story, yeah. isn't it? The, the, the pinpoint accuracy of, uh, you know. so it was a while ago and it was in a town somewhere. Brilliant. In the middle of nowhere. And what, what used to happen is barrels used to appear, right? These sort of, uh, do you know like how they have um, wooden barrels, that beer and that comes in? Right. Mm. One of those used to just be in this village and everyone who lived there uh, w was used to this sort of drink that used to crop up, right? Well, because they were used to it, they didn't question it, it was kind of like, yeah, it's what happens if you live here. Sorry, so I don't understand, so what's in the barrel? It's a barrel in the town square. Well, it's this drink. And, and it's, so it's not water. It's not water. It's a mysterious it's, it's, other uh, drink. Well, it, it, I'll tell you now, it's it's like a fruit drink. Okay. And back then, I mean, I, I speak to my mum and she didn't have a banana, so she met me dad. 
and they were made up of fruit. Sorry, is that a sort of euphemism? I don't know what that means. No, but what, what, <laughs> yes. I, mean, what I mean is... Was that, is, he came a-calling with a banana. <laughs> no. With a bunch of bananas and some, uh, some flowers. <laughs> oh. No, but what I'm saying is, uh, it was like a fruit drink and for years and years people didn't drink fruit, it was an eating thing. Do you what? know what I mean? It, it was, was an, an eating thing. thing. It was an eating. eating. Yeah, what, it, was, it was, it was, you're thirsty, have some water, what, you're hungry, have a banana, have an orange, sure, But the idea of combining the two, crazy. They never used them in that way, so anyway. So a mysterious fruit-based drink is turning up mysteriously in this town for years, no one questions it, no one thinks, they yeah, just, just think it's in that area, I'm sure like- in Here the come the little man. No, but, but in the same way that in Scotland they'll have, um, fried Mars bars and that, yeah. and they don't bat an eyelid at that. Yet when we go there, well, no, they go, well, they, well, they don't. They didn't appear mysterious. Did they? <laughs> they didn't just appear go, one day. I assume they go to the news agents and take it home and pop it in some batter. I yeah, don't, I... but what I'm saying is they mm. don't think anything's odd about that. But as time goes on, people have started travelling more, haven't they? Ooh. And uh, you have visitors sort of came in to the to the town, to the town. and uh, mm. they were saying, "Oh, I'm a bit thirsty. Have you got any water?" Yeah, and they were fine. like, "I don't have water. Mm. Have uh, have some of that in that barrel." And they were like, mm. "What's that?" Oh, it's a drink. So they had it. And it was really like refreshing. Cool. And they were like, "What is this?" And they said, "Don't really know. It just crops up." <laughs> of course they did. No, it's what. Uh, no, it's what you get if you live it. It's part of living it. Right. So sure. they were like, "Brilliant! Do you sell this?" And no, they don't just sell it. We don't even know where it comes from. Just have some whilst you're here. You don't even know where it comes from. No. So the thing bollocks. is, this this helped the uh, the town out. That's because, before the monkey appears. This shit. <laughs> yeah. So all these people are enjoying the drink. Mm. Word gets out, and yeah. it went on for a couple of years, but. They say it travels fast, doesn't it? If it's yeah. good, if it's good news, it travels. If it's good news or bad news, it travels fast. Yeah. Mm. So but, news uh, travels fast. Yeah, just news. Yeah, news does. So um, mm. anyway, so some fucking business, monkey news doesn't. This is taking half an hour. So some big business fella oh. who was on holiday. Oh. In, in any it, specifics? He was from <laughs> uh, Chicago. Right. Oh, and he, he flew. How tall was he? Hold on, though. So this is after Chicago was founded. Oh right. uh, yeah, Chicago was knocking about. Oh, they had loads of drinks then. Yeah, they had al alcoholic. Coffee, no, tea, coffee, yeah. tea, alcohol. Yeah, they had every drink under the sun. Yeah, but not like- Every any, drink under the sun. Not like, Apple juice, grape no, juice, no, ciders, didn't. wines, every, just, yeah. So, so he, he came oh, in- Oh, Chicago was founded. He, then, ca uh, he came yeah, in- Yeah, probably and, 19th century. Oh, there's loads of shit about. And he was saying, this drink you've got here, so it's good stuff, you know. Mm. It, 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 it? And they said, well- it just appears and what have you, and he said, well, that's a bit odd. Mm. So anyway, he, he got a bit annoyed with it, because he wanted to take it back with him to Chicago. He knew yeah. there was an, an audience for this. Well, yeah, yeah, because they got bored of tea, coffee, coffee all the other drinks. All the other drinks and that, yeah. So he, uh, he waited Need. at night. He'd been around for years. Waited at night, waited behind a truck. Mm. <laughs> a truck. <laughs> a truck. <laughs> also, uh, so we're in a motorised age. Also, so uh, at least 1890, <laughs> something I'd have thought. Uh, and he saw this uh, little fella uh, bring the barrel out. How little was the fella? It's hard to tell in the dark, and they were quite far away, and the barrels, you know, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's hard it's to tricky. work out. Yeah. He uh, was short, his arms were long. So, um, so they followed him in, right, and, uh, saw what was going on. Okay. Like, how it was being made. Mm. And, uh, and they said, you know what, we, we can have a go at making this ourselves. And what happened in the end, they, they tried to imitate it in Chicago. Mm. Uh, there was a orangey tang, right? It was made by an orangutan, wasn't it? And, uh, do you know, grapefruit juice. Mm. They had, like, ape fruit juice that, that they, they were good at crushing the fruit with the feet and what have you. And that's, that's how them two... So it was great ape fruit drink. Yeah. Which probably got abbreviated over time. Ape fruit, ape fruit, no, ape fruit juice. No, no, it was great ape fruit drink. It was, because it tasted great. That is a load of shit, Carl. That is why we stopped doing it. <laughs> oh! He says he's got nothing in the flat. That's why he has to do a shop every day because he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're going to want to eat. But that's why you get a. But d you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe a, a dozen meals, don't you? So you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I going to have chicken? Or am I going to have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. Yeah, but well, I always come down to one of uh, half a dozen meals. We've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've There's got too much time There's nothing wrong with nipping to the supermarket. There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you, you've had one thing. You've had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't that be we'd bothered. All, couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered.
I haven't seen I haven't seen Carl an interview with him. I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV um, a while back on the thing called the Culture Show. Oh, yeah. BBC Two. And I tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair, being interviewed. And I tell you what, I'm I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking? Yeah, round? yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally yeah. looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm not doing that. And either. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I've met a guy, funny you mention that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him, and we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? You know, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh, who speaks God. sense. Oh, God. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just and the they way they- sort of greased it up a bit, just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, like must she have been about 50 in. people. She no, no, she, she started colouring my head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder. She's doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> I'm sure she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched like other people who were on. Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You just have to go around to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going. No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get the in glare. people's not, eyes. They've got to be careful. Health and safety. The light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing that again. How do you cope with this newfound um, interest in in you? as a person. I've got an idea, Steve, by the way. You know, but my, the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Sure. When they see him in the yeah, street yeah, with yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna do a tour, um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play, or uh, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh -huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. With. Or yeah, or yeah. whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to have you seen this bald-headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send uh, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures. Uh, on sh if you were own a shop, but a big picture of him. If you were just, even if you're, you know, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. Oh, he's only going to rain it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Will you say that? But, well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Mm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you All mean? The, yeah, I mean, I, 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 since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way, I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so can... lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects how eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds. He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? But there's Why one Velcro manufacturer going, yes, at, at last. last, he said what needed to be said. 
why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> oh. that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing you carried a pot on your head for, for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that. Well, no, I've, I've, I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the, the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you've got to wear a tie. Yeah, but, th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, or because, take a bag. because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back- I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right? They wore a tie. They wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know- Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with, with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So, so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie- its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, it right. was called a tie. It tied together. Okay. Yeah. So then, when we uh, we had buttons, that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of of smartness, like saying I've made an effort. Yeah. Okay. But now that would go away. So now you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his with his apples and oranges and his his keys and his sticks. He's making a nest out of. So it would it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy, so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round, I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh, no, oh look, but look, look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro. <laughs> it's a hat. Yeah, well, that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what, what I mean is if, if someone- Stick if the you... video on of uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but, but then it's still news. If you, news is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you That's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the, what... key, the key with news is the word new. No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's it just, is. it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, because you couldn't have, because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days, it doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news, though, because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday, and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news, Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, Time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But yeah, but according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you. Uh, there was an earthquake. When was it? Yesterday. Phew. That's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two. You only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, "You got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense." 
No, but the world oh, but you're is... Not, you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you when they told you. Yeah, but it, it is everyone else's emotions that, that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a... I don't like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful might to be know it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but, but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's, sirens, you say, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it... Like I said... Hiya! Oh, uh, could you just move out of the way for us? It can be us? anything, as long as we know. It can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know well, that's that chicken noise... that's not going to freak people out. No, but it sort of make you smile. But you'd, you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. What, you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you? And you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something <laughs> clucking in my way. do 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, that's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically, it's like, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there with <laughs> mum and dad. His mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just pop that <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose man was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it'll probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't... She knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out. Put it into perspective for her. You will be dead when this happens. Don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <laughs> worry worry hole with worries, and that's it. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume worry. that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. I, with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Susanna and I decided to sleep tops and tails, because it made me get a bit more room. My dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes, <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roald Dahl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think, a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is, but he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because the mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nuts. <laughs> 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 is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He saw the mattress and all. So we decided to sleep tops and tails. It just gets strange. so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, hey, man alive. It's like... Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go, there you go. Well, that seems cheap. Well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this, we bought this, like, you know, uh, flat and what have you. And we bought the bed. And then, uh, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. No, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was, like, travelling round. 
he'd just keep in the- in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke yeah. who drove around in a van with a mattress in the back. So and Uncle Alf, play. so Uncle Alf, right? It, well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him, he's the one who slept in a dinghy. <laughs> the one who- Cause his mattress was in his car! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, why didn't he go, oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> Blow up the diggy. I'm not gonna go out and get there. Not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, me, me dad got me- got me his mattress and, uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this. And I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she so, got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Mm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> 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 the fire engines were too late. <laughs> No one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> the old man down the road, yeah. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> yeah. Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> It's not a real place! It's like fucking Narnia! It's a children's TV program! Unbelievable! Oh god! Oh! Just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden ticket. Oh god! Oh god! The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with him and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> Poor little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not the bees. playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. You know <laughs> what I mean? They don't get on, and it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What? For honey. Yeah, no, but like I say. You can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so get ten bees, yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> but you- but you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it that's doesn't it. You can't eat it and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. <laughs> ten bees! Imagine keeping ten bees! Well, just get them to do- do the graft. If you've got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they'll go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No. If you've got ten bees, you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! They don't, no! It's not a workhouse. <laughs> bees don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've oh, got a bad back. Anyway, back to, uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not- I, I can't see how that's gonna ever evolve. No, well they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well. you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, look at the state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest worry. So as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still going, oh, I wish we'd- I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at, um, look how things do change. But why are we all gonna get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um- The air? Or yeah, the hair? Just, you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing. 
and we're not going to look that healthy, and uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, look at the state of that. What's and that's got to do been... with, the, with human evolution. But, but the stuff because in the sea been is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark, so they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> if they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper or something. It's the, it was just a head. But, Carl, the a reason- fish, that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. <laughs> Watched a programme about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat? just someone I've been sort of working with. Do you want a mate of yours? He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're going to have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're going to have something new, make it make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Because it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan singer Mylene Class and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've, uh, we've, we've come there, Rick, to, to where we entered. It was this sense. time last year when we first started the podcast that, um, we were talking about, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, it's just... Uh, the the last series uh, finished recently, and it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, m really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, but I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I don't, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not going to survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this um, island I can eat, give me the, the cat crocodile's penis. It wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't I, I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that programme, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's alright. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me, I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it, the texture's probably the same as Lots of other things. What would mean? hunger do to you, though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, uh, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms? I think you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up, but when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? <laughs> well, yeah, that's I a good point. I say he's been eating that. <laughs> How come I've got this? <laughs> You know, you meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. Well, thanks for listening. That was the, uh, the Christmas podcast. Um, we should say the winner of the last competition we did. Um, they can win the, um, the podcast book and, uh, Flanimals and, um, the extras book that's out, still available. All available. And the CD. The three, so, the three CD set of the, yeah, of the best yeah. of the podcast, yeah, is that right? Series one? A, a brand new hour. If you haven't got that, get out. Well, you've got some record tokens. Yeah, if you've got Christmas. record tokens or book tokens, those are the perfect uh, things to spend them on. Or fifty pounds from your auntie. Exactly. Go and buy one of those. Um, and the winner was, uh, Stephanie Prow from the Wirral. Well done, Steph. Well done. Well, thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. That's the end. That's the end of the Christmas podcast and the end of 
this, uh, this team for a little while. Yeah. It's been great, so it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye, and Happy New Year. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. It's all right. What are you doing now? You got time for a coffee or something? I can't now. I'm going to the, um, you know the orphanage for, uh, terminally ill kids? Oh, yeah. I'm going down there. I'll go down there every Christmas and see Do you? Like, do you? Entertain them. Oh, well, yeah. I bet that's lovely for them. Yeah, no, I've, uh, actually written a song I'm gonna perform when they see the office and see that I sing in that. Uh, You've written a song for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could we hear a bit? I mean, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but no, you've got, you got the guitar there, is it? Yeah. Um, I wrote this for a, a kid, he's a brave little guy, he's only about ten, but, um, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking, he's, ah. Oh. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's coming soon, though you ain't got a mommy or daddy, Santa still loves you, and he's riding on his reindeer to trample down the gloom, so don't cry. It's Christmas, Santa's coming soon. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's feeling kind. Though you know you'll never see him, he's not just in your mind. And it's not that he's invisible, it's because you're going blind. So don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's feeling kind. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's on his way. Though he's got a billion children, and he's only got one day. You've got slightly less than that. If I were you, I'd pray, but don't cry, it's Christmas, and it sounds a little gay. Oh, isn't that be quite moving for everyone? Yeah, I'm just, I, mean, I just, I would ask you now to not play that song. Oh, no, too late now, they expect me. But I don't, I, I'm not but sure it's going to be as well received no, as you perhaps hope. I think that's better than any gift, and I don't really want to give gifts because they're expensive. So. Sure. Hello, welcome to episode two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Hello. Oh, yeah, I just, I just, I just feel bad about Graham. I feel sorry for don't Graham. Don't feel sorry for well, Graham. Well, he was a nice guy and he's, he absolutely- was so badly treated. Took you into his home, he was going to give you everything and you just didn't appreciate and was saving your family's life. And you just- Yeah, I but just, I went, I went for the other option. There's no point. All I'd be doing is letting Graham down. And as much as I didn't like him, I don't want to ruin his life. I don't know why you didn't like him. He was just not my type. He was a lovely you know, guy. He wasn't a lovely guy. He didn't give why him wasn't he a lovely time. guy? Just his, just his ways, you know. I mean, you, you, you bond with some people, you don't with others. That had nothing to do with him. You barely even had a conversation gay. with him. Yeah, but you click straight away with people, don't you? You know, when you meet someone, you go, yeah, they're all right. I'd, it wasn't going to work. If I was to go out with a gay man, Graham wouldn't be the one. Who would be? Who would be? Just someone who wasn't as in your face as him. Well, which just someone? What do you mean in your face? What? Just sort of, you know, just the way he was straight away. I wouldn't go to a club to meet someone like that. I wouldn't. Because I don't like doing that as a straight man. So just because I'm gay, I don't suddenly get into house Well, if you, if you were going to be gay, who would you, what gay man would you want to marry? Probably someone who you don't know is gay. I don't know what that means. Someone who's just quiet about it, just get on with it. So if you were gay, you'd like a sort of straight man? No, because that's not going to work either, is it? That was my situation with Graham. But how do you, how do you know, if, how, how would you, if you were gay, why would you approach someone who didn't know was gay? What, so if you're gay, the only gay life you can do is by going to a club where it's a racket at four in the morning and meeting no, someone? No, no. Then, so that's what but I'm who, saying. I'm saying, who would be your ideal partner if you were gay? Who would you like? There'll be someone who I don't know is gay, innit? I don't know what that means. What do you mean it was someone who you don't know Because is gay? I wouldn't go out with someone who's really like, oh, hello, and all that, with the shirt open, the Why tan. not? What's because, the... because that's the equivalent of going out with a woman who's got knickers up her ass, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the equivalent. It's the in-your-face woman and the in-your-face man. I don't want any of you. <laughs> Well, who do you want? Well, who was your sort of guy? Not. Okay, well, just say what your sort of guy is then. Do you want him to be sort of like a man's man, sort of goes, you know, slap? He sort of, like, he, when you go do something, you go, you, you dopey idiot, and he just sort of gives you... 
No, I, I don't want that. No, you want someone to go, oh, what's the matter with you? Do you no, want yourself better? Well, what do you want? What do you mean? I'm asking you what you want. want. I don't yeah, want what do you want in a man? I'm asking you what the you want. The ones who are just normal, who just could talk, they'll go, all right, Carl, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right. Well, okay. what are we doing tonight? Watching Die Hard, if you want. <laughs> go straight to bed after that? Yeah. Doesn't... I love the fact he went from like not being sure to no. just like getting a, a man. But not great. It wouldn't be four in the morning. No. I'd be living my life as I am now. Right. But I'd, I'd be a gay man. Yeah. Okay. So because I'm, I'm to... me, aren't I? So yeah. that's not going to change. No. Why would it? No. You, so I'm just trying to. I'm, Carl, all we're trying to establish is what sort of guy you go for. Okay. We've settled that. If um, sorry about that, um, if any uh, people feel sorry for Graham, sorry about that. But um, that's that settled. What I thought we could do, Carl, um, on this, the uh, brand new fifth series of the Ricky Gervais Show, we're talking about things that have happened since we met, looking back, what have you learned, where are we going forward from this. Um, I thought we could play uh, Room 101, um, the popular TV show where people cast the things they hate into Room 101 forever. Room 101, of course, is uh, taken from uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Room of all your fears and terrors, and so. Uh, Is there a copyright issue here? Can we uh, just steal this idea? Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's play Room One Hundred Two. Clever. This is the room next door to Room One Hundred One, which is worse, in my opinion. Is it? Oh, Winston Smith. He, he'd love to be in Room One Hundred One if he went to Room. He'd go, "Oh, get me back to Room." I didn't know. I didn't know where. Oh, I, I didn't know I was born. This is much worse. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Don't put in things like. You know, cancer and racism. I mean, that goes without They're saying. They're already in there. They're already in there. All the terrible things in in life here. This is just your little bugbears. The things that really annoy you. That you know. Well, I I actually did the real show, and I put in things like um, lateness. That's my bugbear. I can't I can't stand it. I think I put in um, uh, oh parents who let their kids run riot. Parents who think that everyone is interested in their kid as much as they are. Um, I remember I was talking about um, this this family, right? They were they were passing the baby around in a restaurant and it was like being sick and they were all shouting about it. And I was like, oh. And, uh, um, and I, I got onto, oh yeah, they were breastfeeding it. And at one point I, I, I went on a um, uh, this sort of like digression about a friend of mine who moved to the country and um, the woman next door, sort of this hippie woman next door, about 40, you know, the one those sort of like long oh, grey hair, know, mate, you know what I mean? I what Shave your mean. legs and yeah. stop wearing flip flops. Yeah. Um, and uh, they said, oh, we're just neighbours and we brought you round a rice pudding. And they gave my friend a rice pudding. And uh, she went, oh, it's um, it's made from breast milk because I'm, I'm still lactating. And I went, thanks very much. And of course, they she went and they threw it away and washed the dish and gave it back to her. And it annoyed me. The arrogance of coming round and saying, uh, it's uh, rice pudding made my breast milk. The uh, uh, Get out of here, yeah. you dirty hippie. <laughs> Is what? that what you'd have said, though, if she'd arrived in No, your I'd have said, oh, do you know what? I, um, I'm, I'm breast milk intolerant. Uh, 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 no. Uh, well, I remember um, the next day it went out on television. A journalist said, oh, Ricky Gervais uh, showed... Uh, is uh, misogynist side? No, no, I stand by it. I stand by it. I don't eat strangers' breast milk. <laughs> I was saying about it, totally natural. Well, it's not okay. Uh, 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 yeah, eyes a cum sandwich. It doesn't matter if it's natural. It's fucking disgusting. Don't make me a rice pudding out of breast milk. You know, I'm, I'm not a fussy eater. Sure. Well, you are. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean. You, you surely you draw the line there of a stranger's breast milk. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Any kind of jizz flan. This plan, do you know what I mean? That's giving you an example of the sort of thing that one might put into room 102. Yeah, that, uh, people who try and make you eat their breast milk disguised as rice pudding. It's quite a specific fear, Yeah, that one. Uh, Graham. <laughs> oh, come on. He doesn't deserve that. Uh, slugs. Was in there? Slugs. So, um... And then, then, then there's, uh, you have to put a case forward and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they, they stay out, whether they've got a purpose. Why? It's, it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? Don't know. 
I just they can get where like water can't. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, any little gap. So is water boneless? There's not many bones in water. No, no, that's what I said. Yeah, but you're saying they can get somewhere that water can't. Yeah, no, they're even more likely to because they sort of move about and that, and they're looking for light. Water's just happy where it is. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why, why banish them all to room 102 slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? Yeah, but I also think, I mean, at the end of the day, they're happy wherever. So stick them in room 102. They're not bothering me, and they're happy. They're not bothering well, what no, the room no, is. no, 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 this is a metaphor. Room 102 means they disappear from existence. It's not really a room where you put in slugs with people making rice pudding out of their breast milk. It's not really, it did, it, it, no. It's not a, you can't rent that room. We are saying, would you take slugs out of existence? That's, that's quite a tough call, isn't it? Because everyone's going to have a go, but I don't know what they do. All I know is, they're clogging up my piping. <laughs> I had to go out and buy a plunger. I hadn't seen them since, like, comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought, I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. It's 2008. I've got slugs in my pipes. <laughs> so, I went out, three quid it was, I had no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Where did you go and get one? Where did it's you- hardware shop around the corner. Uh, so I went round there, said, have you got a plunger? He said, what size do you want? I said, what size have you got? He said, oh, we've got three different sizes. I said, oh, I'll have the middle one. So that was three quid. And, uh, took it back, gave it a bit of a plunge. Uh, and I think it was slugs, like, all, like, bits of black stuff came up. I think it was slugs in there, like, what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha hang on, hang on, hang on, it could just be black gunk, couldn't no, it? No, no, it looked very sluggish. Because, <laughs> remember, I've had a problem with them anyway, I'll go to the toilet, whatever, look round, there's a slug climbing up the wall out of the shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs, I have to keep chucking them out, because I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I didn't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets, I bought some copper ribbon. Right, they don't like going over that, they? Don't do they? Like that. they get, they get a, little a little shock charge, yeah. But now that should be a warning. But instead, they're diverting. They've done a diversion. They've gone up the wall and across. <laughs> now it's like that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign. Yeah. And they're just going bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in, and it's annoying me. And now you get to a point when you do say, "Well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not. How, how much? How they're much, not playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the purpose is." They just sit there still. I don't see him doing anything. I was lo looking at one close up. But had, what do you want to do? Be reading like... Rusa. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good. It's doing its little work. But they're, they're... Ants carrying big leaves or whatever. But, but the slugs just sat in the They're all doing the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. That slug is out. It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. There's no food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. <laughs> but never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so, I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letterboxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. Right. Is this a big problem, though? <laughs> Is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue. And right? it's they're them. eating all them, and 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 that's <laughs> that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky. They give off this glue. It's like the, all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat? <laughs> Think of a slug. A slug. <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If, you're if, making up nature. If you're, if this you, is like Attenborough, but like, made up. If you, when you see a slug, yeah. you prod it, it gets nervous, it wants to run off. But the problem is, because it's sweating glue... It's it, not sweating glue! It makes sense. <laughs> it's it's, it's just the nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on them. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room 102? Well, I just want, I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're going to be gone forever, then we should, we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. Yeah, but you haven't got them in your house, it'd be different. Oh, you've got these people coming around saying you want some rice pudding. That isn't a world problem. That <laughs> wasn't me. Oh, right, right. Whatever it was. Um, no, but they're they're amazing. They've got two sets of like antennae. The one at the top is for light, and the next one is that they can they can smell and get food in the air, just the slightest. What do they do for the world? They're food. If if only it's not good enough. That it's not good enough. What do you mean? Like that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food for somebody. Who's eating them? 
hedgehogs. Do they like them? Yeah, they love them. They're, yeah, they love slugs. Do they? Yeah. The thing is, though, if you're always going to upset someone, aren't you, with anything I put in room one? No, you just got to make a reasoned case, and I'm not sure that you've you've, you've argued well enough. I'm just slugs. having problems with them at the moment. I've spent three quid on a plunger. And I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet or whatever, I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage? A little bit of sluggage between my toes? But I mean, you, if don't... you're going to put everything in, in your house that causes problems, we're gonna, what else are we going to have here? Um, no, boilers? I'm not, I'm not. It's just, I mean, at the end of the day, you only moan about what's fresh on your mind at the moment. And I haven't, you know, I've got to go to that house and I dread to think what's, how many slugs are going to be stuck to the ceiling and everything. Right, okay, well, so we need to move on. So, you are not putting them in? I'm not putting slugs in. All right, man. slugs have not gone in, Carl, I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay, number two. Um, people who don't want to do what, what the brains would be better at doing. Right, okay, now I'll, I'll get around that sentence. Now, tell me again. Brains that don't want to do what their owners are good at. Ah, so now it's the brain's fault. Before you said you were going to put people in who don't do what their brain's good at, but now you've changed that. Now you're putting the the blame on the brain. Now you want to put in brains who don't want to do what their owners are good at. I like the fact that you own a brain. Okay, no, no, no. I just need a bit more clarification, Rick. Before you ask questions, can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like, pe people decide what they want to do. Right. Don't they? For a living. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or... Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. no. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. Right. But, which is fair enough. You can't always find what's going on. There's a lot going on in the brain. Yeah. You know, there might be something up there that you, you just never find, which is sad. Right. Right. But, you mean you may never discover your full potential because you may never st never stumble across it. You may never have the means. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. But that that yeah, of course. Yeah. I I only got into hospital radio because my dad was in hospital. So I found out about this thing and I thought I didn't even know this existed. I want to go. Well, of course. It. So but, I mean, so it's, that's a, there's much bigger issues there that um, uh, the poor working class people don't get the same opportunities. Um, uh, people in third world where when you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite yeah, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do, because you right. can... Let, it, let oh, him finish. God, this is about finish. the brain Shut up. being hasn't... in charge like the numbskulls. Because it, hasn't, it hasn't found its destiny type thing. A brain but is a when someone is good at something and they know the brain is good at something, but then they don't want to do it and they want to go off and do something else. Sorry, who's to blame here? The person or the brain? I'm talking like him now. <laughs> I don't know what's Who are on. you putting into room 102? What annoys you? A brain that doesn't let its owner know what it's good at or an owner that won't do what it, the brain wants to do? I think it's the owner because say like a bloke who's good at plumbing. Yeah. His brain loves plum plumbing. His brain okay. loves plumbing. <laughs> he loves plumb. He's he's sick of plumbing. Um so he goes off to try and uh Unplum. No, uh, he's he's gonna do something else. He's gonna he's, do something else. He's carpentry. Now they say in this country the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We haven't got enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are please, you talking shut about? Up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains, brains and pillows. Brains again. have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going, I want to go for a walk, or I want to go and find something out. But if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make what? sense, Carl. Right, you are this. your brain. Let okay, me... you could have a good point if you said this. You could say that everyone's brain has the ability to become a plumber. Yeah. Uh, you know, your brain, you know, ah, yeah. But I don't know if it has, you see, because this is the thing. When I was younger, when I first left school, I had two jobs I wanted to do. I wanted to be a joiner, right, uh, or a car mechanic. I had a go at sort of joinery. Uh, couldn't really get my head around it, right? Did work placement at a garage, messed it up, got kicked out. What did you now, do? Now, the thing is, Why did you get kicked out? just because I messed the garage up. What? How did you mess it up? 
uh, the fella was a, he's a bit moody. This fella, and he was uh, he just decorated his garage. And you are like that. the slug in this scenario, aren't you? He, he just do you know like to paint the floor and everything, mm. make it with lines in it and everything like that. Right. What did you do? And it was he painted it white. You shouldn't have white in a garage. Stupid with all the oil about and that. It's not the right colour, is it? It's like getting a white sofa. You're asking for trouble. Yeah. So he'd painted it all, and then uh, he sort of said, "Do you want to uh, change the oil on the car?" So yeah, go on then. Uh, so what do I do? He said, you pull the sump out, stick a bucket underneath, catch the oil. All right then. Go down there, pull the sump out, hold the bucket. But because of the pressure, the oil doesn't come straight out. It floats out sideways. Went all over his white floor. He went mental, kicked me out. Now the thing is, that wasn't really my fault. My brain didn't know. It was showing an interest. Then, what? Right, let okay. him finish! Oh God, what does he mean? Shut up, let the brain, fault and my please, brain. The please brain was showing an interest, but at the end of the day, if it hasn't got the knowledge, what can it do? Now, you could say, was that my fault or my brain's fault? No, I'd never say that. People may be in the wrong job. They, we, you might not discover what you're really Yeah, but I'm talking at. about, you get people, all right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! I'm so annoyed! Oh. This is a big problem. It's it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong in the wrong body almost. Yet, yeah. are you with me? No. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. They don't, don't get their head round it. Means look, you you must have learned the same stuff at school as me. But a lot yeah. of it wasn't interesting to my brain. I wasn't bothered. It wasn't into taking it in. Yet look at me in like editing and all that. I can use all that equipment because my brain's my brain's happy with it. Yeah, you found something you're good at. Yeah, yeah. But why aren't I good at plumbing or joinery or being a mechanic? He's probably not interested in it. I was. I loved it as but a people kid. People do have different, different brains. People are different. Some right. people are more higher logic, low yeah, emotion. That's, that's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah, but you, I don't know what you're putting in room 102 because you're saying these. It's like this brain's wandering around Who's looking for a body, and he goes, oh, "I'll choose that body." Hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing. It's, it's a just, matter of taste. Sometimes it's just a matter of taste. It's good to do what you're good at and stop chasing a dream. <laughs> this is the most complicated thing. You could just put in noisy kids, like Ricky. Why is this? This, this is a brain that because someone work. else would have done noisy kids. There's no point everyone putting in the same thing. But I don't room. even know what your point is here. What, I, what, for example, what I put in were parents who ignore their ignore their kids running riot in a restaurant or on a train. Mm. The arrogance of them thinking that oh, isn't it fun? That there was someone to blame. I was basically putting in bad parenting, or you know, there was someone I wasn't going. A brain who wanted to be a plumber, but the not, plumber didn't. I'm not putting the brain in, it's just people. Um, if I had a really good skill, I'd hope that, that I'd use it. But if I, it's you like, don't know what you're good at until you, until you try it. Uh, you might be the best drummer in the world. I know, but they're the people I'm having a go at. They're the people who I'm having a go at. The people who know they can do something, but they don't do it. So people who don't fulfil their own potential. That's a, that's a good one. Is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. But there's nothing to do with this duality, this brain, brain versus person. I don't know what that is. It's a weird thing you've got, a really weird little kink you've got, that you think this brain is another entity that lives in your head, that you own it, and you've got to become the master of it. <laughs> like some sort of weird dog. Uh, Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in uh, people who don't fulfil their full potential. Slugs are safe, but people who don't fulfil their full potential, you have got into room 102. Got a couple more things for room 102, Carl? My, you know my problem with me restless leg syndrome. Oh yeah. If I could put that in. Right, okay. What is this problem? The problem I've got with my legs are they sort of come alive at night. <laughs> <laughs> and what Tap are they dancing. Out doing? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. I sort of go to bed, I'm tired, and then uh, I sort of nod off for about 40, 40 odd minutes. Yeah. And then my legs go. Right. And they just, I can't sleep. It's really depressing. I think it's actually affecting me sort of health wise because I'm not sleeping right through the night. It's like I want to sleep. And what does Graham me. say? What does, um, Suzanne say? Uh, well, she's annoyed with it because she's getting loads of bruises. Mm. 
kicking her. I did a little bit of research on restless leg syndrome when he um, mentioned it to me. Uh, and uh, two little bits of information you'd be interested in, Steve. Uh, it is exacerbated and made worse by a sedentary lifestyle, right. lack of activity, lack of exercise, and it can be alleviated with um, the opposite of that, exercise um, leading a, um, a more active lifestyle. Which I, I proves walk. my point. No, You're no. like a slug. I do loads of walk and I make sure I do a good walk. If anything, it's because I walk too fast because I tense my legs up when I walk. Uh, the doctor didn't say anything to do with that when I told him that ages ago. He said it was because I was eating ice cream. I don't, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't because know something that's is. in ice cream. He just is it the same doctor that said your nerves are too long? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a different fella. This is right. the proper doctor. But, right. um... But yeah, so I've cut that out, and it works for a bit, but now it's got to a point where I have to go to bed, and I have my legs outside of the bed. I have to put my feet on the floor. What, what? do you mean? What? I have to lie in the bed, like With normal feet position, on the floor? but I have to stick my legs out and feet on the floor. That's insane. You if, can't sleep like that. Well, I do. I nod off, and then maybe in the night. When I wake up, my legs are back in the bed, so either they get bored, or they... Or they... <laughs> <laughs> uncomfy or whatever yeah or they eventually get tired but it's kind of like if i have them there it's like they think they're awake and they're being used the only other thing i can do is if i lie on my front and then have my legs in the air what well, i on whoa you lie in the front and have your legs in the air like that say if that's me head oh like um, like that like a score like the front cover of pulp fiction yeah yeah like that if i do that I think if I can get the blood out of my legs, they, they, they don't work the same. Mm. Is this advice from the doctor or...? No, the, well, is it this doctor, is it, was he from the 12th century? No, that doctor didn't tell me to do that, I sort of did it, you I thought that works, that I nodded off. Of well, have you, have you, have you, uh, you know, put this into the, the Royal Society of Surgeons? What? Well, this discovery that if you lay... No, it's my cure. I'll, I'll use it. It might mm. not work for everyone. And so, crazy leg syndrome is destroying your... Sleep. Right. And it's important to get sleep, in it? If you can't sleep, it drags you down. I mean, legs... It's, it's, they just come alive at night. It's like they, they belong to a runner or something. Mm. And they want to run. And mm. I'm going, oh, I just want to sleep. But why don't you run? Why don't you go for a run? Because it's late at night. Yeah, but go for a run in the day. Tire them it's out. fine in the day. Tire them out in the I day. tire them out in the day. No, you don't. Go for loads of walks in the day. Loads of so walks. So if, if you were to go, you go to bed, you got restless leg syndrome. If you were to go to a run, for a run, that would cure it. I've looked it up. No. It does. I do have long, proper walks. It no, no, but if you, no, it, immediately. If anything, it's like the legs like it, and they want more of it. It's like a puppy. You take it for a walk and it's jumping up and down, I want more walks. Well, you can't have a walk, we had a walk earlier. Go to sleep. They're fine in the day. Whilst I'm sat here, they're not probably me. They're, they're, they're not what? They're not probably me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're not probably me! They, they're it not, makes up words! They're not giving me any grief whilst they're I'm sat here. They're not probably me. But when night falls, it's all gonna be different. It's like they go, I don't wanna go to sleep yet. Like it's like a little legs. kid. It's a kid who wants to stay up in case it misses something. Yeah. And that's why I just have to let them stay up. Stick them out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you go to bed before your legs. Yeah. Oh God! It's annoying. I mean, it's really. Uh, well, I don't know if I can put in your legs. this leg syndrome because, as I say, it can be easily cured. You could get up, you could do a bit of exercise, you could walk around. Um, yeah, but I've tried all that, doctor. And it doesn't work. You suggest anything else? Right. Uh, there's your problem. He's not a doctor. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Um. No, well, I, I'll put it in. I will put it in if you try that. Next time your legs are outside the bed, gay, okay, say, okay, listen, I'm going to go for a run. Put on a sweatshirt. No, because it's Put always, on some shorts. It's always late at night. I'm not yeah. going out. It's dangerous. Well, you go to bed at half 11. Yeah. Go yeah. for a run at half 11. Half 11. 15 minutes. Mm. So, are they going in or not? No, no, because you, you're not. I. I, I, I I'm not sure that you're doing everything for it. What's your next thing to try and get in room 102? It's a tricky one, this. Go on. It's, it's people who, um, who think that humans are special. Do you know what I mean? But you think that? No, I don't. I don't think humans are special. I but think what... some of us are. I think you get the odd one who, who creates something and, uh, you know, you go, that's amazing. But the way we say the human race is amazing, no, it isn't. Small percentage of it is. There's a load of numbnuts. 
And it annoys me how people say the human race did this human race. No, it didn't. Let's name them because there's only a few people who have done stuff that matters. Is that what you think? Yeah, definitely. We just thought well, we think we're good and we're not. We're but, just... uh, well, who matters? Uh, just before we get onto your point, so you're putting in the rest of the human race. No, just people who say that that they're good. People who have said that statement that isn't the human race an amazing thing? So okay. anyone who's ever said isn't the human race amazing? Yeah, yeah. Goes I'd... in room one hundred two. Yeah, I'd say don't be stupid. So most of the human race is going in. Uh, well, have you ever said it? Well, I think the, I think all I think all species are amazing. But when people say the human race, they sort of mean they think what well, you mean the, the, that you can go the great people, the, the great art, ones. you know, inventors, the things that were, you know, that we've we've. And how is the human race not amazing? Because we don't, we're not needed to keep this this planet going. We're an added thing that we're was added on later. Chain. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were added last. Yeah. It's like, there's some room left, what we do? Stick some humans on. But don't forget, we, we, this thing of we being added doesn't make sense, because it was a process. There was no yeah. point when someone said, we don't need this, let's stop now. We kept we kept mutating and being selected. Yeah, I know, but sometimes you can keep... It's, it's going back to what we were talking about last time, about uh, you've got a house, you fill it with stuff. At some point, yeah. you've got everything you need. You've got right. your kettle, you've got your fridge, you've yeah, got your telly. Could, could, it could have stopped at slugs, then it'd be you've fine. Gone, I'm buying this but then ornament. Nothing, but nothing needed anything. Yeah, it did. It, the world needed... I mean, okay, I tried to put slugs in, you didn't allow them in. Yeah. Fair play to the slugs. They must do something somewhere. Yeah. Just not in my house. But but it could have stopped at slugs. They got it right. What what what? What's this thing that you need anything else? The slug evolved, it, you know, it, it... No, but we don't add anything, do we? All we've done since we've been around is mess up the world. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. I'm saying we're not needed. I don't know what the last thing was that was needed. No, we're not needed. We're not needed. Yeah. So what was the last thing before? Doesn't make any sense. What was the last thing that was invented by nature? It's Carl, arbitrary. It's a stupid what question. what do you mean? It's not a stupid question. Everything is just happening. It's evolving now. The right, look at it like this. You see, I think we think we're important because yeah. we just do. Well, I don't, but some do. And they're the ones what I'll get rid of. <laughs> Another argument with himself. Now, we think we're special. There might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right. Well, that you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the big bang. They're not trying to recreate a new world. All right, so they but the it's world came different. But the world came from the Big Bang. Yeah, they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see dangerous. the conditions before. Yes, it is dangerous. Apparently, there is a threat. There, admittedly, there is a danger, yeah. very small danger that they could create a black hole that would destroy the world. That so why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> this is what annoys me. It's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. <laughs> why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened. Let them have it. Well, don't you, do, well, you said about progress, you're trying to change time. Yeah, but that's not going to harm anyone, a big bang. I just thought, I, I don't think we need, I mean, we haven't filled this universe yet, have so we? Thought, but the, what you're about, I don't know what you're saying, you're contradicting yourself. Every other sentence contradicts what you said last time. You do want to fill it, you don't want to fill it. We haven't filled this universe, we don't need another one. We do want progress, we don't want progress. I'm Carl, saying, what do you want? I'm saying we don't want another universe. Well, no, no. We haven't got our head around this one yet. We don't know where everything is. One, but go on. Don't create a new one. We're not trying to. No one's trying is, to. Is that your philosophy? Don't create a new universe. <laughs> but why are it's we looking at that? It's a giant research experiment. Why it's, they're not trying to that? create a new universe. Why are we looking at that then? Why do we want to go back today, Dot? So that we can better understand the world that we live in, how we, the world div evolved into the position we're in now. If it did indeed start with the Big Bang, what were the conditions? How did it come from nothing into something? That's what we do. We say why and how. I know, and but when, sometimes. It, and what next? And I, is it good? You know, I don't mind asking questions. I like asking questions. Is Ask it yours question. are, where are slugs going? It, it's just this thing of faffing about with things that are, they don't know what they're doing. Okay, right, okay, Carl. You're in charge of the world now. You are this. You, you're all powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists and they go. What do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange-headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? Right. Stop the Big Bang research. Stop it now. Mm. Okay? Okay, drop your talk. Okay, good. Throw that away. What do you want them to do? The might. 
the might of every intellect in the world standing before you as far as you can see <whistles> hello listen everybody this is what I want you to work on go what do you say uh... Well, I want, I want to come in and... How long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? I forget it. it just, you've got every science... No, but I don't just want to come in and, and poo-poo that, because they're going to... Poo-poo. They've, they've done a lot of research well, on hold it. Hold on. You, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in. Guns are blazing. I'd say... I'd say... Hello, you can everyone. do anything you want. Oh, go on, go on yeah, in. Hello, everyone. Hello, Carl, leader. Right. Uh, listen. Um, this Big Bang thing you've been doing... Yeah, well, that's uh, just only a few of us. That's like less than a millionth of a percent of us. We're all here. Yeah. I've dropped AIDS research. I've dropped cancer research. Right, well, why have you dropped that? I'm working Who's told on you to do that? Well, no, we just, well, we knocked off. They said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here. Every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. Well, listen, where are you from again? Well, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm from Cornwall. I'm, I'm looking no, what, at... No, what research are you doing? Oh, well, I'm looking at um, uh, what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it. You, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy. What do you want me to work on? Who said they're doing cancer? Hey. Go back. Go back to work. Cheers. Right. <laughs> okay. The rest of us I've doing got... stuff that you think we're fanning around with. What would you want us Listen, to do? Well, I can't do it all today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right, okay. Why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? Well, you go back to work. So I'm AIDS can go back. I'm doing... Oh. I'm doing restless legs. Right, can everybody but the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come to an end of um, episode two of series five of the Ricky Gervais show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Thank you. And Carl Pilkington. All right. I was working on cold sores. Fuck off. I'm doing bunions. So, welcome to episode three of this final Ricky Gervais show series. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Have you heard this uh, thing they're doing? The uh, schools have got together. They're, um, they're tired of obesity being a problem in England. It's a big problem in England. Um, basically, everyone's overweight, particularly kids. There's kids that are like, you know, 10 stone going to infant school and stuff and junior school. It's getting ridiculous. And so now the teachers are allowed to weigh the kids. They're going to weigh the kids, okay? <laughs> yeah, get them in there and go, right, you, right, get on the scale. And then they're going to send a letter to the parents saying, um, please be aware, um, your child is obese. Now, I don't know what good that's going to do because... A teacher will send a letter to a parent, go, uh, Dear Mr and Mrs Barnes, um, we weighed little Johnny today at school, and he's overweight, he's a big fat pig. And they're going to go, Yeah, we know, we have to push him out the door to get him to school, he makes a popping sound. <laughs> we know he's fat, he eats too much. We know he's fat because we have to buy him pairs of trousers every two weeks. Yeah, well, we know he's fat because we're a couple of fat bastards Always. ourselves. I love that when they say about a child of they show you a picture of a kid and his face is nearly closed up. Yeah. It, it's just closed, right? There's no eyes anymore. He's just got little slits for eyes where his cheeks and his forehead are meeting. Yeah. Right? And you just go, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you see the parents, they go, well, yeah, we can't do anything. And you go, no, look at you. Yeah. No, I saw a couple the other day. I saw a dad, giant arse. Yeah. And then I was walking behind them and two kids, exactly the same giant arses. Yeah. Uh, now that, I don't, I can't believe, believe that that's Well, just... they eat the same things. You can't... Yeah. Like a couple of bison it was. Yeah, if they're, if they're, yeah. If the parents are just eating, they can't say to the kids, you've had enough. They're going, right. what, what, fuck, look at you! I saw them in the, in Tesco supermarket. You know, they've got like cafes in there now. Have they? Big fat family in there. The fact that they buying food and they're having a break from buying food to eat food. <laughs> to eat food, yeah. <laughs> Just well, sums it up. It made them a bit donuts. peckish, didn't it? I mean, that, don't forget, that is the only exercise they get, pushing a trolley round. They get home and then they wedge themselves in that three-piece suite and they're watching ITV1 for the rest of the night. Yeah. And, and eating cakes and things, microwavable stuff. Well, they're actually, they're watching uh, X Factor, but they're not, they're only watching X Factor waiting for the adverts for Pringles. Exactly, Domino's yeah. Pizza. <laughs> exactly. That's what they're looking forward but to. They, they could do that. They could make it a bit harder to shop, couldn't they? 
If you walk through the door, it goes ding, 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 and and you go go. And for fat people, the sh the shopping moves around a bit. <laughs> yeah, you know it's what I mean? constantly out, moving away. It's yeah, exactly. You're putting it on a string. Or yeah, something to go. You want the pie, and you, you have to at least get up a bit of a sweat. Well, they're on the conveyor pie. belts, like in a sushi restaurant. It's and they <laughs> exactly, just got to chase yeah. after the oven fried chips. Unbelievable. Or so, is there some kind of cattle grid device that only fat? Is there anything that we could put? Oh, you can only get to you this can only get to the food if you if can you... get through this. Right, yeah. yeah. That's a good point, yeah. So the really fattening stuff is through a thin door. Or just, yeah, or one of those kind of, um, those sort of, uh, tubes that soldiers you see have to crawl through when they're yeah. doing their training. and that's to, to pies, to, right. <laughs> exactly. to the calorific the stuff. section. Yeah, uh, the, the, the shop is full of salads. Yeah. You can go around, you can even eat as you go around yeah, the salads. Yeah, it's like a you forest of salads. Exactly, yeah. you can graze and you can buy. But if you want to get to the pies and cakes and all that, yeah. you've got to get through a little you've tube. Got to crawl through a little tube. Yeah. yeah, it would just be forever going, dude, fat bloke stuck in aisle three. But, They'd have to keep yeah. getting them out. Well, I, I was stuck behind one on the tube. It, it got out of the tube uh, on the escalators. And you know, like on escalators, you're meant to stand to the right so people can get past. Yeah. Was waste of time him standing on the right. Yeah, yeah. Taking up the full thing. <laughs> uh, he had a tracksuit on, like they always do. You know, uh -oh. never seen a track in its life that, <laughs> no. that tracksuit. And uh, <laughs> so I stayed behind him because he had no option. He saw everyone behind me, sort of going, "What's the hold up here?" Like a convoy of people going, "What's at the front? What's happening here?" What's it? And it's him, sort of blocking it. He gets to the bit, you know, where you have to put your ticket in or your oyster card and yeah. swipe it. He had to go through the bit for trolleys. Oh, oh, luggage. Yeah. How embarrassing is Unbelievable. that? Unbelievable. But that's but you when know you know, isn't it? That's when you go, you know what? Exactly. But I don't think there's enough stigma. I think, because, you know, political correctness now and, and you know, and, and the fact that food is so refined, there's no stigma anymore. I laugh about being fat. I should be ashamed. I should walk down the street and go, fatty! That's that's what I want to get me out of there. I, I, I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I go, oh, you fucking fat bastard. Yeah. But no, I think know. I think the same every time I see you. I know, but look how successful I am. But you're right. I've, it's, you know, it's... there should be, you know, people look up to you, Rick. That's I the know. problem. You're a role model. They got pictures of you on their wall. I often get stuff voted in their face. role model for people want to be. Do they, now maybe they don't mean they want to make a successful sitcom and uh, no. be rich and famous. Maybe they mean I want to eat as much as I want and no one say anything about the it. The number of times I've seen you on one of those, the ideal dinner guest. I know. You're not the ideal dinner guest. Well, you, I, Firstly, I, there'd be nothing else to go round for I, anyone else. And I'm always early. Right. So by the time anyone, that, that'd be yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. The, the ideal dinner guest, as long as he comes halfway through the meal. Yeah. So and I think they mean, oh, it'd be funny because he'd be very witty and charming. No, he'd just be stuffing his face for two hours. Wouldn't be talking. I wouldn't be talking. <laughs> if there's food there, I, I, I'll just listen. I can mm. listen. I mean, I can't really hear because when I chow down, some of it gets in my ears. Sure, yeah. I will go deep into a pasta. Yeah, the face is in the bowl. I'm I'm actually deaf and blind for four minutes that I'm eating. <laughs> yeah. It's like when a horse bolts. Yeah. They yeah, can't yeah. see or hear anything. Yeah. They just yeah. bolt. Um, but, you know, th I don't know what we could do, really. I mean, I... I, I mean, I think we should be clear here. We're not... Uh, we're not saying, you know, we don't want to encourage We're not people. saying um, fat people are all right, we're saying they're wrong. Well, yeah, but I, I want to make oh, an no. no, I want to make an important point here, okay. which is that we're not, talk well, we're not talking the about pigs. how... Listen, what? Fat this is important, this is an important point. Okay. There's a lot of young people, you know, and they, they don't eat and stuff because they want to try and look like Victoria Beckham and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about just being, you know, respectable size, no. you know, a little bit curvy or whatever. You don't got to be like a size zero. We're not talking about that debate. Definitely not. We're talking about the crazy obesity that's going on. Five foot two, you're weighing 14 stone. You, Absolutely. That's, it's a time to probably stop going to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah. Which is not a competition, <laughs> incidentally. But, you know... It's because, yeah. like you said, though, you're not allowed to There's call no them fatty anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. When, I, at school, when I was at school, if there was a fat kid, yeah. He did get, you know, sort of being picked on and that isn't good. His nickname but the fact was Paul Pie or Fatty but, or But he'd, be, he'd sort of be chased to be beaten up, so at least he got a run. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, kids aren't allowed to pick on little fat kids. No, I know, I know. So he's not running anywhere, and it gets worse. <laughs> See, that maybe that's, it's, it, is, that, is that a good thing? If you pick on a fat kid and steal his lunch money, is that, being, is that cruel to be kind? Mm. Do you know well, what I mean? Survival of the fittest again, isn't it? But I mean, you know, they, they go, uh, they go, they go. Okay, Jobson, you picked on little fatty again and nicked his lunch money. You go, yeah, I thought he was eating too much, and I'm worried about his heart. They go, oh, well done, Jobson. Yeah. Go and pick up some more fat people, nick all their lunch money. I don't know what the rules are. I mean, as I, I don't say, know. It's all gone crazy. I mean, I think I'm allowed to call people fat because I'm a bit fat. You're reclaiming the word. It's like our uh, black people can say the N-word, I can say the F-word, I can say, mm -hmm. I can say fatty, because I am fat, you know. It is remarkable. I mean, you've seen pictures of Ricky Shorty Carl in his youth. 
I mean, you know, a kind of David Bowie like uh, face. You know, yeah, very it's a different of person. strong. But well, anyone who I, who's ever seen that to me has said I, I don't understand. They're just genuinely baffled. I mean, it is weird. It's really I don't understand, Rick, how you've gone from that. People should look you up on the web, and it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't Jane get annoyed? Doesn't she feel like she's been ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> no. When I was twenty, did not notice. I was twenty, yeah. and then and I stayed like that till I was about twenty nine. And then, then I thought, oh, well, then I started filling out. Then I was sort of like yeah, becoming a normal. I knew you by, when you were about thirty-six, and you were. Yeah. Oh, I was already there. No, I'd done the eating years then, boy. No, I I I went from about. I mean, then those pictures, I was probably like eight and a half stone, too thin. Yeah. And then I was like nine, and then thirty, thirty-one, went to ten stone, and then about a stone a year. I think I was my fattest when, uh, just after. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I'm like 14 stone now. But it's like, it's like, if you look at it on the web or something, compare the two, it's like one of those Weight Watchers before and after, but the wrong way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really strange. <laughs> yeah, so, so I feel that I can have a go at, at fat people. I think I can claim the word I can call fatty. Like, like Steve can have a go at like, you can have a go at bull people, Carl. You can go, oh, look at that round-headed bull twat. You will never see someone as round-headed and bald as you, but, and Steve can go, oh, look, Rick, look at that fucking, Twattish, goggle-eyed freak over there. No, 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 no. How often would that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let's slag Ricky off a bit more, can we? And Fatos. <laughs> also, I've got. A, this is how much I've let myself go. Steve, it's finally happened. I want you to test my trousers there. Feel them. Oh, what is that? That is some pajamas. Kind of are you actually wearing pajamas? You... I'm actually wearing. It you happened come out today. Of the house. That's the first time. Now, was it because of speed? You had to get out of the house because you. No, were late? I tell you why. Right? Okay, the last couple of years. Um, uh, I mean, for the last, I'd say, ten years, I've been wearing comfortable clothes. I never wear a pair of jeans that are too tight. I don't wear shoes that. Are it's just comfort for me. Yeah. I mean, you you see me fidget when I put a suit on for an award ceremony. Yeah. I don't like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I never look good in stuff. You see it on the model in the in the shop window. Yeah. Puts it on you. Oh, well, okay. So that's great. They look like David Beckham. I put it on. I look like a wallet or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just yeah. it it doesn't look good. Um, I've been wearing um, as you know, sweatpants. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. a, a drawstring. Yeah. Okay. I got a pair of um sweatpants recently that are nearly pajamas. They're so. That, that, I mean, uh, what is the distinction at this point? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's quite a thin line. The, 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 so. Today, they're nearly pyjamas. Today, um, they're in the wash. So I thought, hold on though, I might as well just wear my pyjamas. I should point out that it's not a 1950s pair of pyjamas that looks a bit like a suit with a little breast pocket. No. And it's, you, you wouldn't necessarily notice. No, you wouldn't. Until you touch them, you realise it's a kind of lycra. Yeah, they're very sort of nice and thin. They look like a tracksuit bottom, but here's the difference. I've even done away with a drawstring. Look, these are just elasticated. elasticated. This is the day I really gave up. I used to worry about what I looked like, obviously, when there was a, you know, when there was a nice sort of clothes horse to hang nice clothes on, mm. i.e. my body, you know, I, I did squeeze into jeans, I did, you know, I wear, um, I was, I was, um, I was fashionable, but, um. Did you, go, I can't imagine you going in shops though and looking through racks of clothes and, did you do all that stuff? Steve, I look good in anything, mate. That's the, that's the difference. Right. Now, doesn't matter. Armani could dress me. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he's not. I mean, not that he'd want to. I, I can't believe I. I keep getting offered from people like him and designers um, to, to call my agent saying, um, "Does he want us to dress him for the um, the Emmys?" Do they do? Do they do pajamas? Well, exactly. <laughs> One, I think. Why do they wonder? Uh, 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 what is that going to put sales up? Is someone going to be watching that and go, hey, "Yeah, that that bloke looks short and fat and sweaty." Um, get me Armani on the phone. But you know, maybe that's someone from the Emmy committee going, can you phone up Ricky Gervais and just yeah. check that when they say, can we dress him from the Emmys, we mean, can we make sure he's dressed yeah. for the Emmys? Can we tuck him in <laughs> yeah. and leave his slippers at the hotel? <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't do it anyway because I'm mildly embarrassed. I, we went around those sort of luxury lounges where they give you things, they mm. give you these, like, suits, like you know, Armani, Hugo Boss, they're just giving you Hang suits. On, what, what, I haven't heard about this. Oh, yeah. When's this going on? Yeah, when before, like, the Emmys, every, every... What the fuck? I was out there, no one notified me. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get an invite. What do you um, mean I didn't get an invite? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, the first one I went to, I was mildly embarrassed right around. Then I saw, like, Helen Mirren, The Sopranos. Bloody Helen with... Mirren's going round there and I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. 
But she is, she has, she's got more money than me. She don't need to go and get free stuff. She's the queen. She's the richest woman in the world. Fucking hell. Yeah, you've been, you've missed out, Steve. And they they, they measure you and everything. I've ta I've oh, taken this off. This I've, is insane. I've taken one suit. I've taken one suit, and um, I think a jacket. But usually, what I do is I say oh, I have a pair of sunglasses. I'm like out on John at home. I've got a drawer full of the best sunglasses in the world. One-off editions of these beautiful sunglasses where I'm embarrassed not to take something. They're incredible. They just they just give you all these things, you know. I it, feel like um, the kid <laughs> in uh, the Pied Piper. Remember when the Pied Piper, as revenge, he takes all the kids to a sort of yeah. magical land inside a rock where there's just sweets and fun, but the little lame, little lame kid, boy, he, he can't uh, get in there. He's left behind in the rat, formerly rat-infested town. But, but he had the last laugh, didn't he? Because he couldn't go and get locked in the cave. Yeah, but he didn't... They weren't locked. It was a magical land inside the cave. He wanted to be in there. Was it? Yes, or famously. Was it, or was he a paedophile? Yeah, but that's got to be... Uh, <laughs> it's got to be better than being stuck in a town with rats <laughs> and old people. <laughs> At least you get sweets. <laughs> and a puppy. I worried then for a minute. I thought, oh, that's libelous. What? The, the, the Pied, uh, Pied Piper, Piper was a paedophile. Like, so, uh, excuse me, it's the Pied Piper here. Um, we are... Yeah. Uh, we represent the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we represent the Pied Fiddler. The Pied Piper. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the Pied Piper. Pied, 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 Pied. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, um, you know, I used to, uh, I used to care about fashion. Mm. Um, but, uh, I also had little mistakes. If you're right. being creative with clothing, you get, not everything's a winner. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't always look good. Even even when I thought I looked good in everything. So what was your, just quickly, what's what era are we talking? Well, um, uh, obviously student, that's when I sort of did the... And what was your default look? Um, new romantic. Right. I mean, you know, the first thing I did when I got to college, dyed my hair. Blousy shirts. Uh, blousy shirts, but I dyed it black, sometimes military. The military was very big then, so, right. you know, you'd have dyed black hair and a bit of eyeliner, but... You know, maybe look a bit, a bit, um, sort of, um, you know, gorilla. Then, um, um, I got signed uh, when I was in a, a, a pop band, a failed pop band, very quickly. But you know, I bought designer clothes. But then it all went okay. So the poor years, um, from when I was about, I don't know, twenty two to twenty nine, before that, I got a the job. Poor years, starting twenty two, you had the high life. You'd yeah, out by then. Yeah, and uh, so uh, we lived in that awful little place where I, I, I talk about it live, where you know there was no toilet, so often I'd. I'd wee in the sink. Sure. Um, and so, Great uh, days. so I thought, well, I didn't have any money at all. And I used to wear a tracksuit all the time then, because I, be, I used to run around London. I was on the dole. Um, we had 16 quid between us a week to spend, right? So there was a lot of chili con carne being eaten yes. and rice, just filling up on rice. And, and, uh, and I'd run everywhere. And I was like, You'd I, run everywhere. Yeah, I just run. I'd get up and I'd run places. I'd run around the park. I'd run to visit friends who had jobs. I'd run to art galleries and I'd run London. That was that was like my job. But why were you running it? It sounds like it's the life of a smackhead. Why I was were you running everywhere. <laughs> I was super fit in my twenties. I'm not only sort of like thin, but fit as well. I'd run at least five to ten miles a day and work out i do i did karate twice a week i'd so i just i mean honestly Every, anything but a job anything but a job yeah because i was trying to be a pop star and right. i told myself no i'm an artist yeah, i can't yeah. get, possibly get a job it's bohemian i just eat rice yeah. well and i was fine it was absolutely fine never but i never thought oh this is really annoying i've got to get a job i thought you know, I haven't got a job. I'm doing this. I'm doing a banner. You were and signing it, on, were you? Getting yeah. Gold uh, well, I, I couldn't. I couldn't because um, I hadn't had a job before that. So I think we got our rent paid, and then we'd split Jane's money that she earned. We got our rent paid, and you know, we were left with. As, as I say, I remember it being. It was sixteen quid a week, and it was it was the early eighties, isn't it? Mid eighties. So um, I didn't get new clothes. So I had some, you know, old ones, and you know, to go to jumble sales. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I remember once. We uh, were getting new curtains, and uh, the old ones that were in this flat were like sort of a chintzy, sort of goldish sort of lie with a thread in them, with sort of leafy pattern, uh, very sort of thick. What kind of late 70s style? Yeah, exactly. And Jane was going to take the old ones down. I went, don't throw them away. I'll make a suit out of those. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, so Jane just sort of nodded and went, okay, and she went to work. Yeah. So I thought, wow, okay. Let's have a go. I'll I've never, show her. I've never made a suit before, but how hard can it be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I used to, you know. That would be my first thought. Um, I used to make everything. I used to make, uh, I remember uh, <laughs> I made shelves once. I found three bits of wood in a skip, okay, and I sort of put two um, vertically and put one across the top, right, so it was like, you know, a goal post, right? I thought a shelf. Right. 
um, I didn't put a nail in each side. It sort of wobbled. I put it against the wall and it wouldn't stand up. It sort of like <clears throat> leaned like I made a parallelogram. So what I did, I put another nail in it and I tried a bit of string to it and pulled the string tight. I pulled it across the room and put another nail in the windowsill. And so now there's this shelf that wants to fall over but can't because it's tied to another wall. Um, so that was... Uh... You, so you spent most of this, the 80s <laughs> running around London <laughs> And collecting debris and making your home out of it. You sound like a womble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was in shape like one until I was 32. And you, and this is kind of, uh, you were making everything except a living. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. right. So, so I thought, right, how do I make a suit? I thought, well, I used to go to the library and learn, I don't know, I, I can make a suit. You know, mm. I don't, don't want to do it like other people, I do it differently. Do it so, so my method for making this made-to-measure suit um, was I got one of the sets of curtains and laid them on the floor. Right. I laid down on the curtain and drew round my legs. Right. Okay. Hang on. So you were making the trousers first? Yeah. So I thought, hold on, that's just one side of the trouser. So I laid down another curtain and drew round my legs again. And I thought, right, I cut those out. So now I've cut out two leg shaped curtain yeah. pieces, right? I put them together, sewed them up. Of course, it was nowhere big enough. Of course Because not. I'd left no room, right? Yeah. So I tried to squeeze into them. I mean, they look like jodhpurs. They look like tights, yeah. okay? So I thought, oh, this is really hard, right? I pulled them off again, right? I thought, how am I going to make the jacket? I didn't. I just used one of the curtains as a cape. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I mean, I look like a gay Hamlet. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? So what I did was... Uh, did you squeeze into the trousers? You wore the trousers? I, I sort of squeezed them. I couldn't wear them, though. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. So what I did was, um, I rolled it up and shoved it under the chair. You, sh what, you rolled up what? Sorry. I so the suit I made. Jane came in about a few days later. She went, what's that? I said, that's where I had to go at the suit. And she pulled it out and, you know, died laughing. The idea that this, that this, this man sat down and drew round his legs but to make some trousers. But you, well, firstly, why did you not just throw it away? Why did you stash it under the... I don't know, because I thought... And you were watching TV on the sofa and she was a foot higher than you. <laughs> and she thought, what's going on here? And there was a suit stuffed. I mean, why not just throw it away? I don't understand. I don't know. That's what you do, isn't it? You think, oh... Maybe what I... I, again, we were talking before about the fact that you used to be very thin uh, and now you're very fat. Mm. And they seems like two different people. Well, not very fat. Oh. Well, uh, most people would say you are. Mm. But, um, but Wearing black. It, oh. it seems as though you were also an idiot when you were younger. I mean, like, because you're a smart man now. I don't, well, I know. I why just, would it not occur to you that you couldn't make your own suit? Because I've always thought I can do anything. I've always thought, well, I can make a suit. Of course I can make a suit. I'll be brilliant at that. I'll yeah. make a suit. And it, it took me, it took me getting fat to realise the world doesn't lay down to you. Yeah. I, I thought, well, I'll never be fat. I will never be fat. Look yeah. at me. Look at me, you know. So I suppose and even that... as you were getting fatter, that must be the mirror. <laughs> no. Jane, so... problem with the mirror. No, at least I can put eyes on myself as soon as I started getting fat. I started saying I was fat before I was fat. Yeah. Because when you've been really thin, you know, yeah. um, I, I, I mean, I couldn't get anywhere near those curtains now. No, oh, I couldn't. I, they, they wouldn't go past my ankle now. You kept them. <laughs> yeah, they're under the chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you uh, and you still, of course, uh, if someone comes to the door and you can't be bothered to reach for your pajamas, maybe just wrap the curtain round you. I just pop the curtain yeah. on me. Yeah, I could probably make a pair of pants out of them. I mean, soon I will be in nappies, which will be easy to make. Yeah. So, but when I'm older, and Jane goes just off to work. Where are those pillowcases? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I need changing. Food's too nice, though, isn't it? That's that's where the where the problem is. Well, yeah, some food. Uh, well, no, a lot, a lot of food. More food's nice now. I, I find that I eat because I go, that's nice, rather than I'm hungry. Oh that yeah, seems to be the I stopped eating when I was hungry. Um, when I was about twenty nine. Yeah. I used to. I, oh, I've got to eat now. I've got other stuff to do. We got to eat. Yeah, shove it in, right? And then uh, that I've, I've never, I've never only ate because I was hungry for uh, many, many years. But, but it's not just that either, is it? Like we've got mates who've like. I had a kid now, and that's eating stuff. That seriously, I'm not. I'm not joking. That is having stuff that I've never had, and it hasn't even got teeth yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what sort of things are you talking about? Mango. I only had that. <laughs> I, had, I had mango about a year and a half ago, and it's all right. I mean, it's not one of my favourite. Is it fruit? Yeah. But there's so much other fruit that's that's better. Go on. Yeah, I think. What's better than the mango? 
The banana springs to mind, the strawberry. Just, I, I like, I like the ones that you can just go, I'm nipping out, what can I take with me? I'll have an apple. Well, the banana's the best, because it's got its own that's, little carry case. Yeah, yeah that's alright, but they're saying that, you see, this is why we've got more fat people. In supermarkets now, you can buy cut-up apple in a bag. Really? That's, that is pretty that's lazy, lazy, isn't it? That, that is, is lazy. lazy. Well, again, I've got to confess that I have my portions of fruit, first thing in the morning, um, liquidised. Yeah. I have a smoothie, I put all the fruit in there, I drink it. I'm not chewing. If you want me to eat fruit, I'm not chewing it. At Steve the end of the day, food's nice. Yeah. There's loads of it. Mm. Well. No, there is. In the Western world there is, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. But in the Western there's world, not. Yeah, okay. but this is the whole point, isn't it, about the, the gluttonous West, is that we are indulging ourselves. Yeah. If we yeah. were scrabbling around starving in like a third world country, we wouldn't be in that situation. Well, there's but all we're the- drinking the fizzy lemonades exactly, and the Exactly, there's loads of it. And now, every time I buy something, it's a two for one. So you end up buying more than you need, and then Suzanne's always saying, eat this ham, will you? It's going off. <laughs> I don't even want it. <laughs> Why is she buying so much ham? Because it's two for one offer. We don't need two lots, but the person at the till goes, you know, this is two for one, you go and nip back and get one. And I know you what get you mean, it, though. I mean, it, it, it yeah, they never do half price, they do two, two for, for one. one. Exactly. They did that with a meal once. We were in LA, and we had a meal, and they said, uh, you know, it's happy hour, it's two for one. So I went, well, can we just have one each, and uh, we've got to give it to you, and they brought two meals for everyone. Yeah. It was ridiculous. That's mad. Yeah. I am. Of course but, you. I'll tell you another problem that I've worked out. Yeah, it might, might make a slight difference on fat people. Don't put a light in a fridge. Because that's just, that's just that night when they get peckish, <laughs> they can see everything that's in there. Don't put the light there. You don't need a light in a fridge. There's no lights in other cupboards. Yet where there's food, it's like fat is getting up at four in the morning. What can it have? What's that at the back? Get rid of the light, they'd eat less. That might, there might be some logic in there. That's interesting. Well, what's it there for? Tell me what that light is there for. They say, turn off your standby light, yet you've got a light in your fridge. Well, no, it is Showing you where tomatoes is. You know, but it's turned chocolate. off when you shut the, you don't, the light's not on when the door's not open. Yes, but a fat person who's always got the fridge door open. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of. The ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, they're lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised if there was something- It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now, because we have to, we live no, in a world don't. now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or- Well no, well no, look at AIDS. Well, when I was a kid, I'd no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or a What do you mean it's not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's... AIDS hasn't been, like, living under the soil for millions of years, but I wait till the 1980s and I come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in, not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms. There's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of because, the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s, we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's all, <laughs> it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go. It's all right. It's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with Einstein? In, one, PR of, people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You got Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. And that's, <laughs> and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now. 
because everything that's needed, remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, certainly, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can they do? Oh, shit, Necessity like is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little, where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About yeah. a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. Right. So I've just been beaten to the post. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand. Now, for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? <laughs> so I love it. So the frisbee, rubbish, anything too clever, well, it wasn't an invention, it was an alien. <laughs> So there's nothing between frisbee and computer chip? <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip? Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, it, yeah. So we, you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> great. Because I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do, I don't know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you go, what, you, you don't... Well, that's what genius is, though, but isn't oh, it? There's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been... Yeah. Uh, a, a spaceship, uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And there's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger? They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find the sand. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that uh, what am I talking about? Sand <laughs> makes computer chips. <laughs> that silicon can have information uh, 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 put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, that, yeah, but that's nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. He comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, our that, genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. <laughs> Because that's a lot different. <laughs> I told you, didn't I, about me, my dad's mate who had a, who had a monkey and he had to thump it. What? what one, well, there's two things there. One, why did he have a monkey? Two, what sort of discipline is thumping a monkey? What was the monkey doing? He kept, he was annoying his wife a lot and sort of, you know, pinching her ass and stuff like that. Right, right, no, no, that's wait, not we, true. We've it's never heard this before. How have we had all these years no, of monkeys sure we've never heard this ages before? Ago. Your dad had a mate who had a monkey? Yeah, I'm sure I told you. That, well, why did he have a monkey? Just for a laugh? Well, it was back in the day when you, people did. They all had, like, <laughs> odd, in, sort of, pecs when? Now, didn't they? In, like... About 68. Oh, like 68. When, oh, when everyone had a monkey. We had to thump it. Now, the weird thing is... Now, that's weird enough. Is this the... This is all the story. This is the entire story no. you've got. All the information you've got is he had a monkey and he had to thump it. Yeah, my dad told me about it. When he found out that I, I was into monkeys, he said, Oh, Benny thumped one. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Benny Thumbtrack! Oh, my son's into natural history, particularly, uh, Simeon Fry. Um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Carl. Sit down. What is it, Peter? Um, Benny thumped one. But, Brilliant. But, but what was interesting is the way that people are thumping other people all the time. No one bats an eyelid. Thump a monkey. People go, you thumped a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, they do! They do yeah. go, you thumped a monkey. So that's what's weird, isn't it? But this chimp doesn't want to be caged and kept in a fucking council house in Manchester. No, it was, it was quite happy. And if it, it wants to live happy. like a human, I mean, in the 70s, you know, there were all, all the teabag adverts and all that, and they were loving that. No, they and weren't people loving interfere. it. People go, oh, that's unfair. Now they, they're in like a cage in a zoo. You go, they, it was better when I was pushing a piano up a stair. They weren't really, they weren't really... They weren't actual delivery, man. They weren't really sitting down and having a cup of tea. Well, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> A week in the life of the monkey delivery oh, men. I love that. Chimps in a zoo now going, fucking okay, we at least we, were, at least we were free. Remember yeah. when we used to drive a van? And, we're on, and we're on 58 quid a week. Yeah. They're not meant to be kept in a house in Manchester. Cruel to keep a person in a house in Manchester, so it's fucking cruel to keep a monkey. <laughs> what do you think of that, Carl? 
if you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal, what would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh, Cockroach. No, I'd have, uh, I'd have like, uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. I'd have, uh, head of an owl. Right. The head of an owl? Yeah, why, 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 come on, why, what does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So, okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll, mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right? Okay. With the cat and the dog and all that. Mm. Yeah. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have, uh, I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now, you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with the head of an owl. Slithering along. How yeah. is that going to be friendly? They'll be, they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the slug. No, because the head's that nice that they'll, they'll forgo the, uh, the sludge. But hold on though, but wait a minute, so... This got, it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0.1 miles an hour, with a going, Ooh. right, you come over, you kick the head off. How is this No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah, of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, a ball. This isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's, oh, Why has it got the slug? Why because is that so attractive? what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, an armadillo, they're good when they're on the feet. Flip them, they get stuck. Like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. So if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can Why well, have a limpet stuff. then? But, but, but it oh. can't get any- how- it can barely move, it can just hardly go and, get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. What just this, can't get But anywhere. how can it escape from danger? It's gonna move it's rubbish. very slowly. No, what, that's the worst animal. It'll lock itself animal. in, it'll lock itself in. Yeah, and then I'll just scoop it up on the you sand. You can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I'll give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why is it got peacock heard. feathers? I guess it's just it's, it's just the so worst animal you I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does. Well, that's the least feathers. threatening thing. Peacock feathers. It's like Danny Larue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be harming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Mm. Uh, the lettuce. They eat lettuce. Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling him what he's gonna eat now, the owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yeah, they eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that, and then it eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, it was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't even double take, you'd just be like, Oh, there's the uh the owl head peacock feathered thing. I don't know why he's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because his head's coming out like that. So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even <laughs> expanding no, it's, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, no, it's, it's mainly problem. made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> oh God! Oh fuck it out! What a useless animal that is. Carl, I mean. But nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Oh, now and again, yeah. you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and. Oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was. I think that's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense, nonsense. absolute well, nonsense. What are you saying? Absolute that? nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people, once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo, what's it doing? Can't fly, its wings are useless. Eat it, tastes horrible, kill it. <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I, th I think they over farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct. Because they did eat it. 
No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You know, it's half again. eaten. All conjecture. No, but they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, it's not for me, though. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea, you don't you're just making this. it up. What's this based on? I've the just... people, and also, why would that kid it out? Because I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd care, take more care. But what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once again, no got use... his information from a glacier mint advert. No, but it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news, sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's going to make them stronger. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do for your doctor? And I came to him and went, Carl, listen. I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't. I, the penis. I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm gonna get rid of. I want. I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's. You know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that. Everyone knows that. It's just the way they are. <laughs> I mean, if we're all being honest. They're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them. They're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> what? It's not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> even he had a leaf on. <laughs> no, but listen, why? So, are you thinking fundamentally, then, that aesthetically, the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way, because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than, uh... Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? With, with modern technology... You need, you know, the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside, because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise the Satoli cells die, which sort of feed to semen and all that, so... They, they, you know, to, to be functioning and sort of, like, fertile, they have to be outside, which is annoying, because I'd put a little rib cage around them. Like that, I'd, I'd pop a rib cage round those, protect them, wear a cricket box, have that built in, so you cannot get a kick in, a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick. But it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away. Right. So yeah. that they were just, then you dropped them, it's like, right, we need to cool them down, be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, running it on, and the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they the... could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. Yeah. Them down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Go okay, on. Well, you say easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just uh... how do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but testosterone, isn't it? <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> Toblerone. I want. To, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits, mm. like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Suppose I came to you and said, uh, "Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them, I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah, the ass, I don't like it around the back. I can't see what's going on." Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my ass where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been around, haven't they? So been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We we're just chatting about um, tic tacs. <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got... this year? No, Just no, recently. years ago. Oh, years, ago like, years ago, when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met one of his mates. Is he nicking from the sweet shop? No, no. No, that's no he knew some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he thief. must have he got about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. Now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? In how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. 
and then uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you're sick of lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. What just, just sorry. Whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents about. <laughs> they were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've great already run out of sorry, responses. Yeah. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no, opinion that. Opinion I mean, I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand looked like, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, me. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. <laughs> Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 credits, if that'll do, yeah? <laughs> yeah, bring him out. Come on, under cupboard. He's got through 12 credits. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No, because we fucking don't. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Because we wrote for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load. I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, no we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? That's it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, condensity. Yeah, so I got rid of them <laughs> like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shut of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one. Ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding dong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like that kind of thing. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be back amazing. Up, tinging it. Sheila's up. getting married. I'll get confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. No, it's, it's a, a really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of That's a incredible. hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when yeah. when I your mum uh, regravelled the drive, <laughs> yes, yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> the tic -tac. What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident! Let's never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. No, it's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about selling this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Um. Well, I went for a what's her name, Steve. You don't know. I, I've, I've had uh, problems with my legs. Oh. oh. Christ almighty. He's the same. What are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk contract. like you're a seven year old. Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week. He goes, no, his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. Don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital. And they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. He's going, oh, uh, Christ mm. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard. And I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, 33, sorry to start off with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? <laughs> well, I just have, I sort of, uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm Well, you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> kissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 years then, okay, good, Yeah, but right. I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I, and that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. <laughs> it all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked me height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, A, like it's a classic story that everyone should know, yeah, everyone and knows, also like... the phrase kicking my own height. Yeah, no, explain so... what you mean. Just kicked me out when I was when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands. You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I if kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go. I kick me out. So you were so you're four and a half foot, and you've put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. 
Right, OK. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go, get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so why, why did he you fall over? They tickets, the neighbours were cracking <laughs> up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, 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 you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have kicked the eye. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down in <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like, what the fuck did that look like? He's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, no. You, you, you stay there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you didn't way. think, well, I'm loving this, this is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up, I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like I hit the salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back, yeah. and, uh and I did some damage, I think. Yeah, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done. Because when you get older, I mean, it was a kidney stone thing. Once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> Well, you just... think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then. I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You know, if there's anyone listening you always who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what, though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, <laughs> put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella to, uh, like, a professional uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's, uh... He sort of said uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of like podcasts? I said, "Am I in charge of my brain, or is my brain in charge of me?" Yes, yeah, remember what I said? It's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah. Well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber, professional leg rubber, yeah. right? And he is professional. Yeah. Right. Remember, so leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right or back, back rubbing as well? He does it all. Right. 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 So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well. And your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was stop this doing another that. laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that. On oh, the... okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels. Halfway through, he's pants, yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through, he's saying, "You've got twenty p. I've been the dryer." <laughs> okay. So I'm lying there, and he lifts the leg up, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, that hurts a lot." Mm. So he said, "Oh yeah, short nerves." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You, you know, you're you're outside of the body." Is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body's yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> so he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he's going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid this as well. Mm -hmm. Put me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I've, I've quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that, so, you yeah. know, that, that's... That he probably, went, oh, shut no, the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> he probably said that, he said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot of him. tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional a, rubber? He's a, or... a, a doctor, he's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. So because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I told you, right? So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's, who's gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them rather than them being in charge of the So brain. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you. <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like 
15 no, he saw right minutes. fucking soccer coming. <laughs> no, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason... Uh, well, I am doing I've got locked into it. I've got to go at least another three times. Why? And try to get out mean? of it. I don't know. I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? That would be brilliant. I will kind of... Yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is, blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said, the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus. Right? He said, uh, so what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh Close your eyes and see <laughs> Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? <laughs> okay. He said, I'm just thinking about nothing else. I said, He's a witch. <laughs> Did, did he say to put a toad under the bed? No, he just said focus on the toe and uh, mm. see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie Visualize down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it sort of thing. So I was lying there and it just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was... You even were, though you were the thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> He found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. You were still oh, using your face even though you What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm going to die. I am going to die. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, what were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh um, You can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, you... No, no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember them. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Because they, oh, they, God. they, they, they oh, pinpoint they things. They all the tic tacs they've ever Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember when Carl was, uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> uh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No! Because you're not doing anything, <laughs> are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, I, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, remember no, that. No, 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 you, no, you weren't there. there. Were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one you, of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking Tic Tacs? No, I we was... lost our truck for you. Yeah. When I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But more, I don't know. So why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they were glued? Wait, wait, but why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, <laughs> I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just <laughs> you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It, <laughs> And you could sense them looking at I didn't know they were there. <laughs> so, Remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am and yeah. I couldn't concentrate? <laughs> Think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh my god, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I what, went in London, wandering. you got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went wandering and then, uh, you know... It's when like... he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place and he didn't know where he was. He tried How can to you ever really get lost in London, though? I'm just... Um, well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? 
<laughs> yeah, they do appreciate that, do they? But um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said okay. that's much better. Yeah, it was a cold day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Go on, uh, go on. Oh, uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. OK, And the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Oh, shit, man, that is only gone and written it down. <laughs> The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, my mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we get uh, we get a clue she there. She thinks I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here, Yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it but scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it, does it bores scare her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. It's been the horses regular for ages. <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> oh god. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny, you've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. Who? So, there's no nowhere there. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's the, where's the, where's the sofa? At home? Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. He does. The no, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything, so I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself. No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You... When the adverts are on, you look up, and if Suzanne sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look, no, 
Yeah, but you were used to it. That's that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. I'm there further away. There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember why your wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, you know, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. <laughs> Stephen Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward, she's sat next to me. If, if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now, she's getting the sound from me still because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> So that's how you managed to keep this relationship alive. You are yeah, just, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on on the estate who who did use. Have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. Let me tell you ages ago. It's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's push bike, pedal bike. Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> Cycle about. Yeah, she was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway, <laughs> oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always going quick saving Nick biscuits, and if anyone went up to her to say stop Nick and the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag, and she'd look in it, but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> What, what? This so she's insane. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it used to scare me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. It's really, really so, weird. So hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror, because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No, that's <laughs> weird. No, that would Why? be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. <laughs> oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, yeah, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are gives sort you of... confidence? Well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your viewing uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew, grew a beard through the week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it, or they try and destroy it? Uh, do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. If you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with that because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Shinder's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving. Couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, we talked about that. What? About things like that in in art as well. Do you think that, that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, like, like films do, things like the Holocaust, and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies? Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did you pick? I, th I don't. Th I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Oh God! <laughs> But why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he'd said the names, Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it that you've said- because then I'd ask more, I'd ask more then. If, if he said Alison, I'd go, well, what was it with Alison? That, what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, what was going on there? Oh, That's because geez. you're an idiot. Right.
Christmas Carol. Christmas. That's because you've just watched a Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah? Brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One extraordinary on. point. Go on, there's gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something here. He's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then. What's your no. take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission, Impossible <laughs> Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> These are your, these are the, what you consider the great works no, of film I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed, enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen, yet you always say, oh, have you seen so-and-so? Well, Mission it. Impossible 1. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. Which is another important value of art, of course. People's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> you whistle. Oh. Yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, uh, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? So right. freedom. Expand on this point, if you would. Well, that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's mm -hmm. great, that. For art is freedom. Yeah. I love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on some of there. Would you would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what you meant. I know you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Got just take us off. through a to See, the day. Uh, when would the whistling begin? So sorry, uh, uh, this was that you spent you spent <clears throat> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking, I'm in my own place now, I'm gonna annoy them. Well, it was mainly, it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble. Mm. And they were taking ages to have their go, and, um, uh, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> um, it's not you got boiler problems down you got it, well. work, it works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> And what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed. She was like, oh, you can whistle, can't you? I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you get? I was just doing all different levels. So it, this sounds like a scene from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're good whistling, aren't you? Oh, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home. It when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up here. You, whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a Well, whistle. the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Which there's, there's, we... there, there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's not. I don't know. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> <laughs> what, because he couldn't whistle? That was it, it was like... Well, yeah, he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle, well, yeah. can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth? Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute? Or a recorder? Not London's burning again. <laughs> Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off! <laughs> he didn't really think of this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family were bankrupt. <laughs> With no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why are you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. I can't really whistle very well. No. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? About two hours. Two Fuck hours? Put me word down. And and then... this, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it, can we hear it? 
So you were wishing, is... wishing after you had your go as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. <laughs> that is Carl's self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do all right. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can oh, come up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't- no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree, cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth ten, Matt. It's not bad, is it? Now I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you- I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out. And then, yeah, when it wasn't my go, just- <laughs> Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between Beethoven and... <laughs> squirm. <laughs> there's a cue in that. <laughs> Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible, you did exactly what you've always wanted, you became the person you wanted to be, you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference, so it was your life. Okay? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. Am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah, No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got yeah. to pre-program your life, that's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them, you are the, you're the, it's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. Bit dangerous. Sorry? Bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, the things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't, you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. Well, you just have munchies every day and... Well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you, if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. Right. Yeah, you're meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that, 
Well, that's a bit suspicious, of, though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You can do anything you like. But I like the fact now you've been questioning, you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? Now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example... You wake up, there's the munch, it's a sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, can no, have some but, munches for breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't, you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know okay. the currency well enough yet, I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane... The scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? And looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay. Well, right. Can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea, okay? You can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to but know I'm doing it. No, you, you won't know. Would. But you I want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got the sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, d I, d I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think you need you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British Gas round, you go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The so he's is like to have a mental life, so he's boiler's fixed. No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong you in your dream, but, but it you gets fixed. But you yes. don't even need a boiler. You could be the perfect temperature but this all isn't the time. anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you won't life. realize. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got no, a problem no. hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just say, well, ask No, one, let, let him me, speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole, is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem hole in your head. Right. Yeah. So you stuff in a problem Problems. into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. Right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but that's not true, is The it? problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut up, Ricky! Let uh, him explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say his problems... Uh, and not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> right, but why- Shut what, up! Let what, him speak! He's what, just okay. expanding on his idea. Why but do what you is keep his drudging? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little skittles? Lots of problems. You, you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a bo it's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball. No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask, I want to clarify this. The problem ball exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into the problem, into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> 
Or is it always just... Can ladies have prob a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls is my question to you. But and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could have you could you have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it, if you, okay, no, listen, no, so, suppose I came to you and said, listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might yeah. have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I've, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it, and I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole, and he, and 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 hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first? Is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right. He'd say, right. Take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right? he, I want to see your problem hole uh, clearly. But he would fish. He would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem hole. He ball, would, wouldn't he? Well, like well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay. So. So, Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday, when I what was on holiday. What do you mean? Holiday. You don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like you, the holiday, I've just so been you enjoy coming off holiday. What? No, I want to hear it. You, you enjoy the holiday, you didn't when, enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is the stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much to give you because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed... You can only so get packed so much... Enjoy if you're enjoying all... all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you... but you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. And then it's, it's yeah, ruined. What's, I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah. And, and, then it, you... and the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant now Yeah, but you haven't missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's what's not like problem? you didn't... I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, the, th the problem was, cool. I was enjoying it, but I thought, this is, this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. Now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day night when I knew that it's gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So, so that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausiness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you. Go on. Auntie Nora, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now, she, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? I don't know. Just want the same. She was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that oh, yeah. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you never Someone says, one? well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? 
Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl. Well, because because aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, and that that shows not you only that, what is that, that on Monday, yeah. what you're going to do on Thursday as well. Make, that, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life now. <laughs> exactly. To go, right, oh, fucking well, hell. Why else you say but then he's phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls. Unbelievable. Well, it's just just a read a journal. No, the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all? But you're an well, idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing, I did the boxing, I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm. Lazy, I think that's what but, but, but that's what I'm saying though, I soon get bored. And that's, it's like how you enjoy, you know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than... Well that doesn't make sense, that goes totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's surely so, your favourite. No, so hold on, one. so if you were to have one munchie, right, I'll go ahead as a munchie mate. You no. go, I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one and I'm, I'm going to get a taste for them and I, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? Oh, I'll keep them, though. Forget it. Well, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I prefer I prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you enjoy, <laughs> okay, the, la no, why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the one. first curry, but not the second curry. You know curry. it's the last one. Because it's, no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about 12 in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <best>. <laughs> you shove the first four in! Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm yeah. eating. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, last what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. You well, I don't know. <laughs> well, as often as I think, I don't know. So, tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after, a, sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. You, you like got the, the first end. one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um. Again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You well, have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because. It, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for summer does feel better because you've got a, you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus no, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With, with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is, what what's the like, Yeah, well I'm actually I'm using, named what Revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the Revel you like is raisins? There. Go on. Well, well maybe if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, Do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? Uh, when I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? So I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most of the oh, kids were. Oh God, it's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> Yes, because they look at it and they go, can you fix it for me to go into space? No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah, so that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in, because whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? 
There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One thing. Jesus just Christ. one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. <laughs> there, is no, there is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. No, that doesn't work either, because, like, then... Why I not, told, Brett? Because I told, okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on holiday recently, yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. Um. I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh yeah. Which is always sort tell, of telltale sign. It's it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And um, the uh, red jeans are twice as much so. That's okay. I've got money. Yeah. It's sort of it's either that colour or yellow. But yeah. you can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think yeah he's got a few. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir, but they're no one... the most expensive options. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, can I just see your your bank account first? There it is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, all right, sir. Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. So uh, he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. No, oh, he had a shirt and his his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and he okay. just went over. What? Well, I don't the I don't know. Why did you notice his, what um, kind of the crotch area was? What? Why did you notice what Wait, you were looking the, very much at the arse? I, I can see why you could see if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why could you see you why. what colour the you. fabric around his this testicles were? You saw a good-looking old man sat at the bar. You went out and bought him a drink. But yeah, you, oh, so, you I was noticed for the barbecue to open. Right. right. Okay. And you I got noticed there the man. So you <laughs> noticed the man's trousers. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I don't like late nights on holiday. Okay. Jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, you're so noticing I have to wait people, for 40 you're minutes. noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but. Get your saying, story straight. What I'm saying to you is, the reason right. I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. He what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. is, is reference points. I had no idea and what, what was he was going talking on about. When you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it above the waist? Keep it. Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it erect. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made Carl laugh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, here we go. This week I've chosen My Left Foot. Right. Okay. Now, My Left Foot is a film about a bloke called Daniel Day-Lewis, who's all mental, except for um, his left foot, right? But, and he has arguments. I can't remember, he has arguments with his dad, so I wasn't watching it properly. But he, even though... He's mental apart from the foot. He does stuff with the foot that we could, we not, you know, could do all over. And he uses that to his best. I think he might write a book or something of paint. And the moral of this story is, you know, even if you're, you've only got a foot that works, you can still win prizes because it won the Oscar. Okay. Um, am I right in saying that you're bringing a book out of these collected? 
Maybe for the Christmas market. I think I might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see there's obvious, great, obvious great market films there. reviewed, sort of, in what with, with, it's a different, it's a different outlook on it. Mm. And mm. a different approach. I'm just, yeah. I don't just sort of like stray. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an approach that doesn't really use grammar. <laughs> which, uh, which you don't see that often <laughs> in film reviews. Um, <laughs> but no, once again, what would you give it out of ten? Uh, I just, uh, I didn't really concentrate, I can't remember a lot okay. about it. But it won a, an Oscar, so, I think it won an Oscar or summer, so nine. Okay. Do you know, that was my left foot, which is probably available on sell through video, maybe in a bargain uh, bin. Five ninety nine, probably on TV this Christmas. That's to be confirmed. Me and Carl went out uh, for a beer, and it was uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, and we, start, we started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He. Uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them, he never answered me, he was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him, and I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, because imagine it's if, not true. imagine if he, it, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that, he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said, tell so, you why, though. I said, so Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. But well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army... He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um, <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the bacon. skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Because ah, that's all right. Everyone... So he's guarded by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard... The skull... There was, there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they um, stuck some bacon on his head. And As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said, every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. A worm, even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, they, <laughs> lo they, oh, they love bacon. Last week, remember last week when I said about the little fellow with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Vietnamese, there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the he body, they strapped bacon to his head. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. This doctor! And did that work? I think so, they had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what, the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows the story and um, right. just... It was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. GI so, GI bacon. So this is why <laughs> I I went. And so what the worm the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon. Get to the bacon. Right. 
Um, <laughs> That's great. So I this is it. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Cause, right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you do, you do daft things like that as a kid. Right. He's the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. Bless him. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah, always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your... Uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, we'll, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really, so... Um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard, it'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and stuff mm. like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, what's that saying, like a pig in... You know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig and shit. <laughs> right. Is that the same? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like... he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions, because exactly. he's the producer. So technically, oh. that twat's in charge, go yep. on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, and chocolate biscuits, and, uh, you know, penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. So, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. It's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <gasps> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it, it, what did he just sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter? So, so I saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So, well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like, my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back, right? Straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it, right straight away, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? What, so I what was down your shirt? So I, I was like, oh, God, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back going, I, She's going, oh God, you know, he's, he's choking again, because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat. But, but I mean, even Ricky knows, I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, a quick drink, drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, so anyway, she's going, oh God, what's he picked up on it now? Drop it! Drop it! So, hit, his, hit his nose with a stick! So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone his to His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in the lounge, and I, I was in the kitchen, and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like, falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me, saying that's what you get for being greedy. He didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So he's there like that, and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What the whole like, popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there was no, nothing it, there. No, I think just it's a little there. bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it, so it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat, and it, it sort of it it sort of spasms, and that's the that's the fear. You just got to calm it down and relax. So, so in time, I would have known. Yeah, anyway. you don't. Um, well, no, yeah. you might have. So that's oh, so so so, so that's hang on. One. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a uh, special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. Oh, I did, that I'll nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> yeah. I went. I went to school the next three days after that, 
I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days turned over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I did. After three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did a quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. Mm. Right, next that one. That's Popsicle. That's Popsicle Hell, we we'll call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people. Yeah, Vital information. Giving a service. Yep. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um... So anyway, imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's riding. <laughs> I, know, I can't. Oh, so <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. So oh, anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty. So right. I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, "Why didn't you watch the Pink Panther?" And then, and then right, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 four I was up, up and about. And this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. So, you know, <laughs> people want the papers and stuff. So, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out. And tried to open the door, and it was locked. I thought, oh, God, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. So I thought, oh God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I try to get out the window, and I, I, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah. Like the yeah, little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a... He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just hold on for your dear life, and I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at that point where... You've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't listen around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so... And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! Pink Panther. Hurry up! Pink Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. So that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he, uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm going to die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is, which is tall and that's big. And, I, you know, I pride myself on it in a way. You know, I've worked hard. I've not smoked. I ate well, you know. Yeah. It's an accomplishment, but obviously I didn't have much involvement in it. I just and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you you can't get stuff. You can't get clothes. You can't get shoes. You know? Yeah. Size so size fourteen feet. Yeah, that's. But it is genuine, and I don't know. I mean, it costs a lot to buy a pair of size fourteen shoes, and it, so I don't. I mean, if you're poor, if you were genuinely poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall because the clothing costs more. Everything costs. I've more. I've seen this in comics that you'd you'd actually go to school in a barrel, wearing a barrel with right. just braces. It'd yeah. just be a barrel, and you'd have sort of. 
flip flops, uh, and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They all had a mule, didn't they? The but poor people, people always think like it, that they like you'll be in a pub or something, and people. I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, hey, you are you, you're a lanky. Rah. It's just like because it's like they. But think, that really annoys you, doesn't it? But it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like it's well, exactly, but that they don't think that this this is not a disadvantage. This is not a disability, is it? You're you're taller than most people. It might it get a disability. To, if no, no, no. If you were if you were eight foot three, it'd be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know, but disabilitating. You, what disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> But no, the point is, it's a disabilitating because when you go on public transport, like if you're on a coach, uh, instance, yeah, you, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat on the driver's lap, either, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end, yeah, you know where which is kind of which sits into the aisle, yeah. That's the only place I can Why sit. Why don't you start, and stand up? Some sort of stand kids up at the back, waving at drivers. You could drive it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. Watch it. Yeah. Uh, were, went... were you a tall baby? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. and Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. No, well, are I, they? At what point did did you suddenly like Jesus? Nothing fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. Up. How tall were you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall were you at twelve? Six foot. Six. What are you really? I don't know, do I? How do I remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and really, lanky? They didn't. They was, it wasn't didn't they? So much. It was, no. You went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before, and he went, let's go to this bowl. We went to a bowling alley, right? And um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now, they're they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're um, multicoloured, sort of red and green. Like, they look pretty weird. And... Uh, and the woman said to me, oh, what size are you? I said, oh, eight. She went, yeah. She went, what size are you? Went, 14. She went, 14. He went, you probably haven't got them. He goes, she goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair. And she put them on the table and it was like Krusty the Clown. And I just started laughing. They looked so long and he had to run around this bowling alley in these freaky clown yeah, but they shoes. don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. The, one of the worst thing, One of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like, I don't know, when I was about 16 or something, we went to... Um, it's a fire uh, there's alarm. a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire the light's going off. Yeah. Should 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 we not just should maybe play a record and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no, no, not wrap it up. Play a record. I'm going to go. No, the See fire, you later. it's gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh, what? Well, it might have burned down. Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. God. I'm going to go and investigate. Oh, you so shouldn't ignore a oh, fire alarm, yeah. should you? Why <laughs> me? Yeah, look, look We're entertaining oh, the no. nation. Oh, look at him. He's scared of fire. <laughs> I remember once, right? Um, I was I used to love nature when I was about like, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And I remember um, going out um, with uh, my sister and my brother and uh, their um, girlfriend and boyfriend, like to become their husband and wife. Um, and Thanks I, for that. Yeah, you know, just uh, just keeping continuity yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I used to get shells and things we were on the beach, and I used to get anything. I love nature. And I've, once I found um, I love reptiles as well, and I found this perfect um, uh, snake skin. A, a, a grass snake or an adder, and it was, I, I, I absolutely, lo I couldn't believe my luck, and I was going, look, look, and they were going, okay, put it down, because I, th and I realised they were a little bit scared of it, they were going, put it down, it's dirty, and of course I'd torture them a little bit, and then, uh, uh, I thought it was hilarious, and they made me leave it there, and I told, told mum and everything, and then, much later when I had some friends when I was about 14 or 15, I was telling this story to embarrass my sister, and, uh, uh, I was going, yeah, and she was scared of it, and she went, well, it was a used Johnny. She'd waited that long to embarrass me in front of her oh, friends. Oh, God. I'd been running around with a used Jurex, thinking that this was great because they were scared of snakes, and they were oh. going, put it down, it's dirty. No, be careful of the poison. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's that, horrible. It is horrible, what? isn't it? Have I gone too far again? How could you not realise it was made of rubber, for goodness sake? Well, what? you obviously didn't know anything about nature. <laughs> well, oh, I used to love nature, me. Yeah, yeah. There was between us some skin <laughs> yeah. and then that, that, this rubber is the, Johnny. Now, be careful of the Johnny snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their little poppy head and their oh, yeah. poison that... Oh, dear. I was remember there was this kid who lived near me once and this, this bird got run over and he rushed it. He said, I can save it. And he kissed it. Because he thought he could give it the <laughs> kiss. <laughs> He thought he could well, give it a kiss of all, life. I thought you meant it was a girl. No, no, no. no. <laughs> got run over. And he kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, what, what? He, he, he thought he could give it the kiss of life, but he didn't <laughs> know what the kiss of life was. He just thought you could kiss something and that would bring it back to life. <laughs> I think it was an excuse. I think he's thinking I can't bird. wait for a bird to get run over, and I can <laughs> pretend to be good at kiss of life, but really I'm giving it a nice little snog on the I feet. I remember he kissed it like that and let, threw it up like it would fly, <laughs> like it would fly away, and it just went <laughs> oh, onto no. the floor. 
Oh, was it dead or? Yeah, it was, it was blood everywhere. It was horrible. Oh, no. Yeah. And that, what's he doing now? Uh, he presents uh, Animal Hospital. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know what he's doing. But, uh, he's the worst bit in the world. Yeah. Got struck off. Oh, Just leave me alone, patients. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Oh, bless him. I Just, know. oh, no. I killed a fish once. Go on. Um, well, I made a little bow and arrow. I was about, um, eight or nine, and I made a, a bow and arrow. And, you know, you, do, you never think, uh, I, we had a pond, and there was a huge fish in it, about, um, you know, at eight inches long, a huge big sort of, like, golden orf or something, or a carp or something. And, um, I was sort of playing, and I aimed, and I shot it, and it went straight through it and floated to the top, and I thought, oh my god. God. You pierced a fish with a, with an arrow. That's an amazing yeah. shot. Well, it was luck. It was pure luck. I You're never a Native American. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know those little things outside, you know, in the front garden by the front gate? A little, um, sort of four inches by four inches bit of metal. You lift it up and it's not like where the drains are if the, you know, the plumbers need to get there or the counts or everything like right, that. Right, right. I dropped it down there and I thought, oh my God, what if that's discovered? What if I have to drown? So I ran loads and loads of journeys in and out of my house, right, to the toilet and back, just taking out um, handfuls of vim and pouring bleach down thinking that I can get rid of this fish before the council <laughs> dig it up in ten years time and yeah. go, send him to jail. <laughs> yes. Fish yes. aside. But who do you think, what do you think they would have done? They'd have taken the dead fish, they've gone to each of the doors going, does, is this your fish? <laughs> yeah, but I eight. You, you don't think- Do you recognise either the arrow or the fish? <laughs> 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 yes, it's arrow straight through it. But, um, you know, you don't think when you're eight that it'd be okay. If I, if I can ride this out till I'm twenty, yeah. the statute of limitations on goldfish murder, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it is about, I can't work it out, twelve yeah. years. Wow. Uh, yes, yeah, so that you're was- a killer. Yeah. Carl, anything embarrassing ever happened to you ever? With what? With animals and stuff. Could stars. be animals. I like animals, to be honest. So do I, it was a mistake. No, you know, I thought you were f feeling bad about the fish. Yeah. But really, you were more worried about you being locked up. Well, I felt bad. There was, there was, there was both the law and the moral side of fish death. I mean, we kill fish yeah. all the time, just not usually <laughs> with a bow and arrow in a back garden yeah. in Whitley. You know, <laughs> that often the supermarket can lend a hand with that. I used to sell mackerel. Did you? Yeah, I had a pet magpie. Did you? Called Maggie. Oh, you pet it? magpie, you mean you captured it and didn't let it go away? Yeah. Can't have a pet magpie. But then it, but then it got really vicious, I mean- Well, it was quite, it's been let me go. What did you keep it, in a rabbit hutch? No, it flew around, but it used to just, like, come to me all the time, but then it started pecking me head and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a pet magpie. That's a bird in the garden. No, no, but I could actually- it, it, I could hold it and stuff. It wasn't scared of me and it knew it was me. It used to come down from, like, the, the top- It of hated the... you. That's why it wanted to peck you. Is that- uh, oh. And the other thing, um- I always remember being younger and like walking walking through the woods to school with my mum, and like, I was chasing a butterfly, <laughs> and she said she said um, she said oh, don't do that, Carl. I said why? She said because they only live a day. I said oh, all right, I'll get a dead one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> That's great. That's quick thinking, yeah. isn't it? Oh, no, that's sweet. We're talking about embarrassing stories and stuff, and I don't know if I've told this on this radio before. Have I told you, Carl? I'm not sure. But this was when I was working at the BBC. This is not even long ago, and I moved to London, and I was fairly new in London. And I was working at the BBC, and I had this BBC hire car, and I've never told it. If there's anyone listening who works for the BBC, I don't know if I can still get in trouble for it. But, uh, this BBC hire car, and it was like, I'd been ferrying kind of actors and people and production people around all day in this car. And I was driving back, it was quite late, it was about sort of seven or eight, and I was driving back, and I pulled in to get some petrol, we had to fill up the car every day. And I went into this garage to fill up some petrol, and I was there. And these blokes, two blokes came in in a white van, right, they took, pulled into the, in the forecourt and I was filling out the car and they went, Eee, do you want to buy a couple of speakers? And I said, yes I do. Yeah. Because I, the, tell you the reason, it was like I was so flattered that they thought I'd be the kind of bloke who would A, need some kind of classy speakers and yeah. B, would like to buy them on the sly. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I thought, yeah, they like the They've they, seen me, they they've seen I look a bit of a hustler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a street sort of guy, you can yeah. see by the way I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So they, so I, I couldn't believe my luck. So uh, they drove behind the garage, the little sort of garage bit at the back, and I went round there, sort of casually went round there, sort of locked the car, went round there. Uh, <laughs> they went, yeah, they opened the back, you had two speakers in there. I, I said, are you sure these aren't knocked off, mate? He went, no, no. We work for Dixons. This is a story he spun me. We work for Dixons, right? <laughs> and we're delivery men. And if we make a delivery and the person's not there to sign for the goods, then we have to bring them back to the warehouse. But if we can sell them on the way back, yeah. then that's really good that for Dixons. That, yeah, Dixons must love that. And instead of thinking, <laughs> are you sure some kind of troubleshooter didn't, I mean, did someone go into Dixons and go, yeah, you're not, you're not getting in the uh, garage floor court market? Jones. Exactly. Get a couple of lads in a white van. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I sort of, 
bought this story, and, and I was a little bit dubious, and I went, right, let me hear them then. And he wired them up to the car stereo, and boom, 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 they're playing. So it was some groovy hip-hop, I was thinking, great, these guys know what I'm into. Yeah. And I, he's giving me the talk and stuff, and, um, I said, I'm a bit worried these are, these are knocked off. He went, no, listen, uh, we got a bloke at Dixon's who can confirm this is fine, right? Phone him up, use my mobile, right, and quote this reference number, right? So I phone out, they go, dee -dee 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 -dee, and I goes, yeah, I go, hi, some guy's here in a garage forecourt trying to sell me some speakers. Just wanted to check, he went, it's fine. I went, should I, should I just read the reference number or whatever? He went, if you want, on X14, and I went, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. You right. know that was, don't you? That was actually <laughs> Mr. Dixon himself. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking, well, you know, they sound great. They're yeah. giving me to a, for a knockdown price. I say they were like 400 quid, they were like 200 quid or something. It was a good bargain. I was in the market for some speakers as well. Yeah. So, uh, while they were loading it's them in- It's all kosher. I phoned Dixon. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, phoned yeah, Dixon. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so while they're loading them in the back of the BBC hire car, right? I'm in there paying for the petrol, right? And the guy serving goes, eee. Oh, you're right. He goes, what were you doing around the back with those blokes? Right? Because obviously there's security cameras filming this whole transaction, right? And, and he goes, what are you doing around the back? And I went, brilliantly, I went, there's some old mates. Some of my mates were just having a chat and that. He went, oh, right, okay. Like, giving me obviously the evil eye. So I went back the back. So I'm in the car now and I'm driving with one of the blokes who's in the van with me because I didn't have the money on me. So I had to go to the cash point to get the cash, right? So I'm driving with him and the other guy's like, follow me in the van. And he was like a northerner like you and he was giving it all the, all right, yeah, you know. I tell my si girlfriend's a DJ. She's got some of these speakers. They're fantastic. Da -da -da, and he's giving me this. And then my mind starts working. Now that I've got a bit of time to think, I'm thinking, wait a minute. This all sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. It dawned on me, Rick. You, you, you know, fool, are you? You're streetwise. <laughs> exactly. You're streetwise, Steve. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, I was thinking, how am I going to get them home? I've got to drop the car off at the BBC. How am yeah. I going to get these huge speakers back to where I live? And how can I pay for them? Because I've just spent £100 on Find the Lady. <laughs> exactly. With a couple of blokes in <laughs> 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 square. Yeah. It seemed like a fair game. <laughs> Some so of his friends were winning. But so I explained to him, I said, how I can't get them back to like Brixton where I was living at the time. He went, don't worry, give us an extra 20 quid, we'll take them home for you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Deliver it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they do a whole service, you see, and there's also a backup guarantee. Did they have the guarantee, the three month guarantee? <laughs> they didn't. No. But okay. so then, so they say, I said, I'm not sure about that. He went, well, why don't you put them in a cab, send them back, and your housemates can collect it. I was like, oh, no, there'd be no one in. And I was getting, and I was beginning to sort of get a bit conscious of like, maybe this was a bit of a scam after all. So I pulled into like a little side road. I said, I'm not sure I'm into this now, actually. He went, what are you talking about? It's 200 quid for Paris because it's a bargain. You never get a bargain like this, man. I'm going, not too sure, actually. I don't think I want him. He went, 150 quid, 150 quid, mate, 150 quid. I went, no. He said, 100 quid, 100 quid now to you. And I'm thinking, wait, this doesn't sound like the kind of work that Dixon's would be doing. Dixon's don't do that <laughs> when I go in. This is it. Yeah. Never, just, Dixon's never negotiate in that way. When, when I go there, I look around and I leave, they go, where are you going? <laughs> exactly. I go, I'm just, I go, we'll have anything then. Have anything for a So quid. I stopped the car and the white van pulled up behind me with his mates in. Sure. And, uh, and I said, can you get them out? I'm not interested. And he went, oh, 100, 100 quid, mate. Oh, you, you, and he was just going, you tosser, you, you obviously want some speakers, duh, duh, and he was having a go at me. So I was carrying the speakers out and putting them back in the white van, and he was just shouting at me, he was going, 70 quid, 70 quid. I said, 70 quid from 200? This is ludicrous. Do you realise that wasn't Dixon's policy <laughs> exactly. then? Exactly. They don't at usually shout, moment. you tosser, as you leave the, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave the shop and walk down Camden High Street. They're exactly. not usually shouting, <laughs> you tosser. You should have sought the offer of, like, the monthly payments they've got on at the moment. <laughs> So, um, so I, I eventually I put him in there and I sort of knocked the deal on the head and I got back in my car and, uh, they got, they were in theirs and I could, just looked in the rearview mirror and they were punching the dashboard, like, with aggression and venom, like, we let that deal slip through our fingers. And I've never been so terrified in my life. I just sat there and I was just thinking, oh my god, all I was thinking now is what if I go back to the BBC and they go, we've had a call from the police, the man at the garage, he saw yeah. you doing a dodgy deal. I love it. Yeah. Well, oh, what so you do is, what you do is, you put the tire car in a drain in your front garden <laughs> and then go in and out of the toilet, just pouring bleach down or Ajax and they never know.